Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to yet another installment of Risk Shot Week, this being episode 31. 31. How is it possible that there have been 31 episodes of the show? I don't, I don't freaking know. I will never understand. Welcome, ladies and gents. It's great having you here. Uh, let me just catch up in the chat and then we'll get down to business. There's quite a nice selection of stuff on display today. I've got Rich, got Neferion. I want to address that question just now, Neferion. Watch my design. Hi, Curtis. Owl29. You're stuck at work. It's okay. Don't worry. The show is going to probably last longer than you will be at work. So by all means, uh, join in whenever you like. Sucker horns. Ashtray, welcome. Raymond, Scott, Sam Ray, Eric. Welcome, Eric. That was a shocking game that we saw today. Talking watches. Uh, who else? Uh, is that Jiao? Welcome, Jiao. Good to have you here. First one that I see live. <laughs> it's good to have you here. Uh, Megan, Welcome. And Thomas, awesome having you here. Jizzy Ninja, Rocket Sailing, the Chidge, Ingle, Ingleby boy. So good having you all here. Thank you all for being a part of the show, for joining, for sending in your watches. It was an absolute pleasure. And let's get into business. Before doing that, what I could do, just saying hi to the chat, is share this for a bit. One of our fellow viewers picked this up this week, and he is loving it. <laughs> like, it's a watch that we have chatted about quite a bit. It's quite the contentious one, to say the least. We, we don't know what to really think of it, uh, especially with what's going on in the watch space. Let me know if you can hear me in the chat. Comment one. And I'm just going to take a hit from the water. Stone Sea from Peru. Welcome. Good grief. Yeah, I got a buddy. I went to a buddy in boarding school from Peru. Awesome place. I hope you're well. Uh, it's too early, Blaine says. Yeah, Blaine, uh, we will try not to make fun of the Blaine name this time around. Uh, Paul, welcome. Lee Harris, I see Maynard and so many of you comment. Thank you, everyone, commenting one in the chat. Fantastic. We're going to have a good chat. It's, um, you know, I don't, I don't frame these shows around themes. The themes work themselves out. And this week, surprisingly enough, virtually everyone shared a sports watch in, in one way or another. So this turned into a sports watch show, which is going to be good. Uh, I see Neo joining us. Welcome, Neo. And Zach and Manny Fernandez and many more of you. I'm going to just be, be saying hi to you for the rest of the evening. Okay, so at, right right now, the London Watch Show is going on. People are enjoying the live streams happening there, so I can fully understand that. Tune in, tune out. This is going to be quite a long discussion, whatever happens, so it's going to be good. I'm looking forward to sharing what's on display, and let's start with getting this up on screen. Uh, let's see, always show sidebar. The settings, you would think I would get used to it, but I really don't. So what's on the table? Pretty typical at this point, Talisca 10, and what is the saddest thing is... Uh, a near empty bottle. This is what freaked me out today, though, by the way. I was I was just, you know, pouring the glass, taking the photograph, and then had a zoom in and had a look. I can't believe this is nearly 46%. I've never had a 46% whiskey before in my life. The worst I've been is, is 43, 44. I had no idea it was this high of an alcohol volume. And this is what I've been having every live show. So it kind of makes sense now why the end of the shows tend to be a little bit all over the place. And of course, that didn't stop me now. So that's what's a part of the, uh, the selection this evening. Uh, the rest of you in the chat, welcome again. Thank you, everyone who have submitted watches for the show. We're going to have a jam discussing them. Uh, I'll leave it a little bit longer, the, 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 the big channel announcement. Uh, share what I've been wearing over the course of the week. Uh, the Big Eye and the RS 65. Really enjoying these two pieces. They're definitely outliers, but are good fun. I see Bonaventure joining us, Corvette Man, welcome. I said hi to a few more of you. I think I said hi to Zach, Tour Beyond, welcome. And Neo again, James, welcome. Absolute pleasure having you all here. Luke, awesome having you. James, yeah, it's been a, I don't know if many of you have noticed, I've taken two weeks off the channel. And there's a reason why, which we will get to in a moment. Um, yeah, I've just been enjoying the hell out of this watch. Funny, uh, there have been two big eye submissions over this week for this show and both of them have said both the owners have said that they were influenced by the review video that came out about this piece and you know what's funny you know there are these watches out there when you see them on social media you all of a sudden just feel like wearing them this one to me just today actually i was wearing the, the rs65 all day uh, and i just saw the big eye again on instagram as i was scrolling and every single photograph i see of this watch i think god oh, it's so good. And I just I end up just gravitating towards putting it back on again. So yeah, the, the big eye is on the wrist this evening. And yeah, so we get back into the chat and we will discuss a little edits to the channel. 
Um, any more comments that I'm missing? Insta Blaine, welcome. Another Blaine. We can have fun. Everyone who likes watches outside of Brazil is lucky. Our tax here is 56%. God, that is hectic. That is hectic. Um, I think I saw Mark P. Welcome, Mark. Again, I would imagine a lot of people are watching the London Watch Show at the moment. So I'd imagine you guys are going to filter in and out of the show goes. Okay, so just getting to the announcement. The show has been running now for, what, just over five minutes? Uh, I've taken two weeks off, having a good think about how to you know, restructure the channel a little bit. The page is so close to 50,000 subscribers, and I thought you know, there's no time like the present to do a little bit of a, a tweak here and there. <laughs> Congratulations on the baby. You'll be a great... <laughs> Oh, Neo, you're a legend. That is the funniest thing. Oh, man. You see, this is why I don't want to do the reveal, because it's not as exciting. I mean, uh, Nefarion at the beginning of the show said something about me finding a face. It's a bit macabre that I'm now, I've stolen someone's face and I'm going to be wearing that. Close, but no. Uh, watching finance, welcome. Oh, Neo, that's hilarious. No. So I thought about it a bit more. And since the page is getting close to 50K, I said, okay, it's time to have a bit more interaction, have a bit more fun on the page, make it a bit more inviting and a bit more enjoyable. So as of October, we are going to have a bit more of an open-end discussion about how the, the presentations are going to be. <laughs> I literally did this like two, three minutes before the show started, so it looks pretty weird. But that's the idea. There's going to be a bit more of an, a presentation style to the talk, and the content's not going to change. It's just I'm going to be a bit more present and in the moment. Uh, all I recommend is that when the face reveal happens, that you're watching it on a low-quality TV or camera or whatever, or phone or whatever, just so I don't break the screen. But that's going to be the next thing. So as of October and onwards, yeah, Tiger Jacket. That's uh, Barracuda. Barracuda is one of my favorite, my favorite makers. I love them. Uh, it's a video about um, – you see, the thing is, over the last two weeks, I've been playing around with just how to get on camera – it's the most awkward thing, trying to like present all of a sudden talking to a camera lens and not to to notes, show notes and stuff. And uh, so uh, this this one was about green sports watches, and I'm trying to you know it's just trying to keep yourself you know in tune with what you're talking about as well as not looking like a fool doing it. <laughs> no need to be self-effacing. No, you know you got to do it. You got to keep it entertaining. Uh, but it's going to be good. I, I've. I've really enjoyed the fact that it's a bit more of a, a loose presentation. It's not as staunch. Is that the right word? It's a bit more freestyle. And what I love is that it doesn't... What's funny, I mean, I've, I've realized that I've made 270-ish videos on the channel. And what I've noticed is that this new feature hasn't taken away from the actual content. It feels exactly the same, which is strange. As, as a presenter, you feel like it's going like, to change the dynamic completely, but it really hasn't. Um, it still feels exactly the same. It's just a bit more interactive. So that's going to be, um, yeah, you, <laughs> face for radio, Mark. Yeah, a couple of you have met me and you have said the same thing that I do have a face for radio. So yeah, just uh, be warned. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Uh, Eric, it's great. British guy wearing tartan. I'm not surprised. I'm South African technically, but yes, I am British too. So yeah, I, I understand that, Joe. Yeah, young Val Kilmer, that's funny. But yeah, of course, Ed, what's going to happen as the page evolves, for sure, we can have guests with live streams. I don't know if I'll be on the live streams as a face. I'm, I'm kind of liking the idea that, that you get to see the presentation and not me, but maybe that'll change over time too. Just know that for actual videos that are on topics and subjects, design videos or whatever else, um, a bit of me will be involved in it too. So it's going to be fun. I think I think you'll enjoy it. At least I have. I've definitely felt a bit more energy doing it. And I think that's the real big difference at the end of the day. So that's the big the big announcement. Um, if anyone asks as the show is going on, I can just flick up to the top and <laughs> share this, this ridiculous looking image with people. But let's get into the show itself. We are talking about sports watches. Megan left a long comment about going for a run and stuff. I think she loves running while I'm doing my shows. I think she's she's trying not to fall asleep while I present, and that's the best way to do it. She's in Munich, finished dinner, exploring the city. So not in the chat. Okay, all good. Enjoy your time out there, Megan. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, Watch by design. Curtis has met me, and we we had a good chat. It was it was a lot of fun that day. The South. Uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. You know. It's, it's the weirdest thing. You would expect to be nervous and camera shy, but 
I feel like in a way I have been talking to the camera all this time, but I haven't. It's it's just this on, the only change really is that I'm talking to a camera lens instead of the notes which are right next to the lens. So it's going to be good. Um, at least I hope it's going to be good. It's always a bit of a tentative thing when you're introducing something new, but over the next two weeks between now and the end of Oct beginning of October, I'm going to be practicing more. Like I swear I've done maybe five or six different attempts. And yeah, so that's that's it really in a nutshell. And the rest of you who are joining and I see Zulu6 joining us here, forgot to submit. Don't worry. There are a couple of you who did submit at a later stage and I've, I'm going to be carrying them over. For all of you who have emailed watches into the show, I can't thank you enough. These shows, you know, everything that I do here is because of you really. And that's the, that's the joy. I, I love these shows because it lets us share what other people are wearing. And that's what makes this hobby so great. It's so nice to see other people's tastes and to learn from them. So let's get into this discussion. It's been now <laughs> over 10 minutes of me gushing. Oh, Eric, the bloopers are beautiful, by the way. The bloopers are great. Trust me when I say that you should just watch the show for the bloopers. You're going to laugh your heads off. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I kind of swear quite a bit, so I, I make sure to cut all that out. But it's, it's funny, like, um, you know, dry humor, as we try to be, dry humor watching finance you know i saw your email come in and it was about 10 minutes before the show and i didn't save it for it sadly so it will be carried over to the next presentation but the selection is pretty nice the selection is pretty nice yeah and eric talking about rugby how can i submit i was asking in the description of this video there should be an email link uh, the second line down and it'll be carried over to the next week it should be about two weeks time that's when we do it so let's start okay so so matthews he has been featured for the cover of these shows before and he sends i mean this photo alone i think was 35 megabytes in size and we zoom right in i mean you can see like flecks of graphite and hair and everything i might crash the page if i do zoom in too close i'll be careful but it's it's exceptional so this is a gen 2 vacheron overseas dual time with a titanium bezel and yeah i'm just going to hit the coffee again machu picchu blend Funny enough, we have a gentleman from Peru joining us. I'm drinking your coffee, and it's beautiful. So it is. So it has a titanium bezel, I believe. And I wanted to look up this reference a bit more. He sent me the reference of 49450 dual time. It's been difficult to find, but there was a great, great um, article. Power reserve is huge. I want to first, yeah, I'll read the description of this watch very briefly for everyone to try and understand. Uh, this was from professional watches. They said, local time is displayed via the central hour, hand, hour minute, seconds hand. Controlled via the crown at the three. Okay, so obviously, so standard time, magic mouse, work with me. Standard time is controlled by this crown. And then the day-night indicator subdial home time subdial set by the crown. What? Is set by the crown at the three. Hold on. I'm lost already. I'm not drunk, I swear. Uh, displayed at the, I don't know. One of these crowns operates the time. and another, another of these crowns works the dual time, I think. Or One of them is for winding. I, I'll have to like explain that it's such a long paragraph. I'm going to be sitting here for hours trying to read through this. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous looking machine. And I, I'm, something I'm really getting into are the asymmetrical, Genta, in quotation, Genta inspired designs, asymmetrical dials. So you look to certain APs out there, Royal Oaks, um, the, the Patek 5712, I love it. Very similar aesthetic. But this one, I mean, Vacheron just tips it. Being a dual time complication, you've got your second time zone here. You've got your day-night indicator, your 24-hour dial. Huge power reserve, as mentioned, which takes up a nice, nice portion of the dial. And then your date on the right-hand side. So it's, I think he also mentioned, Matthew said, he, d he picked this up recently, I believe. And he said that it's sort of in competition with the Corey Richards model, that one that was a piece unique made for him. I just love it. It's such, it's such a beautiful photograph and what a stunning watch. It's, it's a serious outlier. Everyone's talking about the Gen 3 as it's the big deal, but the Gen 2s, the Gen 2s are worth way, way more love. Yeah, second generation. It's, VC does gray so well. They do, Bonaventure. And it just, it just like complements everything here, don't you think? Amazing. Lowry, sorry that I missed you. Welcome. So happy finally catch me live again. Ah, it's good. It's good having you here. Thank you for joining us. The power reserve is huge. Again, I'm missing you in the chat. Sorry. I'm not drunk, I swear. Always works for me. It does, right? It does. It's the best way to best way to diffuse the situation. Uh, just needs a flash of orange. And they could have, Mark. I mean, they could have highlighted the power reserve maybe or just the central running seconds. Everything has been done so well here. I mean, the text, it's got a bit of a doxa vibe to it with the text being asymmetrical. Automatic anti-magnetic at the bottom there. 
I love it. What an amazing watch for a cover. I think Matthew sent this in yesterday and just an absolute win of a presentation. Now, as far as sports watches goes, the show has pretty much everything from date justs to GM GMTs, Seikos, uh, what else? Brightlings, um, got a couple of G-Sharks and Tudors and JLCs and so it goes. It's going to be a, a, quite an extensive talk. Just enjoy sitting back. I hope you're drinking something nice. Put your feet up. And listen to me ramble about whatever the hell comes into my mind as we're going. Uh, Ed, here's the continued success of the channel. Oh, thank you, Ed. Thank you so much. Yeah, you know what? If anyone has missed it, yeah, it's going to be good fun trying to change up the presentation style again. I'm looking forward to doing it. Uh, here's to hoping that it's going to be easy enough and it becomes a habitual thing that I'm able to just sit down and talk to all of you. So <laughs> we, we will see. Uh, it's, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, let's carry on through. So Matthew's hard to actually compete with this watch. I mean, unfortunately, there's some beautiful watches. This one definitely is one of the top contenders for the show. Next up, we have Abdul. He sent in a selection. He's been traveling quite a bit. I think he said around the Red Sea. I can't remember. I didn't save the full extent of the email. Since I have technically been taking a break from the channel over the month, I've been quite lax with these, with saving these submissions, but I've really loved this. So he, we've we featured some of his watches in the past before. Amazing setting he's sitting at right now. This is a 1601, I think, date just with applied Romans. And this is what I believe, you know, the epitome of the date just is in the purest sense. I believe all stainless steel, maybe someone can correct me, but such an awesome little piece. Vintage from, I would imagine, the 80s. Getting us the chat. Abdul has just joined us. Welcome, Abdul. If you'd like to share a bit more info about the piece, uh, that VC overseas would look great with black ceramic. They've done a couple of things. This watch also, I think, comes with straps that you get to chew, uh, swap it out with. Um, another good thing, people, uh, tag me in the chat and ask questions to me, to the audience, because this is where you can get like 30, 40 different pieces of feedback about the watch that you might be interested in, some of those aspects, and that's what makes these shows all the more engaging. So by all means, Sam Ray, welcome. I don't know if I've said hi to you. Welcome to the show, Sam Ray. Great to have you on live. Father Artifact, I look forward to sharing your new pickup. Uh, so Klaus saying. Um, I want to buy my first real watch and want to spend a thousand euros. Which one would you prefer to me? Ooh, ooh, a thousand euros. What's a good suggestion, ladies and gentlemen? You know, I think Zinn is very underrated in this category. I don't know if you can find any Zins out there today for under a thousand euros, but in that ballpark, I think you could. And mm, have a think, have a think. Okay, catching up in the chat again. Anyone here that rumors about the new 50 Fathoms 40? George, I haven't. I have not heard that rumor, but if they do that, geez, the other the other brands have to watch out because Damasco, this is good. So some suggestions, Zafarion, Damasco DS30. I don't know if I've said hi to you in the chat, but um, I liked that comment earlier on. <laughs> it's hilarious. Zin885 Nomos Club Campus. Speaking of Nomos, Abdul, did you share one? There's one on the show. They have an amazing deployment strap that they have they have made quite recently. And they look so good. Just look it up on Google. Nomos deployant strap. It looks so good. So you know, lightweight, the way I think a deployant should be done. Great shout from Rob. Yep, I agree. Uh, Rob, welcome to the show. Urun Sun saying, I bought my Zin 556 in 2018 for 880 euros. So you know what? Yeah, I think, I think a Zin. If you can find a Zin secondhand as a first watch, I mean, they are absolutely amazing. In fact, we got one right here from, from Abdul. I've, we featured this watch before. It's a 356, very similar to the big eye. I mean, again, I, I love how these designs were just passed through over time. Here is an example of the big eye on wrist. Notice how the dial has been arranged with the numerals, very similar style of numerals. And then we switch back to the 356, virtually identical uh, with a day date complication. This with a salmon dial, which I think is one of the most special variants of this model. Helios, uh, John is mentioning, that's also a very good shot. John has had some superb advice on this page. And yeah, I think I think it's just good. Just as long as whoever asked that question again, I think it was, I'll scroll up and try and find you again. I know it's going to take too long. I'm going to probably, I probably missed you. Um, take a piece of paper out, get a notepad and write down some of these suggestions. And you'll find, you know, you're just going to be bombarded with ideas. And it just makes the, uh, the thinking process a little better. You know I love salmon dials. And everyone says, I don't know if that's sarcasm. Uh, Salmony, salmon dial I've seen. The, yeah, yeah, salmon, it's funny because very often, should I jump back to it since we've had a look at the date just? 
this is as salmon as it gets because often we see pink dials. Pink dials and salmon dials are different. This is true to what salmon actually looks like as a color. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's a bit of a, a fine line. And very often you see, oh, hold on. Do you still wear my Seamaster Trilogy? Oh, for sure. Computer Vite, welcome. I bought mine because of your video. Seamaster 300, oh, I can't get enough of it. It's my, I actually wanted to do, with this whole idea of, of the face reveal and stuff on the channel, I wanted to do like a personal video discussing my first luxury watch buying experience. And I was thinking of doing that, but it becomes so like self-indulgent that I've I got a bit over it. I might do an, I might try again <laughs> next week or the week after. But absolutely. It's I'll put it this way. It's not it's not it hasn't been the perfect first watch choice, but it has so much more to it than just being a first luxury watch. And in my case at least, every time I wear it, which is mostly on weekends and the end of the week, it's always an occasion. And I think that's what makes it very special for me. Speaking of which, we're going to be looking at one later on. The the standard 300, the, the not the trilogy, sorry, hit the mic. Not the trilogy edition, but the modern, the bigger size. It looks so beautiful. I can't wait to share it. I think Harry, Harry Joyner sent it in. So if we jump to H, we'll have a look at it. Should I bring it up again? No, I'm going to go down these too many tangents. But absolutely, I love it. And if you do fall out of love with it, keep on... <laughs> Nefarion, you got the face reveal right. Yes, you did. You did. Uh, just, just keep on wearing it. Keep on thinking of it as a different watch to to the majority of pieces out there today. Um, it's a reissue. It's one of the best reissues out there. But anyway, going to carry on through. So, so, Abdul, another shot you sent in was just careful of your eyes, ladies and gents. Squint your eyes. Seiko turtle. Oh, it's not. It's a steel dive. Excuse me. I thought it was a Seiko turtle, but he put it under under ultraviolet lights or you know uv lights and you get this crazy cool reaction of the wave in the background which is really nice just if you start going a bit blind I'll, i will shift the image in a second i know it's a bit bright for everyone to see that's so funny uh what about doing a state of collection jal that's going to happen at the end of the year most definitely i'm going to do that uh, i actually have a few plans lined up for that it's on it's on the list i'll say uh anton welcome finally catching the stream great channel oh, it's a pleasure pleasure having you here thank you for joining us yeah, I mean, I don't know what these shows are. It's just kind of like a, just a discussion around your watches, and I, I, I love it. It's, it's always, you know, like a poker game. You don't know what you're going to get, and the end result is it can either be amazing or it can either be in there, and you just have to wait and see. It's always <laughs> that's utter safe salmon. I think I should move away from this in case your eyes like start tripping out. But really cool. We gotta love UV shots, as Nefarian says. I think they, they work nicely. Uh, let's move to an Explorer 2 from Abdul, another shot. This, I mean, as far as he's out at a restaurant here in this shot, as far as an everyday just getting out there piece, Explorer 2 on a rubber strap, what a win. This looks so good. Yeah, when it comes to versatility, I'm one of these people, I mean, what I found so great about the big eye, for example, is it almost begs for strap changes. And there are a couple of watches out there. The Explorer 2 is definitely one of those pieces that just in all these categories, bags for strap changes, put it on white, put it on a black strap, brown leather, NATO, it does it all. You know, gray NATO strap on this piece looks the business. And, and so it is. I love it. It's such a cool combo. Okay. Finally catching live stream. Sorry, I'm just rereading that. Uh, this is the only one I had a fully loomed dial. Sold this to a friend of mine trying to reduce the collection. Aren't we all, Abdul? Aren't we all? Uh, let's see. Luke says, I'm going to mass this Eve. Oh, do you have any, hold on. Do you have any of my wrist shots for the show? Yes, we do. Uh, Luke, you're, you're a little bit further down on the list, <laughs> but you are here at the base, uh, you know, kind of like two thirds of the way through. There's just under a hundred selections for the show, which is nice. It's a little bit more restrained. Normally these shows go on for way too long. So, uh, and Uren Sun, you asked me, do you know the Zinn Meisterbund? It's a dress watch from Zinn for over 12,000 euros. Would anyone buy a Zinn for that price? I don't think so. That is, that is excessive. I mean, as far as I know, the EZMs, they have some really good examples like the Damascus Zena, I think it's called, with the Damascus steel case, which is beautiful. Um... I've never heard of that one before, no. I do know that they make some awesome bunt strap variants that look similar to, you know, the Hoyer 3H models from back in the day, all in line with the Hanart and the, and the Type 20s and the big eyes. So, yeah, I mean, a good question there. I've never heard of that piece before. This one was at a wedding on the beach. Oh, white leather, white leather shoe with rubber sole. That's so cool, Abdul. I mean, it works so nicely, so, so nicely. I believe this is the only Explorer 2 that we have on the show. 
funny enough. And we have those times when there's like 16 explorers and then weeks when there's nothing. Same with the Speedmaster this week. I believe there's only one, I think one Speedmaster, maybe two. <laughs> Best dial strap combo of, combo of the evening. Eric says, yeah, I mean, for sure, this is it. Yeah, it's good having you here, Eric. What a shocking game that was today. God. Rugby, Australia, South Africa, second, second test. Disaster. Worse than the first game. South Africa is losing so badly. Guys need to pick it up. Okay, next from Abdul. In a different category altogether, look at the setting. That is so nice. G-Shock Jelly, I've called it. I don't know the, the proper description for the name, but it's great. It's great. G-Shocks. These, these ghost G-Shocks deserve love. I think they're a lot of fun. And they also make the watch a bit more casual on the wrist. It, can also, it also gives you the, the impression that it might be a sapphire case, which is good fun. Taking a hit from the Talisker and getting back into the chat. Uh, so so ne is that Neil? Niall or Neil? I'm very pleased at acquiring the Longines Heritage Sector in black. Ooh, did you get it with the, with the beads of rice bracelets? What an amazing launch that was. I'm loving it. I mean, there are so many brands out there, and I think some, a lot of us are starting to get on board and, and looking at them more that are just woefully underappreciated and deserve so much more love and attention. Again, I'll go, I'll go back to Longines and say that one of my best purchases to date was the big eye. I think it's it's mainly aesthetics, but it's also that versatility. And it's the fact that you can do so much with it um, as a daily watch, as something you can exercise in. It's a field watch with a chrono. It's a solid watch too, ETA based. You know, it can take a hit and keep on rolling. And oh, Longines as a brand in general, so have a look at them. We're not talking excessive amounts of money. If you get good discounts, if you buy them secondhand, such good quality watches. And they have one of the best design resumes out there, I believe, when you look to their heritage models and those past references. Okay, next up from Abdul, one more shot is the Tudor. Oh, this is an actual, this is a gilt dial. So it's the burgundy bezel. I think it's the 41. It's the ETA-based self-winding movement. I mean, this is how you do a dial design, Tudor. Come on. Got the rose, got the smiling self-winding, got the gilt finish to it on a rubber strap. Looking out of the ocean. Yeah, Abdul has started the show off nicely. I like it a lot. Yeah, that's great. It's great. Let's get back in the chat. 121 click bezel. Welcome. Your submission I missed by like a fraction of a second again. There are a handful that I just I just missed. So I'm sorry, but you will be featured in the next show. Uh, oh, yes, with beads of rice bracelet. I tried the leather too, but the bracelet is stand out. Neil, it is. That's what they should have done in the very first place. A beads of rice on, on that long jean sector class. Absolute class act. Yeah, and then Thomas saying pulling out the best wrist shots. I'm loving the setting. The setting just makes it too, you know. It's all it's all great having the watches on display, but when you have a good scene in the background, oh, the ocean. I mean, how can you not love the ocean? And I'm missing so many more of you in the chat. Sorry, please tag me again if if, if I've missed you. If you want to repeat your question, I will I'll catch it easier. Um, I see Kevin joining us from Florida. Welcome, Kevin. Scott is a very cool G Shark. Yeah, that G Shark is cool. The the jellyfish, whatever you. I don't I don't even know what the reference is. Um, Sam Ray, the numerals on your Oris Diver. Oh, you're also wearing Oris tonight, I remember. It looks the same as the show Archer. Yes, it is, in fact. It's the same typeface. And I think Neo brought it to my attention, actually. It is the exact same typeface. Should I bring it up again? I don't know. We're going to be running around in circles otherwise. So this watch, this watch seems to get quite panned by the community. I can understand why. Look, it's quirky. It's not like every other dive watch you see. It's a skin diver. It's from the mid-60s, and they were a bit all over the place back then. But the reverse negative numerals, to me, at the quarters, has one of the best date impl implement... Into, what's the word? Um, implementations? No? I don't know. Integrations, that's the one. One of the best integrations on a watch. You can You only see it when it's pointed out to you. Of course, I didn't set the date when I was wearing this today. Uh, but that's it. It's it's such a cool little piece, and it's super thin. One of the best sapphire crystals I've experienced. It looks acrylic. It's so well domed. Um, Oris sixty five, another banging watch. Just just get a long jean, get an Oris, and enjoy them. That's all I have to say. Okay, back to the tutor. We're going to jump to to Adam next. Clocks and Glocks. Um, I think it's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's to every teach their own taste at the end of the day, right? I mean, I'm I'm the design guy, and you got to appreciate the variety of. I, I seem to be someone who gravitates towards designs that define those eras, like the 50s, 60s, 70s. So from the 70s, you want a cushion case, and and so it is. 
Yeah, AMG, welcome to the show. I'm very well. Thank you, AMG. Uh, yeah, just enjoying it. Just just kicking back, chatting about whatever, whatever's being asked. Big fan of this Diver 65. The space on the dial, dome crystal, it is. It's the blend. Love them. I absolutely love them. Great fun. Khaki strap would highly recommend. Abdul, thank you for these. We're jumping to Adam next. Now, I have never seen this watch before, but the photography was stunning. So he got this as a graduation watch. The brand is called RGM, RGM Watch Company, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Look at that dial. So we have an asymmetrical, what would you say, like a, a, an A, a mislaced, an angular dial like the Vacheron uh, 1921. Look at those blued hands. So we've got another local watchmaker that are sharing these designs. And this is a standout looking piece. I think he sent this to me yesterday. So just reading the description, he said graduation watch. Yeah, so that was it. Graduation watch. He took it for a walk the other day. So I'll be sure to share that in a second on the wrist. But what a beautiful case. I mean, the typeface is nice. It's a little bit Vostok-y. Vostok with the way it's kind of squared off, you know, but also works to that 30s, 20s inspiration too. And the case, everything seems to speak 30s inspirations there it's it's a beautiful looking machine and you can never never bash heat blued hands they are just a cut above a cut above rgm right near me mezzanine that's awesome so we've got some local watchmaking i love it i love it uh wj watches yeah you, you missed the big announcement okay i'll share it again this is what's good i have it on tap as of um october i'm gonna make it a bit more personal and I'm going to be chatting to you as opposed to just as a present presentation. It's not going to change the format too much. Uh, it's just a little bit more of an open-ended talk as well as the watches and everything on display. So be ready for that. Uh, and we can jump next to another shot from Adam taking the watch for a walk. So he's a left-hander like, like a lot of us. Now, this is interesting. So he wears this watch on the left hand. Oh, sorry. No, I'm confused. A lot of a lot of right-handers out there tend to they can't wear a watch like this because the dial is is backwards. But it makes sense. Sorry, the coffee hasn't hit the brain yet. It should have. Maybe the alcohol needs to sink in to settle the brain a bit more. RGM is I've never seen this maker before, but what what a great execution! The size of the sub dial, the typeface on the top, really nice. Teddy Baldassar did a review on them. Oh, it's great! It's great. I'm loving these local brands. Uh, pound the drums. I'm looking forward to sharing that to so PRX. In fact, I was so close to putting the trigger on one this week. The PRX Powermatic, that's going to be good. Uh, Emer Emerging Watch Valley in Pennsylvania, Eric says. Awesome, awesome. So they have their own little, little group in that space. I'm only an hour from Lancaster. I might have to check this out if he's open to the public. Oof. Yeah, support your local watchmakers. And we've got an onion crown that looks nicely CNC'd. That is an aggressive looking onion crown, to say the least. Magic Mouse, it's her time of the month again, I think. Yeah, it looks great. Really nice piece. Also has a, a Germanic vibe to it too, with these squared off lugs. Speaks to, you know, our friend Alango and Zona. Oh, awesome. Adam, thank you for sharing this, this piece. I love these, these outliers. It's what makes these presentations all the more fun. Taking a hit from the coffee again, Machu Picchu. Would look good on a NATO. Coming in October, the man with the iron mask, tegmented Philip Sarage. That's so funny. Yeah, there have been some good comments. Like, like Neferon had one of the best that I've found a face, as if I've gone out and taken someone else's face to wear, you know, like, like leather face. It's the best. Right, are we moving on? Adam, thank you for these. We are going to Andrew next, and what a cool selection he sent in. Check this out. So we have a Grand Seiko white birch and a very unique... Rare and attractive, we could say. 43 millimeter IWC Big Pilot, this new release that's just come out. He sent in wrist shots of it too. And I look forward to showing those in a moment. I'm liking these for, for what they represent, in fact. You know what? This is, this is what I like the most. I've just thought about it now. These two watches both represent their brands so, so nicely, don't you think? Grand Soko with their dial finishes. It's also extremely understated. The hands, the batons, everything speaks to the watch. The, the sharpened lugs, you know, the, the chamfering and everything makes sense. IWC, big pilot, got the diamond crown at the end there, that the size. It's one of the best. I, I think this is one of the best watches of the year. In fact, this is a contender at GPHG. I really hope this watch gets some props because it's, you know, literally one of the best they've ever done of this piece. 
at 43 mil. Um, yeah, we're gonna have a look at the dial of this watch in a moment. It is it is a high beat, so we're gonna check it out in a sec. Sam Ray says it isn't an ID guy stream without magic mouse and squeaky chair issues. No, you're right. You're right. It's not. The chair seems to have backed off a little bit though. It's not as aggressive. I don't know. Maybe I've coaxed it. In fact, I took an Allen, a couple of Allen keys to it, and I might have. I think I have tightened it up in a few places. It seems to be working, but you know, you will get firsthand experience seeing the squeaky chair in action. So that'll be fun, right? Taking a hit from the coffee again. Is that IWC a titanium metal? I do not know, Neil. I don't believe it is. I think it's in stainless stainless steel. And uh, I love the GS, but the bracelet kills it for me. It goes straight to honest trap. So that, what are you saying? The bracelet is a little bit uninspired. I can kind of understand that. So the, the three-link construction is okay. It doesn't have a micro adjust, I don't believe. So it does leave you wanting in a few areas. But just look at, oh my goodness. I wasn't supposed to click on that, but there we go. There's the movement. <laughs> I mean, this is like high horology in this presentation. Look at that. Can you believe it's an 80 hour power reserve, of course, <clears throat> high beat movements. It's the reference 36,000, of course, 36,000 beat rate. Oh, it's so good. I mean, this this reminds me of something you would see from, from Glasruta, actually, wouldn't you say? Oh, man. The bridges are nicely done. The I mean, the balance looks exceptional. The, the actual, oh, it's so good. So good. This was a mis I did not expect to click on this so early on, but wow, absolute gold, stunning. I've got to thank Andrew for sending sending these in because they are superb, absolutely superb. Um, beautiful dial, cool crown. Abdul says, "I'm sorry that I'm missing you again in the chat. I'm going to have to scroll up a bit more." Thomas says, "Lovely pair." Yeah, that's what he said. Lovely pair. Uh, carry on through. Let's see what else we have. Got to get GS at some time. Got to see them in person. Yeah, Anthony Smith. Good morning from Australia spoken about the rugger yet i have it it's it's freaking abysmal man it's abysmal like props to props to you guys you guys play you played your heart out those two games who's the better team you guys were the better team by miles no question at all i don't know what's i think it's because rassi is now out of the out of the talk he's being um torn to pieces because of the comments he made about the lions tour so you know the team is struggling it's terrible and they're going against the all blacks in the next two weeks it's going to be, <laughs> I'm going to be supporting the All Blacks at this rate. It's going to be hilarious. Um, yeah, poor guys. They they seem to be, they're going there for, they're, they're in Oz for a holiday at the moment. They really are. Uh, but Aussie deserves, they deserve all the props. They've been playing so well. Great team. Great, great team. Look at the style as well. Birch, finish, exceptional. Just, just exceptional. Uh, looks too European, don't you think? You know what, Uren son? That's not a that's not a bad point. It does feel German in the way it's been done. Do you think that they got their inspiration from that, or was this just their natural progression forward? One foot on the beach. That's it, Eric. I mean, the guys have just been just been enjoying the sun and enjoying the space. They haven't been thinking about playing the game. <laughs> Razor sharp finishing. I mean, just have a look at that dial. Let's try and get in there. This watch has been the talk of the town too. I know a lot of channels have been discussing it and reviewing it. Yeah, I mean, if you've ever experienced birch as a material, birch ply, um, birch bark, this looks just like it. It's kind of scary. You need a, a few flecks of black in places to get it to really pop. But I mean, it, it's just it. This epitomizes what Grand Seiko is good. What makes Grand Seiko good? What is that even English that I just said? Uh, yeah, it's it's golden, absolutely golden. And then last but not least in this selection, yeah, Jenny L did one. I know Adrian Bark and Jack did one as well. I'm sure Teddy Baldassar did one too. Uh, Shazbot from SoCal, welcome. Chidge, need to go to London to visit Boutique. I need to go to London too. It's been, it's been over two years, I think, since I was last in London. It's crazy to think. It's going to be like visiting an alien planet when I go back there again, right? It's strange, man. It's so strange. This The, the past year and a bit... Um, Weird times, to say the least. I feel like an alien. <laughs> uh, black alligator would kill it. Nefer and I agree. It would look amazing. Another watch, I think, in this category that just begs for a strap change. So many options that you could go with. Okay, uh, Shazbot, thank you for the super chat. And for the rest of you joining, I'm sorry that I've missed you. Uh, I'm just trying to keep my eye <laughs> trying to keep my eye on the, the comments as I go. And it's extremely difficult, but that's just how we do it. Um, if only Gordon Ramsay wore a Grand Seiko birch. Can you imagine? I mean, the attention towards the watch would be awesome. Dark green. If we're going with a, a you know tree theme, I think green would be very good, Eric. I agree. 
last but not least in this category here, the 43 mil IWC on wrist, blue dial. I mean, they've, they've nailed this. It's not funny how the less you do, the better. No dates, no no asymmetry, nothing. I think the big pilot, this this is just what speaks the language in the end. Uh, do you reside in one of the South African capitals? Blaine, I did. I was in Cape Town for 20, 21 years. And my folks are from Zim. Um, and we have all as a family migrated to the UK. I think it's been how long? Five years, seven years, I think. So how long? Six, five, five or six years, I think. And... Very different world to say the least, but you know, I'm loving it. I'm loving the, the life in a different place. I plan on doing a bit more country hopping in my life, I think. You know, that's the joy. But Blaine, I'd like to know where you I think you're based in Cape Town, aren't you? You sent a cool shot of that um that Yemma the other week. That was so nice. The Yemma with the Table Mountain in the background. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Hitting the coffee. Yeah, I miss good old Cape Town. Gotta to travel back there and say hi to friends. Uh, from Johannesburg, Neil is. Oh, it's so cool. It's it's amazing how this this show reaches people in South Africa. You know, growing up there, I didn't, I wasn't in watch into watches at all, um, not at all, not at all. The only reason why I got into watches really was because I started earning a salary and coming to the UK, I needed to know the time because it's winter and it's pitch dark at two p.m. You know, so it's like, what what the hell time is it? <laughs> so watches just became a thing and. The channel became a thing, and, and it's great. It's just, you know, the fate of life. <laughs> it's, it's good. Great to see no gold bracelet watches. Ja, we will see some gold later on. I believe there's a there's a date just or day date. Uh, you must be thinking of the other Blaine. God, there's like 16 Blaines, I swear. Mm, yeah, love it. So this this is a stunning. I also think the blue dial has been done well here. This model also comes with a, with a Jubilee-style bracelet which has a micro adjust system to it. I don't know how well it works with the pilot watch aesthetic, but just to make the execution proportions. There's some watches out there that you can just admire for their proportions. And this one has it on lock. I think 43 mil nailed it. The other Blaine lives in California. Oh my God. So we've got an Insta Blaine. We've got a Blaine C, Blaine Cole. And now we've got a, got another, we've got a third Blaine somewhere. Boy. Okay. Andrew, thank you for these. We're jumping to Ben next. You were just talking about gold watches, Jao. <laughs> well, here it is. Uh, this is his grandfather's day date. Okay. He mentioned in the email that this is a little bit away from his taste. It's, it's a 30 plus year old watch, never been serviced and runs two seconds a day, plus minus. So, I mean, that's a testament right there. <laughs> Don't you love how the segues just work so organically? <laughs> JB, welcome to the show. Uh, with diamonds too. Yeah, of course. Understated elegance. Yeah, you got to chuck the diamonds on. And at the beginning of the show, we shared quite a, a diamond studded Nautilus that you might have missed. But yeah, so 30 years old, day date, uh, never serviced and still runs as accurately as possible. Blaine train. We're going back on the Blaine train, Justin says. That's great. That's great. Um, yeah, so, so Neil says, I only really got into watches a year or so before the virus hit the world. Yeah, I mean... That's, I mean, this is what I've really enjoyed, actually, last year and and now, actually. It's been such a great distraction discussing this stuff, taking our minds off things. And this is it. This is it. I've seen it. I just don't get diamonds. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can understand that. To each their own. They can be done tastefully. I think Patek is one of the brands out there that does it very nicely, especially for, for the men's variants. You know, they put them on the batons. Well, actually, the Nautilus is pretty – most of these watches are pretty unisex, right? Uh, they put it on the batons, they put them around the bezel in places, they, they fit them in discrete places that aren't often you know, the center of attention. Rolex, on the other hand, sometimes they can be a bit hit or miss, but yeah, it's a, it's a lot of bling. Oh, it's still rocket. And this is the great thing. I mean, it's his grandfather's watch. It's got some cool history. It's a solid gold day date. Why the hell not? I mean, it's it's really special. It's it's an I would As an heirloom, I would love this piece, no? I don't think anyone, anyone wouldn't love this piece. Um, I'm going to try and pronounce your name. It's Zip, Zip Leppen Goen. Sorry about that. Great to have you here. Welcome. <laughs> uh, so, so Neil says, I'm now on about watch number 25. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, no. We have another We have another enthusiast. Okay, so Ben, I love this piece. The story is amazing. The fact that it's still keeping time so well, I mean, that's that's exceptional. Hopefully, I'll hear about the palm dial soon. This is from Neferion. Bought a tutor from the AD to build some history. We will see. You know, those palm dials, for all the for all the, 
the the abuse we've given it, it looks great. I've seen a couple of live shots of it. Um, a few friends have actually picked up the watch and experienced them and photographs. They really do the watch justice. In certain lights, the dial actually disappears. You get to see just the palm effect. You can't really tell the time very easily, but I like it. What do we call it? The weed just. Wasn't that the thing? Yeah, it's great. Uh, at least that's a factory bezel. I just saw a third-party diamond bezel for a 36-day just, and the quality was awful. And this is where it gets dangerous in this hobby when you start collecting the, the fact that the non-factory set stuff. There's lots of debate around stone dials in this category, actually, and what makes it legit, what doesn't. Um, some friends, again, I think if Megan comes back into the chat, she can talk about stone dials a bit more. I've, I've seen a lot of them in the flesh, actually, and they've never grabbed me. The only one that really makes a nice difference are the onyx dials, standard onyx dial, no batons around it. They can look exceptional, but, but some of those bright colors, I just don't get it. Now that the OPs are going in a similar direction, I mm, don't know. I love this day date. I got to try on two day dates recently. Love them. A lot of fun. And solid gold. I mean, you feel that weight. Okay, next up, Blaine C. I think, Blaine, you're in the chat. This is a different Blaine. <laughs> now, we've chatted about Tono cases before, I think. Oh, I did a video about watch case design. Actually, about two weeks ago. I'll link it in the corner as a catch-up. Tono style cases are very underrated. This is the SARX051, 36 by 46 millimeters. Thanks for the dimensions, Blaine. Tono style case. And I mean, you take Seiko off the dial and this could be anything. I mean, it's it's really quite, quite a nice, as far as a presage goes, that is really, really good. Works nicely. Check how they frame the date here. They've actually They've cut it out and then they've put a square around it. That's something. And it's an enamel, it's, it's, na it's an enamel dial. How's this? So it's an enamel painted dial. And um, these these look like painted hands. They don't look like blued hands. But you know, you can't get everything when it comes to presages. A very affordable way to get into these pieces. Are they heat treated, Samurai? I'm having a good look. Oh, uh, I've I've I don't know. I don't know. I have seen painted and I have seen heat treated before this. This is, can be a telltale sign. This glossiness means that it is painted. It's applied paint instead of heat treated. We've actually got heat treated hands a couple of slides back. Let's see if I can find that again. There's your heat treated hand, which is a bit less, it doesn't have, doesn't have such a dynamic range of colors. It's either really dark or like a bright blue. I don't know, maybe someone can correct me here. I'm assuming that these are painted hands and not heat blued. But still, I mean, it's it's a Seiko presage. These aren't extreme amounts of money. And you're getting it for the design at the end of the day. They're enamel hands. Oh, God, it's plain. So they're enamel painted hands. I like it. I mean, you can't not knock Romans. Was that right? You can't knock Roman numerals on a dial. Tonneau case works nicely. The big crown also works great. Excellent presence. I love the Moser crown. Funny, I don't think we have a Moser this week. How sad is that? Ah, you either. You know what's also crazy? Um, so Blaine sent in this watch, and we actually chatted about this the last show. That Blaine C sent in a watch, and Blaine T sent in a watch, and once again these two guys submitted watches at nearly the exact same time, one after the other. And these guys don't know each other from a bar of soap. Is that the expression? They don't know each other at all. They're probably both based in the states, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. No, Blaine, you're based in, I don't, I, don't even, I don't even know anymore. But you guys sent in watches at the same time, which I find hilarious, both being Blaine. Um, Tom is saying, nice tono, Seiko. It could be a Cartier, Frank Muller, Parmigiani. Exactly. Take the Seiko name and you can have your pick. Uh, looks awesome. Getting, getting to like Seiko more and more. The Chidge, I've got a video coming out soon about a Seiko 5 that I picked up and I've bonded with it so much more than I have with the, um, the Prospects model for a very specific reason. I actually look forward to sharing that. It's, it's on the cards. It's going to happen soon. Um, Seiko is underrated. There's, I know people talk about a handful of them, but there are so many more out there for you to enjoy. And it's all down to personal preference. Blaine is in Japan, of course. Okay, okay. And I'm missing you again in the chat. Sorry, ladies and gents. I'm trying here, but I'm typical me. I'm missing everything going on in the background. Okay, carrying on through. Blaine, love this. Now, Blaine T sends in also a black and blue combination, but it's a little bit more of a discreet combination of Rolex. And he's driving a Genesis G70. Uh, I've, I've never heard of this car name before, but it's an upmarket manufacturer from, I, I, I don't know. The, I'm going to have to have to ask someone. Blaine T is in California. And Insta Blaine, you're another Blaine. So we've got three Blaines. 
I think we're starting to get a, get a hang of the thing now. <laughs> uh, so this Batman, I'm trying to work out, this is the earlier gen because I'm looking at the Swiss maid. There's no crown at the Swiss maid in the middle. So I'm guessing this is the first gen on the Oyster bracelet. There's lots of love for this watch. And I mean, you can always love, you can always love a Batman. It's a cool piece. Yeah, I'm getting this, I'm getting this feeling in the back of my mind more and more that everyone should either have a Submariner or a GMT in their collection. I think it should just be a rule. It should be something similar to having a Seiko. I think you should always have a Seiko in the collection and an Omega. I think you should have either a Sub or a GMT as, as that cornerstone, one of those pieces to add to the foundation. If only it had a loomed bezel, Samurai says, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's such a pity that they're not capping, Sapphire capping their bezels. Going back to that old school style of the, um, you know, the Baker Light and all of that, it would look so much prettier too. Hitting the coffee again. Two Blaines for the price of one, right? Right? I love that. Okay. Genesis is the Lexus of Hyundai. Okay. We're getting somewhere, Nefarion. Thank you. God, there's so many brands. I tell you what. I mean, yeah, again, coming out of the, the Southern Hemisphere, we, seem to be very, we were very drawn to German cars mainly. And coming to the Northern Hemisphere, it's about the same. So I would imagine in the States and the rest, you guys are more drawn to, to the Lexuses, Lexis. I don't know what you... <laughs> uh, Abdul saying, got to head out. Have a great weekend. Ah. Oh, Great having you here. And awesome sharing your watches in the beginning, Abdul. Thank you for sending them. I watch the rest on the replay. That's what a lot of people do. And I think it's great. I mean, I've had some, you guys in your emails, they are so flattering. They're humbling, actually. Many saying that you just love listening to this over the course of a week. You listen to it for about half an hour all week. And in the background when you're doing work or whatever else. Love it. So the the Batman, I mean, how often, how often do we need to talk up this watch? It's good. It's such a pity that they are... It's such a pity that they are in such high demand and you just can't you just can't get your hands on them easily. But, you know, such is life, you know. Uh, very nice cars. Again, I'm catching up the chat. Sorry about that. So, so Neil says, I really like in the blued hands of the Seiko. Reminds me of both Longines Tuxedo Chrono. Yep, yeah, so Tina DS. There's some great watches. They don't have to be brands that we know. Um, lots of micro brands, lots of, you know, these private houses are doing them too for excellent prices heat bluing is not an easy process and the fact that a lot of these makers are doing this you could say in quotation bespoke crafts to these watch designs love it the, the idea behind heat bluing in the beginning was to first um reduce corrosion so that was a big quite an important thing on on classic watches that didn't have water resistance and also add legibility so more contrast on the dial really love that love that bit of development uh, Instablane says, <laughs> super chat, just to be clear, Instablane and Blaine T are one and the same. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'm getting, I'm getting better. So Instablane, you're Blaine T. So this is your submission. Thank you, Blaine, for that. <laughs> Luke is joining back. Welcome. Great to have you here again, sir. I love it. So this is your Batman. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, it's just one of those boxes that you can check. You check off this watch and you're done. Move on to the next one. I, I like it. Thomason, welcome. I got all your emails. You did send me a second email asking you to conf asking to confirm that I received them. Don't worry. Every time you send them in, I, I get them. I wish I could send confirmation emails out to, to the hundred emails that come in. I should have like a quick tab, a simple way of doing it. But yes, it came in. Don't worry about it. Uh, so Yusuf saying, can I say something if I may? Been watching you for a while. I'm quite impressed how you've been able to educate yourself about watches. Keep going. Yusuf, thank you. I don't know what it is. It's all BS really at the end of the day. Like you, you, as a designer, that's a part of your, your job description. <laughs> Blaine, let's jump to the next selection. This is from, from Bonaventure. He was in the chat earlier. And this has a cool story to it. So I will. I took a screenshot of the email that he sent in because it's well worth sharing. It's, it's part learning just by researching. A lot of the way that the channel started in the beginning, what got more serious was I started doing write-ups about pieces. And that forces you to study up on the watches a lot more. And so you just go down this rabbit hole of trying to understand a bit more about how they originated. The designer always wants to know about the origins and understand its purpose. So, so that story about heat blued hands, I would never have known that. Uh, but I think it's important to know that it was first done for the sake of corrosion resistance because so much residue got into watch cases because there was no um, case protection back, we're talking like in the 1700s and on. And then for legibility, just adds a little bit more of a, a, re a reason Designers tend to always want to have a reason behind the discussion. So this one here, Bonaventure, um, thanks for that for that compliment, Yusuf. So he just went through 
the fire that was going on in Tahoe. I think if I can find the screenshot, let's see if I can pull it up quickly. Give me a sec. This watch was actually quite instrumental to his evacuation plan, which I thought made made a big difference. So let's see if I did I actually save. I hope I did. I really hope I did. No, not that one. Uh, next. No. And I didn't save it. That is so pathetic of me. In a nutshell, basically, he was having to. So the firefighters told his family that they had to evacuate the house. He had 30 minutes to do so. So the bezel basically allowed him to channel his time better as he was packing up stuff, packing bags and getting out of the house in time. I mean, you don't hear that every day. I love that story. And I don't know if he took the shot after or not. The fire missed his house, fortunately, so nothing was damaged. Uh, they were able to put the fire out just at the foot of his house, which was great. Um, but I love that little bit of a story. Type. So this piece, like as, that, as far as the story goes, this piece is now like the fire escape plan. It's, it's a scary story for sure. And the practicality of 39 millimeter Baltic Aquascaf. Uh, what else did I say here in the description? Uh, given 30 minutes to evacuate. Yeah, that was it. What an amazing watch this is too. So we know that this watch is a, call it a micro brand, macro brand at this stage, inspired by the Blancpain Aqua, Aqua, Aqua Lung, that's the one, um, which came out in the 60s. And this with the quarter batons and all of that speaks to that inspiration originally. It's awesome design as well. I think it's it's that perfect level of restraint. I would actually love to own one of these pieces. Um, I love the fact that it's just, there's nothing superfluous on it. Excellent pencil hands. You've got the rounded plots, the triangles at the quarters, the 12 to center you there. And yeah, we've got the, the bezel alone looks great. I believe it's a fully loomed bezel too, which is even more outstanding. Stunning watch. There's texture to the dial. There's lots to love. Uh, SRC and saying Rolex, Patek, AP, top three brands. I'm not going to deny that. Not at, at all. I think it's well worth mentioning. Uh, carrying on through in the chat and I'm missing you. Baltic, great smaller brand. They have that new one with the inner rotating bezel. They're doing some good stuff. They're doing some good stuff. The Chidge says, you're easy to listen to and definitely know your stuff. Thank you, the Chidge. Oh, you know, got to try. I'm glad I'm easy to listen to. I feel like half the time I put people to sleep, but SRC says Batman number one Rolex. Another thing I'm not going to deny because it is one of my favorites. Uh, the Batman on the Jubilee, the, the Batgirl, I would love to add to the collection. Uh, so so I'm going to put your name. Q Station saying, how do I submit pictures? It's in the description of the video. My email is the second the second link down. Uh, just send it to that to that link and I'll be featuring it in the next show. I have a backup of, of images that I send through and they will be pushed into the next presentation. Yeah, I'm waiting for the big triangle reissue he mentions. Ooh, the 165024. Aren't we all? I'm doing a design video on the Seamaster Professional soon, and that's going to be fun. It's a bit of a design design exercise. Right, so it's so a Jordan's babbler saying, I'm new here. Welcome. I love your show. Have you, or, have you or would you do a show talking about your own industrial design and how it relates to watches, if at all? Hmm, not a bad question. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to. I would love to. I don't know how exciting it would be. You know, it's, it's a weird thing. I'll move to the next picture. But, uh, Bonaventure, I love this. Really love the story. Great looking watch. I, another brand. I mentioned Longines and Oris earlier. Check out Baltic. Excellent value for money, I think. And their designs are stellar. It looks, I mean, just look at it. It's so good. Off angle axis. You've got a proper domed sapphire crystal on a rubber strap. It's so casual, I think, too. It works nicely. Okay, to Brian next. I think this is Neferion. I might be wrong. I might be wrong here. Nomos movement. I thought this was a nice, nice addition. Maybe it's not Neferion. I don't know what I'm saying half the time. So the question about how my industrial design would get involved, the, the downside to what I'm doing, which is virtually every week talking about <laughs> watch design, is that you see so many great watches. And you have this crisis in yourself saying to yourself, how are you going to possibly design something any better than what already is existing? You know, um, I've had quite an interesting, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty young. I haven't had that the most diverse career in industrial design, but I've done furniture. I've done a satellite here and there, which was good. Um, packaging, the usual stuff, a lot of household products like toasters and kitchen appliances and all those bits and pieces, um, you know, that sort of thing. And the principle is virtually the same when you're designing something. But it's, it's a great question. I do love design-related videos. 
I like looking at how these watches were designed and trying to break them down and simplify them a lot more. I guess the main criticism I have with a lot of watch designs now in the modern space, if there's something I can share, uh, what's a good example? All of these have been so good. Um, I guess I could share the Tudor, say, for example. You know, a lot of modern watches today seem to just excessively print text on their dials for the sake of filling up space. That's like one of my criticisms today. Um, I find it quite unnecessary. It, it is, in a way, it's, it's good because it shows this, in, in quotations, luxury feel that the watch has. But then it's also overcrowding and it gets a bit superfluous when you have things like rotor self-winding, even though it is true to form of how the watch was originally made. So it makes sense in a way. Um, but I mean, then we refer to the example of the, Belt, the Baltic. You can understand why I would love this watch so much. There's nothing superfluous on this dial at all. It's got it's got a railroad minute track. The batons, the, the, the quarter batons make a lot of sense. The typeface is brilliant. I mean, even the logo of a Baltic with that little C that's curved up slightly. It's so simple. You don't need excess on a lot of these watches. Um, Aquascaf, 200 meters, that's it. You don't need anything else. You know, so there's this fine line that I think you should tread when it comes to designing watches. And often brands go a little bit too far. We'll, we'll discuss it as the show continues, actually. I'll, I'll carry on as we talk through some of these designs. Great question, though. Um, and there's discussion in the chat about um, Salita movements. I think Thomas was talking Miotas. Love it. Um, did satellite have a rotating bezel? It didn't. No, it was a cube satellite. I did a couple. I think I did about three or four generations of them. And cube satellites, very, very good fun with virtual reality cameras attached to it. And yeah, it was interesting prospect, to say the least. Um, less is more. It's it's boring, boring to say that, and maybe that's what also kind of eliminates a lot of watches from this area. But it's important at the end of the day. It's what it's what keeps a watch looking timeless, as opposed to being something that will date too fast. Which is why I think these two, I mean, these are the two watches I own, similar status. Try to find watches that have that less is more approach. They are restrained, but they get everything across. I seem to have this fixation of having a brand name and automatic underneath it. Oris, automatic. You know, I'm driven. I love numerals on the dial. Just makes more sense to me. I love the length of the hands. How well do those hands work? Uh, the fact that it's legible, all this stuff. That's the one criticism I have of this watch is that our hand is too short. But you know what? You know what? You can't get everything right. Uh, it's fun. Watch design. Let's go back to the Nomos. Nomos movement. These guys make great movements. They've been in-house, I believe, since 1995. And they don't get enough love. Another brand that gets critiqued quite a bit. Maybe it's because of their price. Maybe people don't see that value. Oh, come back. Oh, those Nevada Gretchens. They don't see the value in these watches, I don't believe. Again, I'll say that they have a deployant class that I think is one of the best on the market at the moment. I just had a look at it today. It's like $100 and amazing. It's so lightweight, skeletal almost. It's actually how I would want to design a deployant for a watch. Have a look at it. Google it quickly. Um, Nomos Cloin Clasp. Nomos are bulletproof. Oh, they're awesome. Uh, Yusuf saying congrats on the big one. Funny enough, Yusuf, there are two guys who've sent in their big eyes for the show, and they've both gotten it because of my suggestion. And it's humbling, to say the least. Thank you, Yusuf. Uh, it's such a cool watch. I just, whenever I see it, I have to wear it. If I see it on Instagram, I immediately go and pick it up again. Uh, I made a Borg Cube Neferon. I guess you could call it that, right? Some interesting designs. Like I took some inspiration from 2001, A Space Odyssey, and, and all sorts. Yeah, it was fun. Reed saying, that's why the Omega 300 Seamaster Heritage has the perfect dial. I'm not going to deny that. I adore it. Four lines of text. We'll chat about that in a moment. Okay, carrying on through. Beautiful movement. Cedar Canoe. He has a cool collection. In fact, I think his collection was just reviewed by, oh, uh, what's his channel? What's his channel name? I can't remember off the top of my head, but he had a collection review recently and largely vintage inspired. Look at this. Le Jour, Yemma, Nevada Gretchen. These are just amazing. So let's just chat about it. So Nevada Gretchen is the one on the far right. It's got a value 23. The Le Jour has a value 7733, which is on the left. And the Yemma has a value 7733. Um, all kind of, you could say regatta timers, yacht yacht uh, timing pieces, similar aesthetics. I mean, they all have lyre styled lugs. The dials are beautiful. I mean, this has 
looks like a tachymeter and a telemeter scale inside here. It looks great. The patina is nice. The Yemma, ooh, Yachtigraph, so cool. This dial is just so nice. This, I'm so, it's sad that more brands don't do this today. White hand, breaking up all these elements. Five minute indicators, I believe. Yeah. So this is most definitely a regatta timer since it's a countdown. So five, four, three, two, one, timing your stints in between taking off. I love it. And these are all vintage. They're not reissues. I believe Yama has done a reissue of this watch and Nevada Gretchen has done the same. Another, this is a funny one. We've, we chatted about it before. It's called the Aviator Sea Diver. They didn't know what this watch was, so they called it, you know, the best of both worlds. <clears throat> and what it has is a diving bezel on the outside, 5, 10, 15. Then on the inside, you've got the GMT feature, one, two, three as the hours. Then you've got a 30 minute timer, which you could also use to time your regatta, five minute stops. It's just weird, man. I mean, watch design. This is, we're talking 1960s. Again, 1960s, I don't know what they were smoking, but it was good stuff back then. And the end result, I mean, look at it. Beautiful. Junior Johnson, welcome. Awesome having you here, sir. Uh, never knew so many people went yachting. Yeah, right. I mean, that was the jam back in the 60s, apparently. Uh, just jumped in. What did I miss? BDEV, not too much. We're discussing all sorts. The big announcement, I guess I'll have to repeat myself a couple of times during the show. As of um, October, going to have a bit more of a, a direct talk to all of you, which is going to be good fun. The format of the channel doesn't change. The presentations are exactly the same. It's just now I'm going to be addressing you personally, and it makes it a bit more entertaining as a discussion, but that's that. I'm going to be sitting on this for way too long during the show if I keep jumping back. Yeah, I love these pieces, though. Vintage, man, just hits differently. And this the, the designer in me appreciates how outgoing vintage watches were and today sadly i mean it hasn't changed very much brands are still just trying to make what sells that's always been the jam but back then they were so much more creative so much more risk taking and that was in part because there was so much more competition in the mechanical watch space to produce something that was good and of course there were contracts too you had military contracts wanting these things so oops come back competition forced these brands to be inspired and forced them to do better to outcompete. nowadays i mean the mechanical watch is not as in demand as it was it's now seen as a luxury item anything mechanical is a luxury item in the watch space it's going to be the same with cars very soon too i reckon uh and yeah i mean these things are just gems absolute gems uh, so Javier, love the idea. Keep up. That's a pleasure. Thank, thank you. Um, Jean-Claude Beaver, welcome. I look forward to sharing one of the best photos of the show. Uh, and friends, morning here to make breakfast. Uh, enjoy your Sunday. Enjoy your Sunday, Mr. Beaver. Yeah, that's awesome. And Jamie, I missed your super chat. Sorry, he said, sent you an email. New pics of my Patek 5231J. That'll be shared next show. I'm looking forward to it. Really looking forward to it, Jamie. Yeah, I mean... I don't, we have a few. We have Nautiluses. We have lots of Nautiluses at the end. The theme of sports watch seemed to carry through the entire <laughs> secretly Ewan McGregor. <laughs> no, I wish I was Ewan McGregor. I got to like get more of a Scottish accent going. That'll be good fun. Hitting the coffee once again. Oh, by the way, raise of hands. Who wants to know how the name whiskey was, was first created? I learned a bit of, um, a bit of the, the lingo this week. I don't know how I stumbled on it. Anyway, carrying on through Cedar Canoe. Love this. Such a cool selection. He sent, we have had a couple, I think, was it B-Dev in the past? There was someone who sent in some great skin divers that we shared. Okay, next to Chris. Another example of Grand Seiko and this one. Ooh, I'm trying to remember what this one's called. It's called the Cloud or something, right? It's the Autumn Collection. I can't, they've got so many damn references now. For this, it's the SBGA413. I think it was an American only, American market only edition. Cherry Blossom, wasn't it something like that? <clears throat> Neil asking, do you still have your Seamaster 300? Yes, I do. Absolutely. I've been wearing it very often, actually. I've been taking this month off the channel, and I wear it virtually every other day. I, I love it. We're going to be having a look at one just now. In fact, we're still on C. The show has been running for, oh, no. No, no, no. I've got to hurry up. This is terrible. I've been talking way too much. We're it's been over an hour and we're still on C. <laughs> oh, no. BDEV. Yes, it was me. They're now on sale on eBay. I'm going to have a look at some of those skin divers. Uh, Mark Woods, welcome. 
So I want to check out this five, two, three, one, and and that was it a world time? I don't know. Water of life. That's it. Aquavit, and in in Gaelic, it's Ustja Baha, I believe. Ustja Baha, which eventually got narrowed down to to whiskey. So from Ustja turned into whiskey. The more you know. A uh, beautiful presentation of this watch. I mean, this is wallpaper worthy. I think the texture on the dial is amazing. This is what Grand Seiko is similar to that white birch that we saw. This is good. We are running long, Neferion. This is terrifying. The show might get way too... That's it. Ustia mistranslated to whiskey. That's it, Eric. Love it. I love it. Um, yeah. Amazing how languages evolved over time. I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks from like a thousand years ago, because why not? And you learn, you learn how different the English language and, and so many languages were back then. Amazing dial. It's a dream. I think generic whiskey was from American West where they just poured whatever they could get in barrels. Back East, you could order a rye bourbon scotch, especially. Uh, that's great. Uh, yeah. So we've chatted about this this case design. This dial is something else, though. Chris, I, I love it. I love it. Carlos, welcome, Carlos. Tempting you to have whiskey. Why not? I mean, it must be mid-afternoon, that side of the world where you are, I'm guessing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's 11 p.m. this end. So it's you have to you just have to do it, especially when you're trying to be presentable and talking about all sorts of ridiculous subjects. How about turn? How about you turn Ustia into whiskey? Something really had one too many. Amazing how you turn Ustia into whiskey. Yeah, you, right, right. Another thing to mention is it was like a thousand years between that word and whiskey, so kind of makes sense why it, it evolved like that. Okay, moving on next. Chris, love this piece. What a presentation. We're going to see more high-res shots of watch dials in a moment, and amazing. Okay, so now we're getting to another Rolex. This is from our man, Watches by Design, Curtis, and he loves the Sky Dweller. Now, he is, he is a pilot. We've chatted about him quite a lot before. He's, he's a retired pilot, but he still does training lessons in and around California. He flew attack helicopters, and I think in this case, <clears throat> voice is going <clears throat> voice is going badly. I'm going to mute myself. Hold on a sec. Voice dropped off completely there. Fisherman's friend to the rescue. This is what we do. I've been struggling with my voice today, believe it or not. So he sends in a two-tone sky dweller <clears throat> on a leather, lizard leather strap. Oh, God. Imagine he does lose his voice while he's doing the presentation. That'll be an absolute and utter <laughs> disaster. Right, so let's chat about your paracord. He loves his paracord. So this strap is from Dangerous Nine, bespoke strap from John Glantz in Munich. So it's a it's a leather. It's a, what am I saying? A what is this? It's a lizard skin leather strap, I believe, or maybe it's alligator. Sorry, I might have completely completely botched it. Two tone, amazing combo. I think we actually going to have a look at another sky dweller later on. But the gold bezel and and the stainless steel and the GMT components. It's one of Rolex's best kept secrets. I think the Sky Dweller deserves way more love way, as far as watchmaking goes. I mean, I did a video about this like two years ago, I think. Getting some hands on the time with this watch, I, I just immediately thought how amazing it is for a watch that you can you can set everything with the crown and the bezel. No pushes required. That's just amazing. You got a you got an annual calendar. Annual calendar, yes. Annual calendar at the tip of your fingers without any edit needed. Looks so good. Ah, of course, to each their own. Is a bit of a divisive watch. Uh, is the red at the eight o'clock? Yeah, it is. The red at the eight o'clock. So this meaning that we're in the eighth month of the year, no? Was this taken a while back? I don't even know what month we're in. It's one thing I can't do is remember months off the top of my head. I know we're in September, but what is that? No, we're not. Are we? Yeah. No, we're in August. August is the ninth month. No, no we are in September. Good God. It's bad, man. It's bad. It is bad. Uh, and I see Flip and Zipper joining us. Welcome, Flip and Zipper. Absolute pleasure to have you here. Watch by design, ostrich leather. I was close, right? Lizard and and standard leather, ostrich leather as a combination. I mean, ostriches look like dinosaurs. So has anyone ridden an ostrich before? I don't recommend it. It's a little bit um, a little bit dangerous. Curtis, love it. Absolutely love it. September is nine. Jamie, thank you. So, so this was in August. Right, we're getting on track. August... And I uh, can't see the date, but you get the idea. This was one of the first watches to do this, I believe. A lot of brands are jumping on this idea now of having uh, our components. 
Moser was also one of the first in the category to have like a little arrow pointing out the components on the perpetual. So good. Such a nice, simple approach of making the dial readable without it being in your face. Thomason saying, nice sky dweller. Saw one the other day at an online auction. Black dial with Arabics. Yeah, white sun, subdial register. However, no takers. I think that's the first gen with the white subdial. That one was never as popular as the double, the double black components. Roden Ostrich, no wonder he isn't having a baby. You're right, right, Neo. That's it, eh? That is it. Oh man. Oh man, Neo, you're great. It's a bit of a letdown after that, after that remark in the beginning. I mean, yeah, right. Speaking of which, I can't remember when. I think the last live show we were chatting about Shaken and those watches. I'm so wanting to get a Shaken to add to the collection. They're so fun. I love them. Get a shaken joker just to rock. It's one of those pieces that you could happily just enjoy. And yeah, really cool. Neo, I think it's one of your favorite watches out there. I can understand why. Uh, An ostrich rode me once, Pound the Drum says. I mean, yeah, we've all been there, right? Watch by design looks great. My 7.6 inch wrist. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is awesome. It's a really nice piece. 42 mils is a good size, especially for all the components that it has. It needs to be big enough to read. And the argument I think we've always had about this piece is if Rolex was to design a GMT complication watch in the 50s, this is how they would do it. Um, unfortunately, back then, I don't think they had the tech to make a day-date, date-just styled watch. This feels like something straight out of the 50s if they had that technology back then. We all know they went to the GMT. Um, that's awesome. Really nice. And there's going to be another one later on on a Jubilee bracelet, which is just as cool. Okay. Curtis, thank you. This picture next. Oh, man. This picture next is so good. Now, this is London. I'm pretty sure this is London. This is right at the end of... I'm going to take a guess. I think this is right at the end of Oxford and Regent Street as you're walking around the bend. There is a Ralph Lauren store somewhere here. Maybe I'm completely off. But this comes in from Charlie. He has a 16-month-old, and he's celebrated with a watch. What a watch. Uh, it's just a gem. JLC, Moon Phase, I think it's called the Master Control Thin Moon Phase Date. One of those, all of those together. Just stunning. What The setting, this was so close to being a cover photo, by the way. The setting was so nice, but the problem is I just couldn't squeeze the watch and the wrist in and get the text in. So what a cool shot. So he also have an, he has an Instagram at um, Charlie's Watch. I'll try and tag it in here if I can. Charlie's watches. Let's see if I can do that. There it is. If you want to follow him on Instagram, it's so good. JLC, another brand, not a sports watch since the theme is about that, but you just can't deny how cool this piece is. I mean, it's automatic. It's ultra thin. It's got, it's got all the bells and whistles. I guess the downside, the main gripe that a lot of us might have with this piece is we don't really understand why it has a, a moon phase complication. It's not everyone's up to everyone's taste. But then again, what I do appreciate is that it has a date that doesn't need a window. The, the hand is the component that points to the date, which is a much better feature to have on a dress watch. And stunning. Just sublime. Really nice. So many, many agnostics saying JLC Master Control Calendar. That's the one. Master Control Calendar. Okay. Yeah, what did I say? Master Thin Control Moon Date. It's just too much. Just too much of a description. Looks good. Jamie's saying, nice one, Charlie. I really admire JLC. I bought the rose gold phase de lune Atmos clock for a wedding anniversary. Ooh, and JLC Atmos are just out of this world too, right? They are some of the best, I think. As, as far as an Atmos clock goes, you, you can't actually do better in that area than getting a JLC. That's really where they, they cut, their, cut their chops back then. I think they did some pioneering work in that category and that pushed them in a different direction. Okay, so... Marcella is saying, I'm considering to trade one of my watches for the Longines Big Eye. What do you think? Hmm. Well, look, I'm biased. I own one. I'm wearing one right now. I would, I would say to everyone, go out and get it. They are that good. Like, I know I've, ex I've experienced datagraphs and, and some pretty cool. I've experienced all the Speedmasters, vintage and modern, except the most recent one. I, you know, it's personal preference and taste. It's good, man. It's a good watch. We're actually going to have a look at one in a second. Um, not seen blue version. We're going to see it just now. If we're talking about the big eye, it's the next one coming up, actually. It's such a good blue dial. Yeah, I agree. And, and talking about the versatility of blue next to green, this is something we could also debate. 
uh, for this around this watch these watch designs it's a good photo though right ingle ingle b boy i always get your name wrong but love it absolutely love it what a cool setting stunning so huge congratulations charlie the birth of your 16 month old and for this piece you can't deny that these pieces are just a cut above jlc i hope it's on a deployment got to find yourself a deployment class with a watch like this just to protect that leather strap okay so there was a question about the big eye this is the new titanium that chris this is another chris there was a chris earlier that i had i don't know i've probably got the, the names mixed up he just picked this up and he says that this is now one of the pride and joys in his collection i can understand why that i don't know what it is i don't know what it is that really i mean that video that i did about it i'll link that in the corner if i remember it's it's like over 12 minutes long it's like 15 minutes long or something and i don't even think i got to the point about why i liked it so much it's deep um offers so much for a great price it's so versatile the blue and titanium is also a great value prop if you want to add blue into your collection it's it's given you that that dash of vibrance in a, in a selection and the fotina that's another thing marcello it's not for everyone for sure showcase welcome to the show sir welcome to the show um i think i caught a bit of your live stream before the before this started you were chatting about um what was it chatting about rolex for a bit i think and that was that was when i hopped off i had to get ready for this ah it's great having you here showcase i hope you're well um We've all been enjoying watches over the last few weeks, I think. Enjoying taking time off. Love this big eye. It first released in Italy. Pity it is only a 30 minute, yeah, 30 meter of water resistance. Again, I'll jump back to mine if you're interested in chatting about it again. Um, I personally, for me, I prefer the versatility of this watch. I was really lucky. I got it at like 30% off. It was a clearance sale and I snatched it. Just one of those days you say, got to take it. I'd always, the first thing that came to mind was I didn't know these watches were actually still around. I thought they'd been discontinued quite early on, but I just love it. I have four or five different straps for it, leather, sailcloth, all on deployments. You just swap them out. Oh, it just does it. It just does everything you would want as a daily. And I've never been a chronograph guy. This is something really important to hammer home. I've never been one to love chronographs. I've loved dive watches. I love time onlys, but this chronograph changed me it was the um the gateway drug is that the expression so this is the titanium version speckled blue dial faux patina black elements to the sub dials great great breakup of colors and i think it adds that little bit more vibrance i do love the texture to this dial too it's nice um you did well the big eye such a nice watch dear artifact we're gonna have a look at a great watch in a second from you and yeah awesome awesome Nongjin just needs to be, yeah waterproofing that's another thing. 30 meters isn't that bad, though. I mean, 30 meters, you can actually submerge the watch in water. It's not a problem. You can swim with it. Uh, it's a little bit dicey, but I know Showcase is a good person for an example here. Picked up the Ed White 321 recently and ended his video dropping it in a glass of water. And I love it. That 321, I would happily add that 321 Speedmaster to my collection. The 57 300 is great love to add the three two one i've handled the original ed white oh they're good the vintage ones are those old school cases just a dream i hope you're still enjoying it showcase james uh yeah so great piece i love the fact that this has become a, a pride and joy piece of his collection they've done so many good things right here i mean rhodium this is a rhodium plated handset but it's it's brushed it's a brushed rhodium plated finish which means that it's it's basically like a white paint non-reflective and legible legible all the time yeah anyway gonna have a look at another one later on chris thank you for this i'm so happy that i in a way influenced you to look at this watch keep wearing in good health and enjoy <laughs> i would not swim with the 30 meter watch you're not the only one to ferry on next we're jumping to krapika and he has oh my god this is one of the best watches of the show too are you ready for this oh this is cool this is so so cool so we chat about the A384. I think we've featured it before. The A385, I'm sure we've featured on the show, but we've never featured the Liberty model. I've always called this the lighthouse or the um, the barbershop because of that second hand. This, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, like the CoverGirl, which is the A3818, this was only American issued. I think only made for the American market. And I have never, 73 MAF, you have one of these pieces. You have the A384. 
I have I've never seen this before in the flesh. I mean, it's very difficult to when you're on the other side of the world. The blue dial, just so good. The red accent, it's got a roulette date window. I mean, come on. The second hand is just the right amount of fun. You know, it reminds me of um, the Aqua Terra, greater than 15,000 Gauss model. So nice. So, so nice. God, I love it. And the contrast, it's so legible. You know, the, the, re the readability on those sub dials. You just can never put down an A384. That old school case is beautiful. The nylon strap, you can either love it or hate it. Uh, you can, of course, find an aftermarket or get the original A the Gay Frere style bracer that they now make for these. Oh, it looks good. Really nice. You won't see these very often, I'll tell you that much. Unless you're based in the States, I don't think these come up very often. So worth worth sharing. That hand is amazing. Get the watch just for the chronograph hand. Yep, that's it. That is it. Uh, oh my God, that's good looking. Marcello, it's nice, right? Yeah, Marcello, just a bit of background. Marcello is also an industrial designer. He's graduated now, I believe. And I think we both have similar tastes when it comes to watches. We understand. I've had some interesting questions about industrial design today, Marcello, and how I would design what my approach would be to designing a watch. And it's it's a real crisis kind of question. Chrono Craze, welcome. Yeah, it's good. This watch is crying out for a NATO. It would look good on one. Find an Admiralty Gray or a, or a blue, just a navy blue strap would look the business. I love it. Would love it. Love the red, white over the blue. Yeah, really cool. One year left. Or seriously, one year. Oh, God. Good luck. The final year is the worst. I'll tell you that much. The requirements for final year is a. Des oh, I don't, I don't envy you at all. That's all I can say. Enjoy a sleepless nights. Just, just enjoy it. It's, a, it's always a pleasure. Okay. So love this piece. Thank you for sending this in. This is a real treat. I have never seen one of these watches as a photograph, let alone in a presentation. So it makes a difference. It looks like a Pokeball in the center. Zach, I love it. That is funny. Yeah, right? It does. Check it out. Any of our 90s friends is actually upside down. That's how, you know, if we were, I'm not going to try and flip it because it might crash the page, but it's upside. That's so funny. God, Pokemon back in the 90s. That was the jam, huh? Okay. Dear Artifact next, I have a bit of a surprise. Dear Artifact takes, without a doubt, some of the best photos on this platform, and he shares them with us. We all know what the green bag means. Uh-oh, no, oh, no, Magic Mouse, why did you ruin it for us? Look at that presentation. Look at that. I just, the, the details that matter. I'm sorry that I ruined the surprise. The Magic Mouse just, just tripped me up. It's lost its haptic feedback. I don't know why, but... I used to be able to pressure press the thing and get a, get feedback. Now it now it doesn't do it. Um, keyboard is also going. This is like a 2015 Mac. Oh man, that sucks. Oh well. So there's the reveal. This being the 126613. No, the LB. I think it's called just the, the bluesy, the modern bluesy. 41 mils. This is his dad's father artifact. <laughs> and I mean these photographs again. We want to zoom right in and enjoy the details. This is such a good shot because you can appreciate the ceramic as an almost matte finish, even though it's it's technically highly gloss. Oh, it looks good. The only Dear Artifact deserves a job. He does. Dear Artifact is an absolute boss. He needs he needs to be, I think he should double as a watch photographer for brands. Like brands could hire him out to do presentations, to do cover shoots and stuff, because his stuff, his photos are that good. So the only gripe I have with this watch, it's a, it's a love it or hate it thing, but the fact that they got rid of the gold print for the, the, the text on the dial, I'm a bit miffed by. I guess they, in a way, had to make it look different to the previous generation, and that was probably how they did it. But still, I mean, it's, it's great. It's a watch. That's the thing. It's a watch you get into in your later years. Even though I have friends who've, who've inherited their dad's watches from the 90s, you know, early 2000s that have the same style. Isn't it crazy how timeless this, this style is now? Even though it's it's really quirky, really bizarre. Amazing shot though, right? I mean, the detail of this picture is just out of this world. And then on the wrist, we can appreciate some some skin, I guess. That's what we that's what we do. Appreciate the skin. Yeah, that's awesome. It is really, really special. Funny. So we've had a GMT, we've had we haven't had an Explorer one yet. That'll be coming up soon. Not a criticism, but the loom pip on the bezel is it damaged i think it's just the lighting i think it's just the lighting we can have a look again and see what the comment is again no i rec i don't know actually 
there's a bit of a different depth to it. Rolex in their QC, they can be a little bit, nah, but I believe it's just a bit of bit of lighting fleck. So you can do this with them. Um, with these photographs, you can actually go right in and have a close look. Oh, look at it. Now the, now I can actually hear the big screen is spooling up. Uh, do not start teasing the gray hair people, Carlos. Don't worry, I won't. I won't. Don't worry. Yeah, it's something I can get away with as a 20-something year old, I guess. But still, it's not good. It's awesome. What a cool piece. I, dear Artifact, your shots never disappoint. So chuffed that your dad was able to pick up one of these. Um, Catching up in the chat. Not a Rolex person, but this is a dog's, a, <laughs> a dog's, okay, the dog's bollocks. Church, yeah, it's good. It is really good, right? Uh, just the lighting, the pip is all good. Ah, love it, love it. You can't improve the watch. It is perfect. It's it's nice. The royal blue and the gold work very well together. Rose gold paired with this, I don't. Maybe it would look pretty good if you had the CHNR, you know, aesthetic as well as blue accents. We've seen it work very well with models like the Aquaterra. They have an amazing navy blue and and rose gold aesthetic. Ah, great watch. Okay, going to have to move on. All the show is going to take months. We're still on, oh my lord, we're still on D. I've got to move through these. I don't know why I'm coasting so much. Remember, you have some 50-somethings watching. <laughs> Mark, yeah, right, you're right. The majority, I think, who are watching are in the some 50s category. So, yeah, I agree. That is funny. Rolex crown of the six. That's one way to tell that this is the latest generation as there is the crown in the middle of the Swiss made. Also, the fact that the text is not gold anymore. Okay. Also, I just love the fact that they've, they've kept the serifs on the numerals and all that stuff that matters. But then the modern watch with four lines of text, technically six lines of text and a logo. I don't know why Rolex does that with a lot of their pieces, but you know, you know. Blaine's saying, I wish I was 50 again. Oh, don't we all... Sorry, I'm going to stop now. Dominic, we're moving next. Dear Artifact, thank you as always, sir. Oh, just win after win. This is him watching, I think he's watching his son's football match, rocking an Ottavia. This is the recreation of the Ottavia, the Hoya Ottavia. Oh, I love it. Just love it. Man, watch designs. They look so good. They just all look so good. Today, we've had a great selection. I'm glad that it, it somehow managed to keep to the theme of sports watches in one way or another um a sub with soul turkey vulture no questioning that i like it great call on that aquaterra blue and gold it looks awesome one of my favorites insta blaine i got hands on with it a while back and man on a even on a rubber strap it looks so good so versatile it's crazy to say that about a solid rose gold watch with a with a bright navy blue dial but man it's good it is so nice. Never tell your ages. Vintage Boy, yeah, I think it's good to keep it secret. It's better to keep it understated. Yeah, and it's it's questioning whether or not you look your age, and that's that's another question entirely. Coffee again into the system. Sam Ray saying the bezel looks like, a Zin, looks like it's from a Zin 104. No question there. It looks good, right? I like it. Um, and here we have, again, we have a GMT-style bezel as well as a dive-style bezel. I mean, all these brands back then, back in the 60s, they were they were doing they, whatever they could do to sell the watch, they would do it. So you have that dive watch, that GMT watch style, uh, but the balance is on point. There's no date complication. We featured a Carrera a couple of weeks back, I think. Also spectacular. So if you can, in fact, I was close to picking up one of these. Um, I don't know if it was the silver dial, but there was one for sale on eBay. I was checking out by accident. I stumbled on it by accident. Well worth looking at, I believe. These designs, I mean, Hoyer, they were at the top of their game in the 60s. And basically, they set the standard for other brands to follow. Well worth paying attention to. The Carrera, the Ottavia, dream watches. Great watch, great, yeah, the beads of rice, great bracelets for sure. Megan Arthur's joined us again. Welcome, Megan. Hope you've enjoyed your evening out in good old Munich. Uh, oh, I can't wait to travel again. <laughs> I'm 50-something, but I can't remember 50 what. It's a good thing to forget your age. That's what I've done. Um, I had to recall it the other day. And yeah, it's it's a bit of a kick, kick in the nads. The date is part of the lowest up. Oh, you're, oh, wait, you're right. Look at this, BDEV, great point there. Just like the Breitlings that they're doing now, Breitlings and their Chronomats and other models, the date integration at the six, out of the way. One of the best date integrations on a watch, again. Why don't more brands do this? 
I mean, it's so deceptive. You just can't read it from a distance. I mean, if it, if it wasn't for you telling me, because the resolution is not as high, I can't actually see the defined edges from a distance. So there we go. Man, I'm just going to clear my throat again. I've, I'm obviously on a roll here. Man, it's good that I can mute myself and cough my lungs out without having to scare the hell out of you guys. Okay, so Dominic, absolute gem, gem of a watch. LVMH making a comeback. Good claim. I think it's all relative when it comes to the watches, really, at the end of the day. Some of their designs are just a cut above, a cut above the rest. I love that. So, Dominic, thank you for that again um, in, in the comments about the, the date and BDEV. So, so good. Out of, out of interest, Megan, are you wearing an Explorer while you're exploring Munich? I'd love to know. And speaking of Explorers, Dominic, beautiful piece. We're jumping to the next Dominic. We've got a Dominic C, and now we've got a Dominic K. No, sorry, Dominic S. Right. It's so confusing, man. It's so confusing. Just picked up one of the watches that I have been lusting after, we could say, that I've really been looking at and thinking about, even though I cannot splurge on a watch like this anytime soon. The 124270 36 Explorer, the latest, one of the most interesting Rolex releases to date for me, at least. Uh, the 36 mil size is still a contentious subject, and I'm looking forward to experiencing one just to see how it integrates into my life. But man, it's good. I mean, they've, they've done a great job with the design of this piece. I think he just picked this up, and he's wearing it at the office. This is, again, Dominic S., if you're in the chat. Uh, that Hoya is not for a 50-year-old without LASIK treatment. Yeah, I've, well, talking about the silver dial and the polished components, this is better, maybe. Uh, it's a bit more legible. Yeah, it looks so good, man. Also has a 24-hour bezel. It's a weird combo, right, Marcello? <laughs> I do love this. I'm on the list. Yeah, I mean, the versatility of 36, I, I think, is quite underrated today. People don't talk about just how it's it's one of those watches you can put on and, and truly forget you're wearing. Um, nothing wrong with 40 mil. I mean, the majority of my pieces are 40 mils and it all depends on straps and all of those things too. But the way these watches were made back then, the 36 size, actually a two-tone Explorer. How fantastic is that? I mean, there we go. So Megan just picked up one of these in two-tone, the 36 mil, the, the unloved example that may very well become a future classic, very much like the admirable bluesy Submariner. Uh, we might see something similar for the Explorer in the next 20 years' time. I, I don't know. But oh, it's cool. It is too cool. Let's go back to it if we can. Yeah, 36 mils, a gem. Taking hit from the coffee again. Machu Picchu. Now, Dear Artifact has like 8.2 mile long wrists. And he says that this is the watch. He wants to get this. So I don't think wrist size has much to factor in. If you love the watch, if you love the size... Some watches just work for a certain size, and this one definitely does it, does it well. Also on the list, I'm seeing a flood of these watches on social media. It's crazy. And Anil's saying, for me, the 214270 hits the sweet spot, and it's all relative. I mean, for wrists, for sure. It was funny enough, it was a watch that I never bonded with. Um, I actually watched a review video of my, well, just a couple of bits of old stock footage that I did when I had the watch in, and it, I don't know why it just never sat with me. Maybe I'll feel different about the 36, maybe not. Maybe a 1016 is the is the watch of my dreams and I should just you know, save up and also sell a kidney for it or maybe a bit of my liver. Liver grows back, so it's probably a better choice. How long do you have to wait to buy these? Bonaventure, it's all relative. I think uh, if, you, if you're fortunate, um, if your story checks out, you might be able to get it on the same day you go in. If you have a relationship, it might be a lot easier. I would say about six months, maybe, at a push. These aren't seriously in high demand. But then again, a lot of people are jumping on them because they're accessible in the sports watch category. I put accessible in quotations. Okay, carrying on. 1016, Megan. You, you, everyone knows how much I love the 1016. It's, oh, I love it. Carrying on. So the more I look at it, the more I like it. Vintage Boy, it's one of those pieces, man. It's one of those pieces. It grows on you like a fungus. It grows on you. To Eric next. Eric, I think you might be in the chat with us still or, or still celebrating about the double South Africa loss against Australia this, the last few weeks. He sent in Frogman. He loves his G-Shocks. He is a guy with huge wrists and he loves these pieces as an, as an adventure piece. Oh, again, clear my throat. Hold on a sec. I'm not having luck today. 
funny. I spent like two and a half, three hours in the sun today, and maybe that's done it to me. I've my voice is is on the brink, and I've never touched a cigarette. How's that? So, Frogman, I love this presentation. I believe this is Loch Lomond, and I mean Eric. Eric's a gent. This, I mean, G Shock. We should all appreciate. They all deserve some love. This one definitely it falls into that category that I can really enjoy. The overbuilt G Sharks that just have so many complications and more. So good. Yeah, Megan's saying Aussie. I mean, you guys kicked South Africa's ass. As a team, Australia played so much better. Both games, you pl they played their hearts out. South Africa is there on holiday, and they're up against New Zealand. <laughs> they're playing New Zealand soon. Oh, it's gonna be embarrassing. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't. I think it's gonna be pretty hard to watch. Personally, uh, New Zealand backs are dangerous at the moment. The Barrett brothers. Oof, it's it's not good. It's not good. <laughs> Okay, hitting, what does it say, located, loathed, Tomlinson Lee. <laughs> Taking hit from the, uh, the Machu Picchu again. I think we have a few more G-Sharks on the show. But I'm loving it. We're still sticking to this this theme. Um, modded link, Sam Ray's asking. I don't know. Maybe it is. I do know that these some of these more hardcore variants do have, like the the, the Frogman, there's the Mudman. They all have these fancy, really fancy end links, which make them a bit more... You know, hardcore. It's the way to do it. Just picked the range man's another one. Father Artifact just says, just picked up a range man. Great watch. Do the handyman projects for sure. As far as exercising goes, I'm still someone who straps on a, a cheapy dive watch or a field watch uh, to to time my workouts. I just set the bezel or, or set the time to the to the hour and just let it run down. I don't know why. I enjoy I enjoy exercising with a mechanical watch. Okay, Eric, love it. Love it. I don't know if you're still you're still here with us. It's a stock model. Check it out, ladies and gents. Frogman, really cool piece. Rangeman's also good. I've checked them out in the past. I need to pull the trigger on one soon. I think as far as G Shocks go, you either go all out or you or you don't get one. You go all the way. Carrying on through. Because I mean these have everything. They've got like like water condensing and they got like like the heating in your house and all these complications that's just so unnecessary. It's amazing. To Jeffrey next. Now this, this is great. Christopher Ward, the one watch that I have been drawn to in the past is the Sandhurst, which is loosely based on the Smith's W10 field watches from back in the day. And this one also has the same kind of vibe to it. The criticism we could have on the watch is the dial and the typeface is a little bit all over the shop, but I really like that relative simplicity that it has. The bezel looks great. It's out of the way. It's it's technically a dive bezel, but you could also treat it as a as a pilot bezel in a sense too. And having a look at these, it's on a collar rib strap, I believe. Looks great. The reason why I chose this, got some flowers in the background. Pansies, I don't know. I'm going to take a guess. No, it's probably not. Yeah. I've got family members who are like legit horticulturalists. So watch that one badly. Collar rib strap matches the loom. Looks so good. So, so nice. And he sent in another shot of a Speedmaster. We can have a look at it in a sec. I think the first Speedmaster of the show. Thomas, thank you for the super chat, sir. Nice bluesy dear artifact. The bluesy always reminds me of Blue Shirt Buddha. I hope he's doing well. Blue Shirt, shout out. Yes, for sure. Is he in the wings? All good having you here, Blue Shirt. I hope you're putting your feet up. hope you're relaxing. I hope you're wearing that watch. It's a classic. Timeless classic. Worth all the attention and appreciation. Epic Christopher Ward, isn't that cask? I think they have gone to cask certification now. Yes, I believe so. I think so. Um, Nicholas Chavez, welcome. Live, best part of the weekend. Oh, man. Pleasure. Pleasure having you here. I hope you're well. And yeah, carrying on through. Um, everyone, I hope you're putting your feet up and just enjoying me, regaling you with <laughs> all sorts. Any link to Sandhurst offers a trend? It is. Yeah, so it's based on, uh, I don't think they have any kind of official ties but they did name it after Sandhurst as a military inspired piece, which is really cool. I believe that's not, that's, that's for the, the, the na not the Navy, for the Air Force, right? Because there's the Limpskim, I'm absolutely butchering these names now, which is for the Marines and Sandhurst is for the Royal Air Force. Yeah, there's some, there's some relationship there, but I don't know. I might be for the army. Okay, there we go. So Sandhurst is for the army. They do have a couple of these interesting partnerships. I don't think they're actually issued pieces, but they do take the names. So it's quite nice. A uh, bit of bit of local heritage. Uh, RAF Cranfield. 
I've been to Cranfield. I have been to Cranfield before, in fact. Crazy, right? The way you travel through towns in the UK is amazing. Like one minute you're there, you blink and you're not, you know? Uh, okay, carrying on through. Jeffrey, love this. We're looking at your Speedmaster next. This is an outlier. This is a real outlier. Let me try and get this reference right. So it's a date. It's an automatic. So it's, I think it's loosely based on ETA caliber. The reference is, let's see, 3513.50.00. It's a Velju 7750. Ah, that's something else. Omega and their reference numbers, one of the hardest things to get right. 3513.50.00. Uh, so it's silver dial, silver on silver. This aesthetic, I mean, this feels like something that we saw Magic Mouse. Come on, darling. Come on. i got to give her some medicine. This is something we expect to see like on more 90s inspired pieces. Like as we were getting through the 80s and the 90s, we saw this top down arrangement. I don't know why the Magic Mouse isn't cooperating. It's still a cool looking watch. And there's another shot that came in just at a different angle. Oops. I love the fact that you can recognize Speedmasters just by the liar lugs today. It's so good. And funny enough, we're jumping next to a Seamaster, one of my favorite watch designs out there. And it's it's on a Hodinkee strap. It looks the business. One of the best submissions for the show too. Hitting the coffee. So Mark's saying RAF is Cranwell. Cranfield is where it is my master's. Oh my God. You can see I'm still a newbie here, Mark. I'm still a new guy. Take a hit from the coffee again. Yeah, it's called it's called Limpston, I think, and that's where the Royal Marines train, out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> it's great. Uh, Final article sa says the dear artifact just had his second son last Saturday. Oh, you know what that means? Oh no, that means another watch is on its way. And I know the one watch that is going to be in the collection. It has to be that Explorer, and that has to be the, the celebratory piece. Even if it takes another six months to get the watch, dear artifact, that has to be the watch in the collection. Huge congratulations, man. Uh, and Father Artifact is a grandfather yet again. Uh, why do these shows always make me want to put on my nicer watches? I guess it's temptation in a way because we're seeing all this beautiful stuff in front of us. That's like the, the positives and the negatives to the show is that you get to see everyone's taste and then you feel like, oh, I've got to put on something good to just to just feel like I'm, I'm rocking something that works with everyone else's selections. This is a really quirky piece. I love the fact that it's a Velju 7750. And I mean, this is one of the early era Speedmasters from back in the day. Yusuf, still still come across uh, speedies I have never seen before years into addiction. Oh, yeah, of course. There are so many, right? Yeah. I mean, the, the running joke we all have is that Omega does limited edition Speedmasters. Who would have thought? Uh, it's crazy. There's always something out there. Thank you for the super chat, by the way, Yusuf. There's always one of these pieces out there that you don't see. And a lot of the time, just like Japanese special editions, say, with, with bright colors and accents that blow you away. And all of a sudden, you're looking at it completely differently. I've never been a Speedmaster lover, but there's definitely a handful out there that, yeah, I would add to the collection. A 321, not because of the movement. If I could get a vintage 321, I would. Uh, but it's, that, it's that, uh, that case, the case and bracelet to me. I love it. Even though it's not true to how the modern direction of it went, the flat the flat case is something else. Speaking of which, Jeffrey, love this watch. Thank you for sharing your pieces with us. Oh, here we go. So Harry, Harry sent this in. I don't know if he's in the chat. I love this photo, by the way. House in the background, really nice. And oh, look at this. This is the modern take on the 300M. So this is the 41 mil model that came out, I think, in 2015. And then in 2017, the 1957 re-edition came out with the Speedmaster and the Railmaster on a Hodinkee leather strap. This is another watch that screams out for strap changes. There's so much to choose, and oh, it's good. There were questions about if I still own mine. I absolutely do. Uh, it's one of my favorites. It always will be one of my favorites. And you can see why the designer of me gets like so hot under the collar looking at it. You have everything you would want on a dial this this to me i mean this arrow hand is even better than, than what's on the original on the the reissue uh white accented arrow hand easy to read all the marks hit i mean the hands hit every single point on the dial you can tell the time so simply you have quarter arabics everywhere typeface i actually prefer the original that the c master is at the base but here it's balanced it's not it's not overemphasized. the bezel is ceramic so it's more usable man it's good 
It's a great watch. The downside is it's highly polished. That can either be a loved or hated thing, but then you get some patina to it over time. And man, it's an awesome piece. So Gerard Fax says, cheers, my friend. Appreciate it. Both my wife and son are healthy and well. I'm very fortunate, man. Huge congratulations again. Special. I have yet to experience that. And I don't know when that's going to happen, but I mean, bringing a child into this world must be something else. It must, I mean, I've, I've heard of stories. I mean, I've got friends at the moment who are having kids left, right, and center. And it's one of those moments when you're actually in the delivery room and you see that for the first time, not the actual birth, that can, that can definitely freak people out and put them in a coma. I mean, when you actually have the child in your arms and you realize this is yours and this is a part of you all of a sudden, and it's, it's like that, that hits. There's, an, there's, a, there's like a psychiatry, there's a link to it. Isn't there like a, a term, an expression? Oh. And Jamie's saying, bless Omega. Yeah, right. This is just oh, cut above. Right, carrying on through. Do you like the Zen 144 vintage Porsche design copy chrono? Jay, I'm trying to remember the 144 off the top of my head. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm from the 80s, right? It has the PVD style case. I haven't been much of a fan. <laughs> Carlos, I'm going to read that in a sec. I haven't been much of a fan of, of that. It's, it's with the three, it's the, it's the chronograph. It has the three references, some, very similar to this Omega in a way, right? It's a simple, simple layout like this. That Porsche design, that, those references have never spoken to me too much. I might have to look at it more. Um, more of a fan of the truer to Hanhart inspired Fliegers. And, and Zinn Easy M's for me are the jam. Like I would take any of those, the 1.1, the Easy M4, the U50s, the U1. The what's the UX with the quartz movement that's like a trillion meters water resistant? They're so good. I mean, Zen, we chatted about it at the beginning of the show. If getting into a watch for a thousand euros, check out Zen. Uh, just remember what you were like as a child. I will, I'll, I'll regale everyone in a moment, Carlos, until your son is a teenager, he says. And I mean, yeah, you know, the best remedy for that send him to boarding school, knock the crap out of him. He'll come home, he'll be the sweetest kid on the block. Trust me. I've been there. <laughs> okay, carrying on, hitting the coffee. Uh, Blue shirt is in the chat. Welcome, sir. Dopamine, yes, full of dopamine. A bit of dopamine, a bit of alcohol, a bit of carbon in the system. Hitting the coffee again. I want to just end the show here on this watch. I love it so much. Nothing. This is the Seamaster. Oh, it's so good. Okay, we have to move on. Harry, I love this watch. Absolutely adore it. Ingleby Boy is next. He sent in ridiculously sized images, and we are going to have a look at them now. Oh, man. Now, you'll like this, Carlos. Black Bay 58, Sterling Silver, oh, Magic Mouse, Sterling Silver. This one hasn't patinaed. Now, Carlos is a great, I mean, he's right here with us. He is a great piece of evidence here. He's been wearing the watch for like three months straight. <laughs> Thank you for that, Megan. Thank you for that. Uh, he's been wearing the, the Tudor for like three months straight now, and it's patinaed slightly. Sterling silver is, is a cool material. I think it is. The only downside is it scratches so badly, but otherwise, boarding school can be good and bad read. Yes, I'll, I'll definitely agree to that. I mean, me being an only child being sent to boarding school, I'd say the first two years were absolute hell. Like, you know, in, in South Africa, the middle of, middle of nowhere, there's, there's no right or wrong. There's just survive or be killed you know so yeah you you definitely you definitely learn a thing or two while you're doing it but then again it does teach you a lot about morals and all that too and it's kind of like a lord of the flies situation so you got to just go into it that way lord of the flies is like the perfect summary of boarding school you don't sacrifice pigs you sacrifice each other in a way but you know there's there's that whole faction thing and teenagers in a room the worst thing to do is when you put teen like like 12, 13, 15 teenagers in one room in a boarding house and expect them to get along. Like I swear it was the first day of class and my room was in one of a really nice area, like like windows and stuff. <clears throat> in the corner of the corner of the room, there was a full on fist fight broil, brawl going on when I got back from class. And a guy was slamming this other dude's head into my locker, and I think he actually cut his head open on the lock. It was beautiful. I mean, this is your introduction into boarding school, you know? Yeah, not for everyone, but I mean, you learn a lot. You do learn a lot. Yeah, and, and talking about children, I'm yeah, going to carry on through. Sorry, I missed you. Stint in the armed services trains leaders. That's a good point to read. I mean, I think boarding school can prepare you a lot for the military. 
I mean, mine was pretty military backgroundish too. I mean, in the early years when you're starting out, you have to you have to do roll call every morning. You have to ring the rise bells. You have to sweep the quad and wear uniform and march. And also, I mean, it's it's like you know, one of these old school. Anyway, carrying getting getting back to watches, I believe this is on a Phoenix Phoenix strap. And this one definitely looks pretty brand new, and I love squeaking chair. She's she's back in action. Uh, this one. This one looks good. The gray on gray does work nicely. Try an inner city or oh, inner city comprehensive school. Just as bad, but free. <laughs> man, man. And Megan sending lots of hearts to Bruce. Blue shirt. I hope you're doing well, sir. I really hope you're kicking it back, taking it in. Just listening to me regale you about what I'm talking about boarding school. I don't know how that happened. I haven't had enough whiskey. I think I need to drop the coffee and hit the whiskey now. I love lamp. The fairy on, don't we all? Anchorman, what a dream of a film that was. So I love it. Carlos, if you would like to share your background with this watch and how it has been, how you've been wearing this. I mean, he's been using this as a daily for about three months. It's developed some patina and he's loving it. So it'd be nice if you could share that for a bit with us. The show has now been going for two hours and oh, oh, there's still a lot to go through. I've got a motor through some of these now. It's such a cool piece. This was close to being a cover photo. The Porsche logo is upside down. Isn't that like, like a curse in some countries? Oh, it's good though. It's really nice. But I mean, cool piece. The Black Bay, the Black Bay has some chops, and it's nice to see that enthusiasts across the board are getting into these watches for the right reasons, not for the resale value and all that BS. You're getting into the watch because it's it's bulletproof, quite literally bulletproof. It's great value for money. It's all in-house. And it's simple. Uh, but let's not mention Marine National because that was a farce. We were expecting something to come out and it didn't happen. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> Lady Gaga is the Tudor brand ambassador. She wears the new silver too. Yeah, so is um, David Beckham and a handful of others. And the All Blacks. Talking about rugby again, the All Blacks are big Tudor ambassadors. That's a, I think that's a very good partnership actually. Because, I mean, New Zealand as a rugby team, they are on top of their game at the moment. Whoa, they are so good. Quick, quick players. Beautiful watch. The 58 is a great piece. Yep, I agree. The Chidge, Vintage Boy. Poor man's Rolex. No, Kevin, I don't think so. I think we've transitioned beyond that at this stage. Since it's now in-house and it's not ETA-based, it's not using Rolex parts anymore. I mean, it's all its own, its own jam. I guess the one downside that they have at the moment is they're just sticking to this Black Bay format and they need to expand. I mean, the Black Bay GMT, the Chronos, blah, it's just getting excessive. They need to expand out to looking at, you know, we have, have such a cool repertoire of stuff to refer to. The Explorer 1655. I mean, come on. Imagine they recreated that watch. It would be an absolute smash hit. Who lost the bet and who always loses the bets? Megan asks, I lost the bet. Uh, Tudor Marine National was expected to be released 1st of September. We got a 32 millimeter Tudor Black Bay instead with a silver dial. And that was it. So I always lose bets and it will always be the case, I think. I'm the best person that you can bet against. Uh, so I love, that wa I love the watch. You can share those photos with Tarnishing after 2.5 months. I will next week, actually, Carlos. Good point. I definitely will. I've been talking about bloody, I've got to carry on. I've been doing this for so long now. All right, so we're jumping to JCB next. He was uh, he's with his family today having breakfast, so he shared a couple of pieces with us. And I don't know if you know this, but a handful of us join into the Hawked Take, which is a live stream show that he hosts every Thursday, I think. And it's Australians and a South African basically just chatting, chatting about with it. Shooting the breeze, pretty much. We discussed GPA, GPHG. It's a very chill hangout where we just banter about all sorts. And he sent me a nice description with this watch that I'll just read out for you all. Um, this is the Trans Ocean Chrono, limited edition, was my first nice watch. I picked it up after a 12-month search looking at all the chronographs in the 10000 Australian dollar range. I love the Navi timer, but was scared of it back then, so opted for the softer Trans Ocean, uh, then the new B01 with the then B0170 hour caliber. So this has got a really cool in-house movement, of course. It's beautiful. I mean, the shot is great. Isn't it nice when you're driving home or when you're in the car and you get this kind of effect with the sun right, right in your lens? And it was a wedding gift from my parents and in-laws. And the process of searching and finding the ultimate piece led me down the rabbit hole where I am now. 
including talking watches with with me and James on the Hawk Take. <laughs> Shameless plug, uh, which is the second was a highlight of my week. To the second photo, this is even cooler. I love this. He he shared a really cool story on the live show once. This is him and his son a couple of weeks back. And he said that my youngest son has started to gain interest in the chrono. Start them off young. <laughs> Start them off young. Um, so we're chilling on the couch. He usually cozies up and starts fiddling with the watch. Here I'd recently picked up a rubber mesh strap. was showing him how it looked. And it's a great picture. Yeah, I mean, what's what I like about his background especially, we talk about how we were influenced to own watches in our lives. For me, it was catching James Bond when I was like in my, I was about seven years old as a rerun in South Africa. <laughs> Over like October, they would have reruns of James Bond. And I just remember seeing the Submariner and thinking that's such a cool watch. I didn't know it was Rolex or anything. In his case, uh, his father used to travel quite a bit and he used to bring home Seiko chronographs for him when he was really small. And he grew up just thinking that the chronograph was the jam. And that's always been him. He, he's, a, he's an addict when it comes to chronographs. So... I love the fact that he's now passing that on to the next generation, where the next generation is now loving chronos too. It's in the family. Keep it in the family. Start them young. Get them a field watch. You'll never go wrong. I've said this so many times. If I was to start the hobby again, I wish I'd started in high school and had a field watch. And that'd be it. Right. Not a fan of writing generally, but this is nice. There's some good, they do some good stuff. These are obviously older generation pieces. Um, they're doing some pretty good things with the premieres, with the top times. I'm loving, loving the top times. I miss the Transocean line from Breitling. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And catching up, Megan says, beautiful photos from our friend. Yeah, it's great. It's so nice. I love, love the background. The Mido Ocean. Oh, hold on a sec. New Mido Ocean Diver Opinions. Jay, yes, it looks good. With a blue bezel? Absolutely. Megan has the black dial, the black bezel variant, and she'll probably attest. Awesome value for money watch out there today. Would recommend um, the blue. The blue bezel just caps it off even more. Um, it's it's similar to Aris and their sixty fives. It's quite flamboyant, not for everyone, but I think it works. Reverse panda dial, simple things like this has an applied Breitling logo. It's things that brands just don't pay attention to. The hands, the pencil hands, perfect length. It has this form of you know formality to it, but also feels like quite the sports watch too. Evenly balanced date out of the way in the corner black window good stuff really good stuff okay motoring through jcb thank you as always sir jumping next to oh this is funny this is really funny john john send this in now um he doesn't know anything about this watch he picked it up at a clearance sale for like 45 bucks this doesn't have much to do with <laughs> with sports watches but this is gonna be funny russell you've been out celebrating your birthday you didn't tell me it was your birthday today russell but don't worry we're gonna get your nautiluses at the end Happy birthday, sir. Hope you've had an excellent day. I've got to mark this down on my calendar. Congrats. Another year around the sun. So this brand is called Royal London. Okay. And it's called the Westminster, right? And he has no idea what this, what this is, what it does. Uh, but he's really enjoying the process of just, you know, having a jam and enjoying it. So he picked, again, he picked this up at a clearance sale for like 40 bucks, 40 pounds. And he's just rocking it. And again, the watch hobby doesn't have to be about the snobs, doesn't have to be, you know, the fun is to just, it's just experience stuff. I think that's where the real joy is. I mean, why I love doing these shows is that, yes, we're not all going to love the watches that we see, but it's great knowing that they're out there and that other people are getting into them. And it's, it's good to know their rationale behind why they got into them, trying to unpack that a bit more. Uh, yes, Blaine, could I be spotted 2000 on the side of the case? Oh, talking about the, the case, the side of the Breitling case, sorry. Yeah, I thought there was another Blaine joke going on there. It was in the week. Oh, Russell. Oh, Russell. Great having you here. I hope you enjoyed your, your weekend. Of course, last weekend was even better for you, right? You really had a good time. And super chat from Thomas again. Happy birthday, Russell. Russell is an absolute gent, ladies and gents. So, John, this is a, <laughs> this is a cool piece. I would imagine it's a Seiko movement with a day-date like this. Royal London, Westminster. Look it up, ladies and gents. Maybe we'll be able to find something relative to this piece and what it, what it refers to. Nice dial. Quarter Arabics are always good. To John M. next. Now, John was in the chat earlier, and he's picked up a handful of vintage pieces recently, and he also got a Zin, thanks to our recommendations at one stage. And catching up in the chat again, and I'm missing. Let's see. Demetrius, welcome. Summer, summer in Greece is very busy, you know. Car. don't rub it in 
we've had an amazing few weeks in the UK. And just today I spent like two and a half hours in the sun. Had to do it. Had to be done. Uh, I'm loving it. I miss the sun so much. So I uh, appreciate it. Greece is an amazing place. Man, it's good. That is wild. It's cool, right? I'll chat about it now. It's called a Sandos, right? From the 1970s. Obviously, it's from the 1970s. It's got a Velju 7733 movement. And also, I mean, we chatted about that Nevada Gretchen and those vintage pieces earlier. Another regatta timer. How's that? All of these watches from late 60s transitioning across the 70s had these just funky as dials. Uh, I, mean, I assume Mark P likes that Royal London. Maybe he does. Maybe he does. Uh, you probably know Russell already, but you both have your collections of both of my. A lot of you guys catch up on Instagram, and isn't it cool how that platform has allowed us to connect? I love it, man. I love it. Coffee again into the system. Cook like a lobster now. No, flipping up. No, I must say that the UK sun, the Northern Hemisphere sun, is not as potent, I've, at least I've found, next to the Southern Hemisphere. You go outside for 30 minutes in the Southern Hemisphere, and you turn into a so a bright red flame. Here, you can actually sit outside for two hours and go brown and not not go bright red. So, yeah. <laughs> love it. I love it. Uh, I believe Jamie talking about watch references now. Okay, carrying on through. So this is an interesting, I think what he's done nicely here is pairing the strap with the watch too, the red sensor for the red seconds, <clears throat> red, white, and blue, regatta timer, typical, champagne dial. These watches you can find for bargains online. And I think the 70s zone is one that still is quite untapped in the watch space. And just wiping some sweat off my forehead because this is a talking a lot is tiring work, I believe. Carrying on. John, this is great. Hans is taking a week off. Good man. I've taken a month off from the channel. I'm doing this just as a just as a bit of a chat, but it's it's nice taking some time off from watches. The first time in over two years I've taken a month off from the channel. Isn't that weird? I can't believe it. Um, I'm still doing stuff behind the scenes, but I'm just not posting anything. It's strange, man. It's so strange. Okay, carrying on through. So Joseph next. John, funky piece. Keep sending in these 70s examples. I love them. The television case, great looking edges to these cases. Carrying on through to another Black Bay. This is the Harrods edition from Joseph on a collareb strap. And he's got some palm fronds in the background for Neferion to enjoy. It's always good. Yeah, these these watches, it's funny when they were released and how mad guys went or people went for them. Now they seem to be toning down a little bit more. Uh, Klaus, welcome. How much? How many watches do I own? Not many, actually. I could probably count them as I'm talking to you here. I have, let's see, I would say seven, eight, eight watches in the collection that I wear. One or two of them I've kept in the box, which I'm probably going to sell pretty soon. They haven't been watches that I've connected with. I'm the kind of person at this stage where I have to wear the watch or else it's no point in keeping it. So, um, yeah, I, I don't have many. I really don't have many. I've been very fortunate to get hands on with a lot of pieces but mm, and meet lots of you know collectors and some great people out there. But as far as a collector goes, I'm not someone to really write home about. <laughs> I, I take my time with watches too. So it's it's not the best formula when you're a, a watch content creator so yeah it's pretty funny um so these harrods editions are great also just love that they've like accentuated the tip of the hand with green subtle very very subtle chrono craze can finally leave phone and the show running on the side and follow along great great yeah by all means and i'm probably going to jinx it now i do i have any wood this is like an mdf wood i'm sitting at right now no i don't have any real wood nearby yeah that was a pun um, to, to touch wood that the show is not going to crash, but for once the show isn't crashing. So isn't that good? Yeah. Again, I don't have any wood nearby. <laughs> this is bad. The alcohol is obviously doing its job. Uh, you should rename wrist shot week to talking watches. Thomason, you know what? I don't know how wrist shot week came into being. Um, actually I kind of do. I kind of do such a cool, such a cool combination. I think this watch works extremely well on the leather. Um, the green, the green tones are down a bit. It's not so in your face. And then the leather just accentuates the green accents. Feels very natural, you know, it feels kind of healthy, <laughs> weird vegetation. And we're going on through, oh, the next watch is one of my favorites. Oh, we're seeing some good stuff today, man. So, um, I would love to be able to downsize on watches a bit. It's difficult, Carlos. My rationale at the stage is just 
if it's not something that you want to wear actively every other day, then think about it. Think about getting rid of it. Love the green tone. This was taken in direct light and makes a big difference, right? Chrono Chris, great suggestion there. Great point. And I'm missing, I'm going to scroll up a bit and catch up in the chat. I'm sure I've been fair on with palm fronds. Uh, yes, I agree. Good idea. So Mark and 73 math. Oh, good idea to take some time away from watches, kind of like rehab. It's good. It is good. Seiko getting punted. Eric, you know, you're not wrong. The the I haven't connected with that prospects. I found a hundred pound Seiko that I am loving, which I will share later on. But so uh, Neil is leaving us. Good night. It's been a great chat. Thank you so much for being a part. It's been like over two hours and you've been with us. It's great. Thank you for asking some great questions too. Uh, this is a cool watch. So anyway, chatting about Wrist Shot Week, how the show came to be. I wanted an acronym that was easy to spell. And since these were like majority, actually, I'll, I'll go to the next watch. We can chat about it. Joseph, this is a dream of a watch. The combination, stellar. Wear it in good health. The gilt, the brown, and the green together. Nailed it. Uh, okay, so carrying on through. Juan, what have you done to me, Juan? He just picked it up this week. Now, Juan is normally with us in the chat. Uh, this this thing, this thing is great. Is Neo also leaving us? Neo, you've been a, a gent. I've loved that that point you mentioned earlier about me having a kid. That was, <laughs> that was great fun. Ah, oh, I love this watch. Right. Do we have to go there? So what I love is that Juan gave me like a full description about this piece. And I'm like, yeah, I know exactly what this watch is. This is, this is, man. Uh... So this, imagine, how's this for an example? This is like taking the Seamaster 300, which is, I'm going to find it now. Where are you? Uh, Breitling Seamaster. So, just look at this dial, Seamaster 300, and then hybridizing it with the big eye. And there's your, there's your result, basically. Seamaster and big eye having a love child, and the end result is getting something in the world of, oh, and I've lost the submission. Here we go. You'll find it eventually, the deep sea. JLC deep sea chronograph. I've, I've ever, I think this also came out in 2017. The, the, some of the best watches came out in 2017. They were just stand out. So what is this? It's a diving chrono. It's about 100 meters water resistance, I think. And the real party piece is this little element on the dial here. When it's red, it means the chrono is running. When you push the chrono button again to stop it, it'll be a half white, half red. When you reset it, full white as a display here, as you can see at the center of the dial. And that's just basically a, a simple excellent design indicator telling you that the chrono is running, that you shouldn't press the buttons when you're actually submerged. I mean, it's, it's fantastic. Everything about this watch, I mean, look at the typeface. There's no clutter on the dial, nothing superfluous. It has all the separate hash marks in between the minute markers here, so you can really read the chrono nicely. The bezel, it's got a rotating bezel. It's on a tropic strap. Hmm. This is why when I say it's difficult designing a watch, when you see stuff like this, it just makes you, yeah, it just ends the conversation. You just have to give this as an example and say, yeah, that's it. Hitting coffee again. It's a nice watch. Sure is, Patrick. I agree. My wife tells tells me I'm like a gorilla with a bunch of bananas with, when it comes to getting rid of watches. I mean, that's not, the best, that's not the worst thing, Vintage Boy. Put it this way. It's an addiction that we can really enjoy. It's not an addiction that's bad for our health, which I love about watches. You know, it's... There's, there's so much to them. Actually, let's get really deep. I think uh, coffee's going down. I'm going to hit the whiskey for this one. This, if, we, if you want to know, like the 150 of you watching, if you want to know the reason why I love this as an industrial designer, wait a couple of seconds. And as I'm doing that, I'll actually switch to me lecturing you for a second, the lecture face. So this is why I love watches as an industrial designer. Simply put, these watches, are, things are made to be last. <laughs> what? Are made to last. Today, we see so many products that are bought, sold, consumed, and thrown away. And that's the problem with the world we live in, really, is that disposability that comes with a lot of products that we see. And the downside of industrial design is that you're, you're largely at the forefront of making those things all the time. With watches, these things will never go out of fashion. They're special. They have sentimentality to them. They're built to last. They're designed to last. And they're so intimate as objects. As designers, uh, I'm going to go try and get back to the image. As designers, we so often talk about the intimacy that you have between you and the product and the feelings that you get, the emotions and all of that. And these things, 
being a part of you, going through generations, being handed down, being these little mechanical instruments that you are, in fact, powering yourself, you're winding yourself, you know. Um, it's a little machine that's built to to work through all conditions. There's too much to enjoy, but that is it in a nutshell. I'll do a video about it, I think, one day. Um, amazing. Watches, to me, they are special for that and a lot more. The designer in me appreciates them, but then just as the enthusiast, you just can't, you just can't not appreciate them. Unless you bought the watch from Wish. <laughs> Didn't realize they did this, the church. Obsolescence is the modern world. So yeah, yeah, and the modern world sucks. Agreed. I definitely need to make a video about it that's a bit more long-winded. But that, in a nutshell, is why I appreciate them so much. This watch will never be put in the bin. Never. It'll be handed down. It'll be sold somewhere else. There's always someone out there who wants one of these. And, I mean, just look at it. It's just... Oh man, let's look at the case back quickly because, of course, JLC knows how to do their case backs. Now, remember that they also made a deep sea member box in the same category here. So, the member, member box just being something that vibrates and chimes on your wrist. Uh, it's an automatic chronograph, too. I mean, of course, JLC knows how to do their stuff. You've got a little skin diver at the back here. Mm, reminds me of Longines, actually. I think this was like a generic symbol that a lot of brands used back then. Because, of course, these watches were all parts bin specials when they were originally made. Dials were made by different manufacturers. This is, I would imagine, the same case that Omega used. I mean, it looks exactly the same. Yeah, got it. We're getting really deep. I love it. The depth to discussing watches. Thank you, everyone in the chat. Please do a video that I can show my family and friends. Mark, for that reason, I will do it, I think. I mean, that could be like a very important video that, it's, you know, how difficult it is to just say, talk about this stuff on the fly to a camera lens now all of a sudden. Uh, uh, considerable amount of bubbles there, right? Was that a rebreather that the diver was using? Hold on a sec. No, it's not a rebreather. If he was wearing something on his chest, then we would have to complain. Yeah, a lot of things that films get wrong is when they're wearing rebreathers and they produce bubbles. It's a bit of a problem. So what does this mean, Eric? Does this mean it's shallow water? Because he does have a, or she does have a spear. So I'm guessing shallow water diving skin diving is awesome okay and another shot from juan this is the latest submariner is this this is no this is the first solid submariner we've seen we saw the bluesy earlier but this is the latest and greatest oh man i love this watch too one two four zero six zero dream thank you flip and zipper well said ah and and megan saying most people think we are all weird and don't understand it right right it's something, it is quite unrelatable. I mean, it's the same with people who collect handbags and, and all sorts of other things. But watches just have that little bit of extra intimacy that so many other products don't. Um, and, and our passion needs to be shared more out there. It is. I mean, the watch hobby is growing. Uh, we've noticed it. Um, the enthusiasts are climbing. In fact, there were actually reports as to just of last year how much more interest went into watches because of the world being in the state it was. And a lot of people having more time on their hands. Uh -huh. They were able to you know, get into the hobby more and start learning. And it's channels like these and many others who got, you know, getting people into understanding these and yeah, it's fun. Sharing. <laughs> yeah, Mark, I know. Archie does both. Beginner videos about the hobby. I think it's I think it's necessary. So Chrono Craze, there's probably no watch JLC has botched. The brand can't do they can't. God. And that reverso they did, was it this year? For with the, the, the complication that they put in that? Oh, man, that wasn't a GPHG contender because they're not a part of the show, but that is the watch of the year. I mean, as far as complications go, world class. There we go. So Lasse Bing saying that he got into watches during last year. That's it, right? Okay, carrying on through. The Submariner is a dream. Juan, you broke my heart with this watch because it's one of my favorites. One of my, um, again, I'll reemphasize, I'm not a chronograph person, but this is one of my favorite chronos of all. Um, Stunning, just stunning. Okay, so next to Kevin. Oh, this is even better. Mm, man, man, man. So Seamaster 2254, we love this. A couple of watch owners have actually picked up the piece because of my recommendation. Um, I've had some hands-on with one of these, and it's so good. It's it's great. One of the best Seamasters they've ever made. I'm going to hit some coffee now. But what makes this one special, in a nutshell, is... Owned it for 20 years from new, been a daily for 18 years, two services, no polishing. He's retiring it and giving it to his son. I mean, you know, what? That's so good. 
actually, you know, once again, we got the segue in perfectly talking about passing watches down, hitting the coffee again. That not better than a sub. Yeah, well, it's, it, they're, they're different watches for sure. I mean, this is ETA based. As far as Seamasters go, though, you can't deny that this is a goodie. Um, there was a great comment. I think it was left on, on Showcase Watch's clip. I, I stumbled onto his live show, and he mentioned one. Th uh, there, there, was a, there was a comment saying something like, a Rolex is, what is it, the, the Submariner. I could say the same about the GMT, but it's, you must, you just must add it somewhere, somehow. It's one of those pieces that just needs to be added to a collection. And I'm beginning to feel that way too. There's there's something more than it just being a watch. Uh, it does have not just the status. I guess we can talk about the marketing and all that stuff. But there is something about it that adds that extra element. But the 2254, for 20 years, a daily wearer for 18 years, two services, unpolished case. A lot of fun. Man, I chatted about this watch a lot too before. Um, that is a goodie in the CMOS. It was nice. I need one, right? 73 math. The one suggestion I would make to anyone out there is to look uh, for a Planet Ocean bezel insert if you can find it. One of those original Planet Ocean models. So good. We've actually featured it. I think on like episode three, we featured the Planet Ocean insert on this model, the, the bezel insert. Class act. So, Thomason, thank you for the super chat. You've been with us the whole time. We're going to get to you eventually. Hey. <laughs> I don't know how long this show is going to be. It's been running now for two hours and 22 minutes, something like that. I don't know. Anyway, carrying on through. Of course, modern Omega is better than modern Rolex. <laughs> Let's start a debate, Jay. Let's start a debate. I, I admire, when I look at the two brands, actually, we're going to have a look at some just now. We'll get to them. Um, but I look at modern Omega and modern Rolex in, in a different category. I think they share a different space. Right, carrying on through. This is a great piece. Moving on next, Kevin, I love the story. Thank you for sending this in. To Keith with another 58, this being the guilt dial. We're seeing a lot. So we've seen an excess of Explorers and Speedmasters in the past. Now we're seeing just tons of 58s today. There are going to be a few more, I think. There are a few more on the back burner. And I think he was on holiday just exploring. This has become like the one go-to watch in this hobby for everyone. And I do like that. It's, it's replacing what Rolex as a brand used to be. You know, this egalitarian, everyone can use it. It's accessible. Unfortunately, that last word is not the case with modern sports Rolex, but, you know, it's great. Um, anytime, Thomason. Oh, man. Yeah, so the question, I think, I think I will, talking about straps and bracelets, that is the one downside that what Omega has, unfortunately. Um, some of their models, they can be very hit and miss. Their designs, I think, are also pretty unique. I like their catalog. Very diverse. We look to the Aquaterra. It's great all around the piece. We'll talk talk about it more. Uh, Keith, another shot he sent in was of the Explorer, and this is the thirty nine, right? So the Explorer always manages to segue into these shows. Oh, it's one of the originals. And check this out. I've just noticed this now. Look how rounded the bezel is on these first gens. So this was the first with the T Rex hands and all those the comments that this was made. Uh, this is the first model with the white gold quarters. Look how rounded that bezel is on the outside. It's not flat. I, I, in a way, wish that the Explorer had a rounded bezel like that still. That's a really nice feature. I, I don't know if it's a trick of the light, but I've always noticed that the bezel is slightly different on these models. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I've never experienced the first gen of these pieces, but it's a cool watch. I do like, next to the 36, I do like that the 39s had Explorer at the base. It makes for a nicer reading experience. Rolex, always perpetual. Explorer at the foot. It forces you to look down a bit more. And then you have the superlative chronometer. And I mean, this stuff can go today, but whatever. It's a part of their it's a part of their mantra, I guess. Hit from the Talisker, getting back into the chat. So Daniel's saying homage watches are terrible, except for shooter. I think if you're someone like me, I mean, hell, I started the channel with homage watches. If you're someone who has a low budget and I guess there's two it's two arguments. If you're someone with a low budget who wants to just get a little bit of experience, trying to just enjoy some aesthetics, it's a pretty nice way to go. For long term, yeah. But then when you get into the luxury space, finally, um, there is definitely more than just a brand attached to the watch you're getting. I can fully I can fully attest to that. There is there's research and development that goes into a lot of these pieces. 
um, especially when it's all in-house, the movements, everything. You can appreciate it for its accuracy and, and a lot more special things. Um, if ever there was a perfect watch, I think the Explorer wins. Yeah, I've always been on the fence discussing it as a perfect watch. The 1016 to me is still, oh, it's a grail. It's one of those pieces that I will probably never lose interest in. Um, I love the versatility. But then again, there's lots of people on the other end of the fence who don't like the fact that it's just a time only. And there's, it's a bit boring. And I guess that's the point. And yeah, you either love it or you hate it. That's the BS, the T-Rex. Yep, T-Rex hands. And catching up, I'm sorry that I'm missing you in the chat. Urun Sun saying, I'm an Omega guy. Love the fact I can buy them, right? You can go in tomorrow and pick it up. Sorry, not sorry. Can't agree, Jay. Vintage Rolex has it over Vintage Omega as well. Huh. Oh, Megan, I don't know. There's some good watches in that category. I mean, we've both handled Vintage Speedmasters. They look pretty good. Come on, the MOD 2254. No, sorry, 165024 got to love that watch. Got to love that thing. But then you've got this. The, I guess the problem is there's a lot more variety in the vintage Rolex space next to vintage Omega. Do I have anything else I can pull up? Yeah, let's carry on. So, Keith, thank you for this. We're going into a completely different zone now from Chrono Craze. This is the Ferrer Universal, b uh, the, the Bernier Chronograph. And what else did he share in the description? It's Chronograph Sport. Okay. We were chatting about Baltic earlier. Ferrer makes a cracking watch too. Man, that means some good stuff. There, there was a, a regatta time I actually saw the other day chatting on on the Hort Take. It had this just such a cool layout. It's got a it's got a turtle, not a turtle case. The the seventies styled rounded lugs, a mono pusher I think. Big sub dial on the right. It looks so nice. It looks so so nice. So check this out. So it's a white dial. Looks like it's got a white polished tachymeter bezel, which is great. The red accents are everywhere, which is good. And notice how the running seconds is a blued hand. The rest are all in red. I like that a lot. They have some good design chops, I think. They're getting a bit more creative with their products. You don't see this kind of stuff with chronographs, these, these elements that are highlighted on the on the, the subdials. Something that I think we can appreciate. And if we get in on the wrist, I only saved three chrono craze if you're still watching with us. Check out Ferrer. I think it's Ferrer Universal. That's the brand. Man, they had, they had such a good watch the other day. Uh, I can't remember its reference or its name, but it's a mono pusher chrono, I think, if, if I remember off the top of my head, and it looked so out there and different. Um, amazing. 70s inspiration for sure. Late, late 60s, early 70s inspirations looked amazing. Yeah, so talking about vintage Rolex versus vintage Omega. The thing I will definitely agree to is that vintage Rolex, there's a lot more variety and diversity out there. Vintage Omega, you can look to, you know, the Seamasters of that time were kind of semi-dress watches a lot of the time. Um, and there was this gap, I think, in some places where Omega sort of lost the plot a little bit. They didn't have so much, uh, you know, intrigue in the way they did their designs. But then between the 50s and the 60s and into the 70s, ooh, some good stuff that they offer. But next to Rolex, yeah, I'll agree. The Explorers, the GMTs, the Submariners, uh, the date justs, the day dates. Yeah. A lot more to pick up, I think. He's still he's still here. So he's wearing this, he's wearing this watch today. Ferrer, new mono pusher. It looks so good. Would recommend just check it out on Google, ladies and gents. Um, amazing style. Awesome piece. And Chrono Craze has an awesome channel, by the way. He is in the chat. Uh, he deserves a lot more people following and looking at his stuff because he does these little segments called watch your strapping and he just rocks tutors and whatever he has on the wrist while he's in the car and has a quick discussion around the piece very diverse taste worth looking at for that reason pepe d's nuts good having you here i love your name don't ever change and carrying on so chrono craze love it carrying on to lee next and funny enough another black bay but this one oh i'm trying to remember where he's based Oh, he came, I think he's, hmm, he, he's from the UK, but he now lives the Canary Islands, I think. Was it the Canary Islands? I'm going to take a wild guess. He got this watch 10% off retail where he's based. How cool is that? 10% <laughs> off retail for, I mean, you don't, you never hear about that. Black Bay 58, once again, I don't even think this is the last one. We've only seen about 80 of them. Uh, taking a hit from the whiskey again. Farah had a ceramic bezel. Do they? Low-key collector. Great point there. Um, Ferrer brand worth looking at. Baltic and Ferrer. 
Lots of appreciation there. I still love the fact that the show is kept to the sports watch. It seems pretty consistent, pretty consistent. Lee, he's with us. Thank you, Lee. You are in the Canary Islands. Tell you what, alcohol is the best thing for memory retention. You heard it here first. 50, 50, 40, 48, no, what is it? Yeah, it's like 48% alcohol. I can't believe it. Um, great, man. Awesome. And then this is even better. So date just from 1963. Listen to this story. He picked it up at a cash converters in the Canary Islands for way less than it is worth. I mean, this is the thing. Go to broker ships, go to places where people trade in, and you'll be surprised what you find. It's good to go to places where there's less love and attention with watches. Again, we, we've said this earlier that there's still not a great popularity when it comes to watches. I mean, if we're talking purely world percentages, I think we're like 0 0.009 of the world who loves watches, maybe even less, <laughs> who are enthusiasts. Um which means that you can still find these for, for pretty great deals. Yeah. So again, so not only did he find this from 63, I think he had it repolished. He had it touched up a little bit more. Uh, cash converters, he got it for a great price. And then the Black Bay 58, 10% of retail. I mean, that's an awesome story. Where is my new Ranger by Tudor? Exactly. Or in Sun. Where is the new Ranger? Where is the new Marine National that they promised us? Not happening. Not happening. Ah, sucks. Just sucks. Okay, Lee, I love this. Jumping to Luke next, and he sent in, I'm trying to remember. Oh, Luke sent in, he sent in so many watches. I only chose, I cherry picked a few. You were in the show earlier, Luke, so I'm sorry if you if you left and we missed you. Um, I'll, okay, I'm going to try and get this right. It's an Alpino Kriegsmarine on a Hadley Roma strap. Just another example of a watch that understands its balance, space. We can call it a, a sector dial in a way. It's got a sub date arrangement the alpina logo and the arrow hand i wonder if it would be would have been better just to settle it down a little bit more is to get rid of the logo and to keep the logo as a part of the counterbalance on the hand looks nice and a fair mentions cool date i think i've said this before it was on the show actually i greatly appreciate dress watches and quotations the ones that that don't have anything on their dials other than the time to use a pointing hand for the date. That just tips it, makes a nice difference. Great centering. You can always appreciate applied numerals. I can imagine the loom is pretty nice. 1883, Alpina is another one of these names. It's fallen into the background, worth a lot more attention and love. And this Hadley Roma strap looks the business. It looks so good. Yeah, this hobby, this hobby, just the rabbit holes we stumble down. It's always the case. And he sent in a few more. He sent in an NTH Nacken which, I mean, having a reverse negative loom dial. NTH, similar to Baltic, similar to Ferrer, another brand you should be looking into. Um, their designs are great. Yes, they are a bit homage we could say, but they are like segueing out of that now too. And good stuff. Great value for money once again. German Navy, Kriegsmarine. That's it, Eric. Uh, Eric would know. He loves he loves his diving. And, and Daniel's saying that those best, uh, the best Roman numerals I've ever seen on a Rolex, very legible. Yeah, I mean, date justs and, and Romans, I think, need to go hand in hand. There's something we actually featured at the very beginning of the show. Another awesome micro brand. Isn't it good how we're segueing into this stuff? It's great, right? Uh, thanks, Megan. Um, so clean. That opinion is different. Yeah, so I was reading what Dear Artifact was saying. I'm with you. Um, where is the Ranger indeed? A proper mill sub tutor is leaving money on the table. You know, there was a, Kovacs Kovacs if you're watching the show you sent me an email that I have saved that secretly behind the scenes Rolex has actually taken out a trademark for the word Millsub you heard it here first we're thinking that by 2022 that either Rolex or Tudor is going to do something with that and I it sounds like Tudor is in that ballpark this is actually perfectly timed right talking about Marine National and, and Tudor Submariners and all this they could very easily, they've, they've, I think they've taken out that trademark of mill sub to assign to a possible Tudor mill sub happening soon. So it could be the case. Patrick, never say never. I'm still in this bet, Megan. I'm still in this bet that they could easily still be making a mill sub behind the scenes. Make the bet, dear artifact. He always loses. Oh, you're, you're the worst. You are the worst. Talk about a kick. Talk about a kick in the nads. Thank you. But yes, I'm still going. I'm still keeping the faith. You've got to keep the faith. I mean, what else? What else can you do? Luke, I love this. Fully loomed. And then he sent in an Orient Karamasu. Oh, this burgundy dial. 
So nice. So, so nice. Orient, another excellent brand. If you're starting out in this hobby, you want to experience an automatic watch. They make pretty good value dress watches with automatic movements. It's very difficult to find in a lot of categories. Worth looking at. Wait, no MN Tudor coming. Yeah, so Nicholas, the, the, the talk around the town was that September 1st was going to be the release day. I made a video about the whole the whole thing, designs, and you know how I do it. Uh, it didn't happen. We got a 32 millimeter instead, 32 millimeter Black Bay. Never say never. Could happen by the end of the year or into next year. It's just too good of an opportunity for them to miss. I mean, just think of it. Think about it. Marine National and Tudor, they've got a whole web page dedicated to it on their on their platform. So it's going to happen. It's going to happen. September came and went. Yep, it did. But we still have um, October. We still have November. You know? <laughs> still have December. You know, that's funny. Yeah, this is a cool piece. I really dig it. Orient is another great brand. The burgundy bezel dial, I mean. This, I think, is going to be the next step after we see the, the hype for green run its course. I believe burgundy is going to be the next one in because how can you not love burgundy on a watch? It looks, it's striking. Similar to green, it's an accent color, and I think it works nicely there. Yeah, so Jamie mentioning my thoughts on the Patek 5231. Don't see too many of these about. You did, you did send it to me, Jamie. I will share it next show, I promise. In fact, we could probably do another show on, on watch suggestions in general. Um I'd love to. I could just on my laptop quickly pull up the reference and talk about it. Uh, let's see. What's the reference? 5231. Me and Patek references, I am the worst. Oh, oh, oh. We featured this watch a lot. I mean, I talk about a flippant remark. We featured this watch a lot on the channel. <laughs> so our man Russell in the chat has one of these too. It's amazing. With, with the Grand Faux Enamel dial, it's the world time. Uh, and it's in J, which is the... I always thought Jay was, was it's yellow gold, right? Unfortunately, we don't have it. We normally feature it pretty often on the show, funny enough. Uh, great, great shot there. It's gorgeous. It is absolutely stunning. Our man, Russell, if he's still with us, he waited eight years for his to be made. And it's in rose gold, if I remember right. Uh, I can't remember. I'm going to get to his his patics at the end, Nautiluses and stuff. Okay, so the NTH, uh, this, this reverse dial. I mean, brands could profit so much off these today i don't know why more makers aren't doing it i know zin zin is one of the brands that are playing around with this in fact coming up very soon we're gonna have a look at one um yeah oh no welcome to the show i'm missing you yeah jamie i'd like to talk about it more definitely um i think we'll feature it the next show because we have seen it a couple of times it's stunning it's world class i mean when it takes eight years for a watch to be made and grand phone enamel you can never poo poo it's it's touch above absolute class uh date window integrates well yes sure does black date window i mean look at that these guys are on their game they know what they are doing they really know what they're doing okay carrying on through this is another shot from luke we've got to keep on motoring the show's coming up to three hours um i don't want to keep you too long now this is a great execution of snoopy on a piece timex marlin flying ace i really like this timex as a brand just like um, so many others we've been referring to today, another brand that we should be looking into more. I should be doing a Timex review, right? Uh, yeah. And Megan's chatting about 70s watches, buying a lot. Hmm. I think there's a big debate going on about vintage Omegas and vintage Rolexes still. It's, it's one of those debates as old as time. Same with modern Rolex and modern Omega and how we view them differently. How good is this watch? I've never actually taken the time to check it out. If I had one element to add to this piece would be, um, oh, what's his name? Wood, Wood, uh, Wood, I can't, what's his name? That's a little yellow bird. I should know this. Woodrow, no? To have him on the end of the second hand flying around the dial. Is that his name? Someone help me. Terrible. I should be knowing this. Again, this is what happens when you've been talking for three hours. Your brain gets a little bit. Woodstock. God. And to think I love Woodstock. <laughs> I love Woodstock as a festival. Okay, thanks, guys. It's Woodstock. Have Woodstock, a little yellow accent flying around the dial. Maybe that would kitch it up a bit too much. Like, What's nice about this is the monotone, the monochromatic. Thanks, everyone. Woody the Woodpecker. Yeah, yeah. Okay, more whiskey in. Why not? Again, I should mention, this is something I said at the beginning of the show. Let me just scroll up to the top. That the um, this Talisker that I've been drinking, it's almost finished, I always thought, hey, it's 40%, whatever. Negligent. 
I looked at it for the first time today. It's almost 46%. It's the strongest alcohol percentage I've ever experienced. And I've been drinking this live on air for like, you know, a couple of months. So <laughs> it's crazy, right? I would ne I've never seen a 46% whiskey before. Am I just that um, slow to this hobby? I don't know. Carrying on, let's get back to Woodstock, Woodrow, whoever you want to call. Um, have you seen the Timex S1? I haven't, Corona Craze. I am still very behind on Timexes. And Bamford, yeah, they've done lots. The Snoopy, of course, Speedmaster, Omega, everyone's going mad for. Woodstock, I have to run. Thank you. Insta Blaine, pleasure having you. Now that I know it's Blaine T, I think that's what I'll call you from now on, Blaine. Great having you. I'm so glad we, we finally cleared that up. Uh, such a cool watch, though. Such a cool watch. And, and Pepe is saying that Fireball, you would think that your mouth would be on fire after drinking it, but it's smooth as. I mean, um, Talisker, highly recommend Talisker. Really good stuff. Right, let's get back to Matthews. Matthews sent in dream of a watch. That was the cover photo. And there's another shot of the piece on display. Gen 2, dual time overseas. And I've chatted to a few friends about how I'm loving the, the asymmetric Genta, in quotations, pieces, like the, the 5712s, the power reserves, and same with AP. I love when they throw that stuff around the dial. It just breaks it up, makes it look a little bit more engaging. That is generally quite a, a serious dial. This, this makes it a bit more playful. Drinking a 40% Lapareg, it's great, right? It's so great. Uh, Japanese, I need to try. Yeah, my, my whiskey cabinet is running very low. Uh, I've got a Tumnavulan. Glam Orangey and a Talisker, and that's it. I've got to, I've got to get Lagavulin next. That's the next step. Yeah, just got to watch the pennies. Like 40 pounds plus goes quick. <laughs> Taking another hit. I'll be with you in a moment. That's the sad thing about good whiskey. It's so damn expensive. Oh, of course, Fireball is a make. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Daniel, for that. I tried Absinthe, which is 45%, and the thing is nasty. Absinthe is pretty good. Yeah, I've had I've had a couple of run-ins with absinthe in my life. It's one of those, it's one of those times when you 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 lack sense and you just try it. I love it. I mean, I'm a big fan of aniseed and licorice and stuff, so it's good. Yeah, Scottish coffee, whiskey and coffee. Okay, we got to carry on. What a beautiful shot this is too. You can appreciate the gray dial, all the textures. Again, I should mention, Matthew sent in one of the highest resolution shots of the show. It was like 40 megabytes in size per image. Big power reserve. Yeah, I'm a big fan of, of um, absinthe. Depending, it's all down to how you mix it, of course. If you go a little bit, when you get the green fairy, you know you've gone too far. Nice. Uh, a little bit too Vatican for some of us out there. It's amazing that the Maltese cross and the Calatrava cross can be used on watches today. You know, it's a 1,000 it's a year old history, but still, I mean, it's, it's associated with crusaders and the Saracens and all of that stuff. It's a little bit it's a little bit of a contentious subject. So crazy. Still, beautiful piece. Really love it. On and especially on the strap. I mean, this is the way. I think these these models also came supplied with these straps. Maybe I'm wrong. But similar to the overseas Gen 3, uh, you're getting so much bang for your buck. And the design, stellar. Okay, I'm gonna move to the next watch, which is a completely different category. Uh Matthews, thank you. Jumping to a Casio. W720, Grail Watch, Nostalgia. That was the way he summed it up. It's one of those pieces that you just get into. It's a rocket. I don't know how much these are, like 20 bucks. And that's what a Casio needs to be. I've been feeling the same way about Seiko. I can't wait to do the review of this, this watch. It's a Seiko 5 that I picked up because it's just rekindled my love for what it represents as a watch, as a brand, always being that watch for someone out there. Um, it's accessible for anyone. And ever since this watch's inception until now, they've never done a thousand percent price hikes, you know, all these, these stupid things. They've kept it relative to the brand's identity. And I think price is important when you're, when you are an owner of something. Yeah. Monkey shoulder isn't banned either. Oh, that's a nice one too. Monkey shoulder. That's a blend. I think I need to get into more blends. Taking a hit of the McAllen 15. Oh, you see, this is the thing. I need to pop my 14 and 15 and 16 cherry soon. I've gone as far as 12. I've got to go up the years and add another 20, 30 pounds to the price of the, <laughs> the bottle. It sucks. I mean, you really do pay for those years, right? Uh, wearing the Black Bay Blue right now. Single pass NATO, fun one. Yeah, they are. They sure are. AA, 
AAZ, welcome. So this is such a cool piece. Also love the fact that it's been worn to hell and back, scratches everywhere. It's it's a beast. It's the every man's watch and or, or ladies, every person's watch, I should say. And it just just suits it, just hits it. It's what you need. It's what you do. I don't know if Eric is still with us, but I think he would also agree. He, he loves these. Okay. Mikey also sent in another shot. Oh, this is cool. Rodano. So he has a couple of, I believe these are like late 40s era pieces. How nice were these designs back then? So I'd imagine this is a radium handset. Look at the typeface. This reminds me of what classic Omega. Oh my. Do we have any New Yorkers in the chat? Check that in. That is the typeface right there for New York Yankees. How cool is that? Didn't even notice that until now. There's your Yankees script right there. Love it. Love it. So it's just, there's there's so much to enjoy about these classic designs. Pencil hands. Ah, I love the Willard. Oh, is that what Justin? Justin EDC, I didn't say hi to you. That's what you're rocking. I'm a big fan. I'm a big, big fan. The Willard is a great piece. The original 6105. The latest prospects models, I think they're doing a good job. Open nines, open sixes. This looks like it was hand painted on because it's like fluffy. There's some there's some reflection to the to the numerals on the dial. Waterproof, anti-magnetic, shock protected. I love it. It's that it's that anachronistic feel you have to some of these models. I mean, this was the jam back in the day. Hey, my watch is anti-magnetic. Let's share it on the on the dial. Today it's just whatever, you know, silicone balance bring next. Uh, here we go. So low key collector saying based on the JLC caliber eight, eight, nine. Love it. Thanks for that bit of, bit of reference there. Um, stunning. Really cool. And there's another one here in a second uh, chatting about the Willard. Olive green is your favorite. So we have a Rodana and then next we have a UMF ruler. Another example. I mean, this watch is probably like 31 mils. I think he mentioned in the email, 31 millimeters flat, very big winding crown. I mean, this was the way. Made in Germany, classic. These numerals, again, I find it amazing how these numerals lasted so long. This is the exact same typeface we've seen on the Zin that we've seen on the Big Eye this evening, or wherever you are in the world, whatever time it is you're watching the show. Hitting the whiskey again. I would swear I have an instant, infinite supply of whiskey on tap. 45.8% alcohol. Freaking crazy. So yeah, again, I can't believe how these watches have lasted and still look pretty relevant today. The only real change is, is the size, size difference. And I'm going to shift across to the next one, which was a Vostok Amphibia that he modified, I believe. And a lot of us are really enjoying the Vostok Amphibia for what it is. I mean, how can you not love a dive watch with that little bit of Russian heritage? We've got, this reminds me of the Baltic, actually. The Bathyscaphe, quarter batons, pencil hands, nicely spaced, nicely arranged. Of course, unless you can speak or read Russian fluently, you would struggle with reading the dial. But man, you've got a skin diver style case, the very typical straight arrangement that connects the lugs up there. The bezel, I think he modified. He's taken it off and put a new one on. Mm. I like the black and white too. Big crown. Easy to grip, easy to use. Comment in the chat. Let's see. So uh, EDC says, well, Justin, EDC, I want to add a big eye to my collection. I don't own a chrono, so I'm thinking I might go for that one soon. I've said this, I think I've said this a couple of times during the show. Um, I've never been a chronograph person, but the big eye has definitely changed my opinion. It's all personal taste and preference. We are going to see another one in a moment, I believe. We're not done yet. God, almost three hours. Yeah, I think we're doing pretty good for time. The show will be mm, maybe three hours 40 at this rate. Are we going to have any predictions in the chat? I don't know. Love the modded bezel. Looks good, right? Does look good. I need to, I need to check out one of these and review it. Is this actually a tritium dial? I think Vostok stayed with Tritium for quite a while after it was like banned and, you know, outdated. So it'd be good to talk about it. Mike, I love these really cool pieces. The fact that you're rocking classic Casio as well as a stunning Rodana with the New York Yankees script. I wonder what that, do we have any graphic designers that could tell me what the script is in the chat? So good. So, so good. Next up, Pound the Drums. I saw you earlier. This watch has made me question a couple of things. I was just this week, I saw this watch and said, I, had, I did not know they made one of these. I know that the PRX has been around, but that was a quartz model. They've just introduced the Powermatic 80, 80 hour power reserve. 
it's based on a watch that they produced around the 70s, which was, it's, it's a funny story. It's technically an homage to uh, the Gentle Models, but it was made like 10 years after the Gentle Models came around. So it was an homage back then. And even now, it's an homage of an homage of an homage. Does that make sense? I don't know. But uh, the one telltale sign that makes it a little bit more on the nose is the fact that it has the, the tapisserie dial from, from a Royal Oak that we would see. But what a cool looking watch. I mean, sub a thousand dollars, it's what, 600 bucks. And you're getting a beautiful blue dial. The bracelet's also pretty good. I mean, I've been watching reviews and quite enjoying it. Um, the integrated bracelet's nice because it doesn't have any high polished edges. It doesn't break up. It's simple. Um, so it's not that in your face. And I love the fact that this is actually, if you look to Tissot from the 70s, Tissot, however you want to say it, from the 70s, they have an exact model that looks like this. So they've actually called back to that and recreated it in a way. Um, I guess the gripe I have with it is just, I find this text a little bit quirky. What does the PRX mean again? It's like, uh, I know the X means it's got to do with the water resistance reserve. Uh, there was there was something to it. The, the acronym means something. Initialism. I mean, it looks good though, right? And if you want to experience that integrated bracelets, I also think the rounded bezel is a nice touch. It's not your typical flat brushing that we see everywhere. It breaks it up a little bit more. Um, if you want to experience a watch in this kind of category, this this aesthetic, why not? I'm thinking of maybe doing a review. I think I should just pull the trigger on one to do a review on it. Because I have handled, I'm actually really interested because I have handled Royal Oaks and Nautiluses. I'm thinking, how well does this watch wear next to them? And is it a contender, you know? Because when you put a Royal Oak on the wrist, it's just nothing nothing comes close to it really in, when it comes to comfort. It's it's a mind blow. Yeah, some watch has this case, but has a crown at 12. Uh, Forbin, I would imagine we're talking about uh, Triton or ZRC maybe. Love them. Uh, maybe Megan can back me up there. ZRC and Triton, some awesome dive watches back then. There are a few other watches. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking ZRC is the reference you're talking about. Mm, I'm wondering about getting one of these. Yeah, the dial looks exceptional. It's really well done. Hands are nice length. I mean, I can't say anything bad about it. It's a problem that when I get an email coming in and I look at it and say, oh, I've got to look at this more. And then you go on that search. So pound the drums, you've been you've been bad. Italicized PRX is jarring for the year. That's, that's the one thing. It's the X is a little bit, the, the X is too tall and it doesn't feel as, I mean, Powermatic 80 looks fantastic. I don't know why they stylize it like that, but you know, to each their own, I guess. Uh, I, maybe some way of calling to the 70s, yeah, 80 hour power reserve, yes, for sure. I love it. That's such a cool piece. Okay, moving on. We could talk about this for a while. Next is the Prospects. Seiko Prospects. This is such a great watch too. Oh, it's good. So this is the special edition. And the reference number is, hold on. Come on, let's get it to load. Uh, the SRP F79. Just let that waft over you for a second. So I think it's based on the the Samurai. I'm gonna guess. No, it's a it's got a monster hand. So maybe it's but it's the Manta Ray. It's it's the Manta Ray Samurai Monster. I think that's what we can we can class it as. Great look. I mean that dial is amazing. Again, Seiko and their dials. They just keep on hitting home runs. What? No sound. Oh no. Oh no. Thomas, hold on. Let me just just hold on. Bear with me, everyone. Can you hear me? Type one in the chat. <laughs> oh, dear. Hold on a sec. Sound is good. Okay. Whew. Russell, you're a bit close to me, Russell, so maybe there's a problem. Maybe maybe it's only local. Okay, you can be fine. Good. Thanks. That scared me, Thomas. Whew. Okay. Right. Thanks. Hitting the coffee again. Oh, that freaks me out. <laughs> We've had some interesting times. <laughs> Thank you, everyone in the chat. We've had some interesting times in the past where the show is cut and everything's been going on in the background. I've once been able to be in the chat with everyone while the show was off and just chatting with you while everything was, was gone. So that's the way. Such a cool looking watch. I mean, look at that dial. What a standout. Seiko and the, I mean, we've it's, it's just clear. Over the show, we've been chatting about Grand Seiko. The, and, and what Seiko is now doing with the prospects, up marketing their watches, it's partly why I have a bit of a gripe with these pieces is that I think they, they're kind of overstepping their boundaries in a few places too when it comes to overpricing some of these pieces. I mean, a lot of these are going for, I'm thinking pounds sterling, 1,500, 2,000 pounds. It's hectic. It's pretty, it's pretty, and these are all using 6R05 movements, I would imagine. 
is this a four R? I, I don't know. But some of these are using Grand Seiko movements at the same time. So teach their own. It's nice that they have a, pri a watch for each category too. I think it's good. Uh, it's all good, Thomas. It's all good. Seiko price is going up. And that's across the board. I mean, even Seiko fives are like doubling in prices. It's, it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Dial looks nice. Stunning. As mentioned in the chat, that was, um, that was from 73 Math. Looks etched. Sure does. And just simple things like I think they've done the typeface pretty well. It's nicely arranged. Yeah, it's good. There, there's, a, there's a good congruency when we look at the language on the dial. Cyclops lens, you can either like or not. It's a little bit all over the place. JJ Lad, what did you miss? Hmm. We've done a lot of talking. Uh, varied discussions around all sorts, really. Um, yeah, maybe someone can do a quick catch up in the chat for JJ. <laughs> uh, a gift from my boss. That's, now that is great. That is great. Are the indices properly aligned? Hmm. I'd say no. Look at that. That's the first thing. Chaptering. Chaptering alignment looks a little bit off, but that's Seiko. Maybe it's not. Because then we look to the rest of the dial. That's that's centered. That's not centered. Uh, Seiko and their chapter rings. Look at this. Oh, what have I done? What have I found here? Look at the centering. Hmm. Sorry, I've just ruined your watch, pound the drums. It's what I do with a lot of pieces. <laughs> Yeah, this one, it's, it's a genuine Seiko. You can tell that because there's something misaligned. So yeah, can I carry on rolling? Pound the drums, another shot of the Tissot. Look at it in a different light. Oh, it looks so good. It's irritating me now. I was so close to putting the trigger on it today. And then I said, no, you're not putting videos out this month. You need to chill. You need to chill. Don't spend money on watches. Don't do it. So yeah, look at that thing. Worth looking at. Powermatic 80. They have a black dial. They have a white dial with a two-tone bezel, I think. Um, but this, to me, thumbs up. Stand out. Really nice. Okay. Pound the drums. Love them. Going to move on next. That Don chapter ring is plastic. <laughs> I mean, don't they all have plastic? Yeah. I mean, that's that's Seiko for you. Raymond, next. Right on. Oh, this is good. So I called this, wait for it, GSOFM. I saved this at uh, three in the morning, probably. So this is the gray side of the moon, Speedmaster, automatic coaxial. This was before we transitioned across to the 3861 caliber and all that stuff. Um, we have automatic with date. It's, it's a very interesting arrangement how they have both hands set at this separate dial. It's not one that's largely appreciated. Um, I can understand why. You know, it's, it's a little bit out there compared to most pieces we see today. And carrying up, carrying up in the chat, and I'm missing you here. No problem. Have another drink and buy it. Nefarion, you know what? You're convincing me. It's not good. I can't. Nefarion's had some good calls today. It's been very funny. I appreciate the attention to details all of you have for watches. Radioactive Cat. Pretty cool name, by the way. Yeah, I mean, that's the beauty of these photos. I'm sitting at a 5K monitor, so I get to zoom in a lot and, and focus in. And hopefully it, it comes up on that side for you all. Um, but it's it's not good. Scrutinizing a watch is not good because all of a sudden your your attention moves to something. As a designer in me, I, I hate it because then everything has to be good or else there's something that'll just nibble at me <laughs> for the PRX fund, Mark. Thank you, Mark. How can you still be awake? It's 1 a.m. You are going to get, you're going to be sleeping on the couch tonight, Mark. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Hitting the, uh, the Talisker again. Let's chat about this a little bit more. So yes, gray side of the moon. What makes this watch amazing is it's a full ceramic case, just like the dark side of the moon. And I mean, the movements on these are incredible. They're all, it's two, of course, it's 2 a.m. where you are at the moment, Megan, in Munich. Oh, God, it's bad. It's bad. And the rest, everyone who is in Europe at the moment, I feel for you. I really do feel for you if you're still watching the show. I hope you have a good sleep. <laughs> so... Um, I love the Aquamarine glow on the dial, the tachymeter bezel. Why don't more brands do this? It's one of the things that Omega has nailed with their ceramic cased speed, Speedmaster models. And then at an angle, at least I, be, I believe it's ceramic. I, I'm pretty sure it's a ceramic case. Maybe it's titanium. Someone can correct me. Uh, I don't know. I might be making a mistake here, but it is a bit of a divided watch just because it's a bi-compact, not a tri. It has um, a date complication. It's automatic. But Omega coaxials are a dream. I'll definitely speak from experience on that point. So cool. We're in sun 2 a.m. Yeah, I'm personally okay with the two hands on the subdial. It's good. Like, 
it must be difficult to learn to use. It must take a bit of time, but then you have hour and minutes all on one side. It might be a bit confusing from someone who comes from a, a, a two time zone background or a GMT background because it throws you off a little bit. Going to be a four hour show. I don't know, Megan. I mean, it's just hit three hours and we have all of what, 12, 15 watches still to go. I don't know, maybe two hours, three hours, 40, roughly around there. It's all ceramic. Neo, good to have you back. I like it. I like it a lot. The one Speedmaster that I love is that Apollo 7, Apollo 9, I'll never get it. It's the it's the all black ceramic with the, the yellow accents, the dark side of the moon with the stepped skeletonized dial. God, I can't stop looking at that watch. Um, I would happily get one of those. And I'm not a Speedmaster lover, but I would happily get one of those. Carrying on through to the next. So I love this. Raymond, love it. I don't know if you're still with us in the chat, if you have been with us today. Next to Rob and Susan. His and hers. Now, Susan just picked up a Oyster Perpetual, hasn't been sized yet. And now, as far as the his and hers collection go, we have a Explorer on the rubber. And we have an Oyster Perpetual with, I mean, we've got stick hands here, and it looks so good. I, I don't think these watches, these these styles get enough props. The the way the stick hands work with the batons on the dial, oh, obelisk hands, what would you call them? Uh, looks good. Looks so nice. The, the Mercedes hands is nice. I mean, it defines what, what professional Rolex is about today. But there's not enough love for, for baton hands, obelisk hands today as well. Look at the nicely carved date window. Let's have a look. Oh, I just love it. Recessed in there nicely. It's the same color, matching color to the dial. I also just like how they pay attention to the batons being blacked out as well. Easier to read. I mean, there's legibility for days on this dial. Mm, it's nice. Another piece that I, I adore is the Globemaster that, that Amiga does. They do some good stuff. Don't just look at the Speedmaster and the Seamaster. Look to the Aquaterra, technically a Seamaster. Look to the, the Globemaster with the tungsten carbide bezel. It's like one of the strongest metals on the planet. So nice. Carrying on in the chat. Let's see what's going on. There's lots of tags going on. I'm missing uh, for, from Forbin. Good to have you here, sir. Show of hands. Do any of you actually use your tacky bezel? I know I don't. Mm. No, no, don't think any of us do really. It's such a it's such an outdated thing. More more bezels should have uh, pulsations on them, I think, or just eliminate them altogether and put a bezel, just a, a polished bezel or a brushed bezel on instead. Yeah, tachymeters are a bit strange, unless you're like flying on the motorway and you want to. I mean, who would do that really? Calculate your distance, but actually, no, you can use it for other reasons. Uh, let's go back to this watch just for the sake of talk. Oh, look at that loom. You can use it to calculate something that you are doing repetitively. So if you are like packing a car or, or you know unloading boxes from a truck and you time how long it takes for you to go from A to B and you stop it, say it takes you 300 and takes takes you up to 350, it means that you'll be able to unload 350 boxes in an hour. Huh. The more you know, that's uh, that's something I learned over time. I don't know where or how. So you can use it if you're doing a mundane task, like I don't know if you're in detention and you're writing lines and you and you get through it, and it takes you know you do two hundred, you get to two hundred and forty an hour or whatever else. Uh, that's what the tachymeter can also be used for. It's kind of useful, not really, but kind of. Uh, yeah, his and hers. I love it. Arabics, you know me and my numerals. I love numerals on dials. It's just too much to love. And carrying on in the chat, let's see, I've lost lost touch. Oh my gosh, I'm missing a lot here. Hans has joined in. Welcome, Hans. Good to have you here, sir. Uh, it's good to have you, as always. Three hours in, low-key, don't worry. I think we'll be done by, by 3.40. No, sorry. Yeah, three hours, 40 minutes. I really like uh, this this color, ceramic. Omega and Blancpain use it. Yeah, looks like titanium in cover. Love the look. It does look nice. I'm surprised more watches don't go ceramic. It looks like Tudor is in that direction of trying to make a more attainable ceramic watch. And I hope other brands follow suit because ceramic is such a cool material. Um, I'll remember that for my next detention. Russell, you know what? You know what? All of you staying up beyond midnight, I think you will all be in detention with your with your other significant other. School kids don't want speedies. They want speed. <laughs> they want speed. Oh, don't I know it. Kids these days. Kids these days. Um, so Daniel says, as a kid, I used my Seiko Attacky all the time from the back seat of road trips, timed mile markers to find out how much my dad was really speeding. You know, Daniel, you must have had like an IQ of 130 at that age because that's something that I would not expect a kid to do. 
Um, okay, going to move on through to to. So this is Rob, and so this is Rob D next, and I like this a lot. So we were chatting about modern speed uh, C masters and everything here. Another big eye that was picked up thanks to the review of it. I'm glad. I hope you're enjoying it, Rob. And I love this pairing. I think we actually were chatting about it in the comments of the video that he he thought it would make for an excellent piece to pair with his professional diver. I love these diving professionals. Um, why are we only at the D? <laughs> you know, don't worry. I made a, a wood joke earlier, and and I think I think went over a few people's heads, but um, there was no wood around me to touch to knock on. So, yeah. Um, we're chatting we're on Rob R at the moment. We're getting close. I mean, this is the last, I don't know, 15 people. I think this is such an interesting pairing because you've got something that's more dive, something that's more pilot. Yeah? And uh, I th I'm one of my favorites in this category of the diver in, in the Seamaster range is this. Why, why not just go hardcore? The professional diver chrono. It gets so much hatred. I don't know why. I did a video on on diver chronos, and just what, like so many people just don't like them because they they're garish and they're overdone. I just figured the alcohol was kicking in. <laughs> no, nah, I can hold my liquor okay normally. It's kind of sort of taking hit from the Machu Picchu again. Ah, gotta love the coffee. So these watches were addressed nicely. Like I really like the sizes. I don't think they've made a white dial, the, the panda dial variant yet of this, but the black on black looks good. The two tone looks awesome, and I just think it's all. Why well, not just go nuts? You've got a helium escape valve. You've got two ceramic pushes. You've got the full coaxial movement, the exact same movement that was in that Speedmaster. We were just checking out. I like that. I like that a lot. And then the the big eye. Oh, just look how clean that dial is. There are very few watches out there in the world that you can look at at any time, whether it's three o'clock or five thirty-five, and it's just golden. Everything just reads so nicely. It's so well presented. I gush about this watch way too much, but it is it is that good. The only downside is the thickness might irritate some people at fourteen mils, but oh, the the strengths outweigh the weaknesses. The proportions are spot on. Look at that crystal. It's got a boxed sapphire crystal with an anti-reflective coating. You can't even see it on the watch. It's, oh. Anyway, it's enough of me. <laughs> I'm making you all want, I mean, that is almost like a requirement to be a part of the secret club. You have to buy yourself a big eye, or else you can't be, you can't join. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying it, Rob. I love, I do love seeing this pairing. Something more dive oriented, something more of a pilot field watch. And yeah, exceptional, exceptionally cool. Okay, that's Rob D. <laughs> Got, got so many Robs. Got Rob. So so I don't know if the Rob and Susan is a different Rob. Now we've got Rob D. We're going to Rob S next. A Mick in Florida. Hi. I don't know if you, you're not you're not one of these Robs, are you? Welcome, Mick in Florida. Great to have you here. Hope you're enjoying your time in Florida. The weather must be exceptional. And I'm going to Rob S next. Okay. Right. So this this Rob is enjoying. The, the Sapphire Sandwich Speedmaster that we all know and love, the new 3861, and he's going to visit, it's called Gay's Head as the lighthouse. And he says he's not kidding, that's the name, Gay's Head. And if I get into the, uh, in Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts, see, as someone who's never explored the US enough, I can't actually fathom how big the country is for you guys, but it must be huge. I mean, I just, it's, it's, it's a world within itself. I mean, that's the expression we often use, huh? Outsiders. Packaging satellites flipping. I don't know if we're talking about, about me and my... I don't know what's happening. Uh, it's finally getting cooler. So, so Rob, you're Rob S. Okay, good. And Rob, you're normally at the end of these shows, so it's nice to have you here. Uh, and Patrick's saying, always welcome to the USA. I would love to travel in and say hi and just you know visit all the spots. Wouldn't it be cool to have a meetup at like every state? state tour it'll take i'll take a year off and just travel every state you know backpacking and whatever I just just enjoy the hell out of the place beautiful i mean i can't get over it looking at places like virginia and and that setting montana big open space huge just flat and then you look to the forests and to the tropical areas it's just yeah, it's, it's incredible uh okay carrying on come to san fran i'd love to the pigs and blankets i'd love to come to san fran it's gigantic. I have been to every state. Pepe, these nuts, says. Whoa, awesome. So 
We love this piece. The, the Sapphire Speedmaster is a gem. I love the fact that they've applied the logo on the dial. I wish Omega did more of that. I wish more brands did that. Why is it that Rolex professional models can't apply a crown onto their dials? It makes for such such a different experience. I'm all for the painted on elements. It looks cool. But having an applied coronet on top, in fact, I'm doing a redesign video soon. And I, that's one of the elements I've added is to just put an applied crown on there and change the, the dynamic. Yes, it makes it look a bit more formal, but I think it also jazzes up the piece a little bit more. So a uh, great piece there. And then we have the sapphire, which is a love it or hate it thing. Clear case back that you can enjoy. The bracelets is a big improvement, many are saying. And so we go. Uh, Speedmaster, been there. Love it. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Come to the KY Horse Country, Bourbon. Talking about Kentucky now. Oof. I actually did some great work with a guy from um, from Tennessee. Uh, that's in Kentucky, right? Again, just remember, I've been doing this for three hours now, so I'm probably... Tennis, ten, Kentucky's in Tennessee, right? Yes? No? God, you, you guys in your states, I can't. Can't do it. It's the same as Africa, really. You know, there's so many countries in Africa. USA is big. I just drove from NY to Colorado. One way, it's 1,860 miles. Oh, a road trip must be fun, though. Must be so fun. Uh, a bit repetitive, maybe, at times, but you're going through those landscapes. Was I close? Come on. Use your brain. Tennessee. Uh, uh, I'm not even going to try. I'm not even going to try. Rob S., thank you. <laughs> So I, I, just remember I've run out of oxygen in this room and I'm just, I'm riding on the seat of my pants. Rob W next with a black bay pair. Uh -huh. More black bays. This has become the black bay. Kentucky and Tennessee are different states. Damn it. I knew I was, there was something wrong. Uh, Kentucky windage. Hmm. But Tennessee is known for their whiskeys. They're known for their leather. I got some amazing leather pro uh, products from, from Tennessee. Uh, it's bad. It's so, so bad. Sorry about that, Pepe. Pepe, these nuts catching up and hitting the coffee again, refueling the brain. Uh, talking about import tax. Oh, Mark, don't we get hit with import tax? It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? How much do I, I charge for a drink shot? <laughs> I would never do... See, the problem is, Neo, I wouldn't do that on air because I would have a coughing fit, probably, because it's whiskey. It's not like something a little bit easier to drink. Um, but, I mean, you know, if we did shot challenges... I don't know how long we would last. I mean, that would just ruin the, the show. It would turn into a complete and utter balls up. Carrying on through, black or blue, which do we prefer? Different strokes. I think it's a black bay stream, right, Thomas? Uh, different strokes. I, I think the gilt element to this watch does make it that little bit more interesting. The blue dial, blue bezel is an excellent daily. I think it works, especially when you want to add some blue into your <laughs> synchronicity. Yeah. When you want to add blue into your collection, I love the cleanliness. Of course, the Marine National is going to be blue, I would hope, because we know it's going to happen. Uh, and Megan says, I can't handle my drink. Yeah, in real life, I can. In a proper situation when we're actually out and enjoying ourselves, not trying to hold the ship when there's a couple thousand people who've been watching, dipping in and out of a live stream. Uh, when I have to be coherent, I have to be careful. That's why the coffee's there. The coffee keeps the brain going. So they're both cool for different reasons. Uh, the black, the black and gilt is a little bit more. Uh, di what's the word? Diverse? No. Um, v come on. What's the word? It's like tiger with many stripes. You can dress it up. You can dress down. Versatile is the word. We're getting there. Uh, it's a bit more versatile next to the blue, which can be something a bit more formal, which you could be rocking. Don't forget, it's Negroni week. Mm. Me and Negronis, we have a bad relationship. Okay, carrying on, Rob. Love it. So Megan will also go black. That's a good question. Should I put a poll in the chat just for votes' sake? Why not? If I crash the show, apologies. It'll catch up. Um, black Bay, and I'm going to say black, blue, question mark. Hold on a sec. I don't know if this will work for everyone out there, but let's see. If I have crashed the stream, it will catch up eventually. Uh, if the show does does end, it's probably my, my fault putting the poll in the chat. Edit your votes if you're interested, if the vote even comes up on that side for you guys. I don't know. Uh, it would be black for me as well, given the choice between the two. Yeah, so Negronis, the, the problem is when I'm generally drinking them, it ends up being like a, it's normally with a group of friends and, you know, eight, nine, ten later, it gets a bit rough. <laughs> John saying, see you in Seattle. I'd love to. That's Seattle, Washington, or is that, Se that they're two Seattles, no? Uh-uh, no? 
there's a Washington DC and then there's a Seattle. So I'm guessing C Seattle being, being the far. Oh, I can't think of U S states now doing this stuff. One different state. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Carrying on. I don't even know if the poll is working at the moment, but we're just keeping on. It's keeping on. 73 math. Cheers to you too. Thank you for the super chat. I'm going to take, I'm on the dregs of the Talisker. Good stuff. I am totally getting into Talisker again. Excellent whiskey. I must say, I love the PT smoky stuff. That's what he said. That's what she said. Karen, on you prefer you prefer silver dials, Thomason. I'll teach their own. Okay, so I'm going to leave the the poll going for a little bit longer. Nice time alignment. Oh, good shot there, Russell. Look at that. We're right on the money. Right on the money. We're a little bit off though. Uh oh, this one has moved a microsecond off. I mean, how's that? That's pretty good for synchronicity. Yep, the brain juice is off flowing. Rob, thank you for this. Now we're jumping to Tarek. Tarek just picked up this wash, I believe. And let's get the hero shot up first. Black on black Sky Dweller on the Jubilee. I think they absolutely nailed this as they've been struggling a bit with the, with the Sky Dweller, I think. They border each other <laughs> slightly off. Okay, I'm going to end the poll here. I don't know how to do that. Let's see. End poll. So the black won by 68%, but I just want to see what the, the 40 votes, 67 to 32. That's a very interesting, I mean, that's, that's two thirds. Huh? Like it. So they nailed this watch. Um, they've been struggling a bit with their sky dweller. One year they had the white uh, accent in the center for the second, uh, the GMT. Then the next year they had it on a rubber B strap and then they added it on a Jubilee bracelet. And I think the Jubilee is the most recent. This looks great. This really speaks to it. Because I mean, you've got the fluted bezel. It looks like a day date in a way. Might as well just go full hog. This is what the, what the Sky Dweller should be represented as. A really dressy pilot watch. Travel, a travel time in a way, you know? Because that's what it was intended to be. I demand a recount, Mark says. Of course, of course, Mark, you have a blue. It's not good, hey? That's not good. So 40 votes. And oh, so what is that? What's, um, what's two thirds of 40? Oh, God. Uh, it's 30, it's 30, right? It's 30 of, of 40. No, no, that's, that's, that's three quarters. I don't know. I don't even know anymore. I'm not even going to try 25, 15, or was that 30 to 10? Anyway, Jubilee looks good. It looks so good on this model. And I think he also, check how he captured this. He made us focus on how it's a half link Jubilee. That's how the new variants go. So the half link sits in there. It's a little bit more streamlined it actually doesn't overextend the end of the lug which is nice 26 is two-thirds is that is that right russell 0. 0.765 oh my god carry the two right just carry the two and divide by four uh i like this watch a lot in fact if i got to choose a sky dweller i would probably go for one of these this to me black dial looks great because it accents the uh, the red elements on the dial oh it's good 42 mil great size we featured one of these earlier on um i love it I think they've nailed it with this Jubilee integration. I think they've nailed this model here. Okay, carrying on through. Tennessee. Okay, so see Mike saying Tennessee is the state just south of Kentucky. Oh, okay. So there was mention, <laughs> there was mention that it, they were right next to each other. Kentucky is known for bourbon, which is a whiskey made of at least 51% corn. Yes, uh, that's, that's rye, right? And then Jack Daniels whiskey, which is not bourbon, comes from, from Lynchburg. I'm saying that? Lynchburg, Tennessee. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying like studying rye and, and bourbon and how that all works. You guys love your bourbon. It's nice. I think it's, for me at least, it's, it's occasional. I much prefer a single malt, but maybe that's just the snob in me or the Scot in me that prefers the single malt. I don't know. I do not know. Washington State. Yeah, it's great to have so many Americans here. I hope you guys are doing well. hope you're enjoying the show. It must be like early evening that side of the world. Uh, and we have horses. I love horses. Um, I've been very fortunate to ride horses in vast places in my life. And talking about not having children, Neo, God, they really hammer your nads. Carrying on through next, and this was just another shot from Tarek. I think the Jubilee has been implemented so well here. To Thomas, Thomas Burnett, who is in the chat. Man, got to love it. Milgas, Z Blue. I'll put that video in the corner of the screen if anyone would like to catch up. If you are watching the show at a later stage. Zeeblue Milgauss is one of those quirky examples. What flower is this, Thomas? I'd love to know. Uh, it's, it's exceptional. A blue dial, green, orange accents. My, my argument with this watch is that Rolex will never go 
so fun with a watch again. They will never make such an outlandish piece of design, I don't believe, ever. This was right at that time when Tudor was starting to make a name, and the Milgauss was still the quirkiest, next to the Air King in their lineup, still the quirkiest watches they did. They won't go this far. The professional watch has moved in, in such a generic direction now where it has to be just on the nose perfect every single time. It has to be blue, has to be red, has to have a black dial, white dial. The pigs like the blue, <laughs> like it. the Z. Yeah, that's a nice name. Uh, yeah, there's lots of love for it. Um, of course, it's not for everyone. You know, it's using a Milgauss case, which is a bit fatter. It's a 41 mil diameter next to the 39, so it's a bit wider. But then it does have the quirk factor to it. And Thomas nailed it. Great shots. I love the fact that it's in a garden setting. I think I need to take some more shots in the garden too, just to get that pop of color. Something you can do with flowers in the background, you know? It adds it. Have I missed anything else in the chat? I must have. Uh, Irish whiskey, the best. I would love to try some, some Irish for sure. Most definitely. And of course, you spell whiskey with the E, which is also pretty cool. Uh, change the size, the dial, embrace it. Uh, are we talking about the Sky Dweller, I think? It's a little thick. It is. It is a little thick. But it does have the Faraday cage. So yeah, it adds a little bit more. Adds a little bit more dynamism to it. Another thing we could critique is it's overly polished. It's, it's a very polished watch, but then it has more of a dressy nature. I think that's always been a part of the Milgauss's repertoire. They wanted it to be a bit more formal for the scientists and for the, the posh engineers working on hadron colliders and all that stuff, because that's just what you do, you know? That's what we do on a daily basis. Red breast, I would need to definitely try, Megan. Good shot there. Um, it been interesting to learn the design history of this. Oh, it'd be interesting to know. Oh, Forbin, I, I did a video about it. It's... Um, like two or three weeks ago, actually. What did I say? Like the overrated design of the, the under underrated design of this. It's somewhere. I'll, I will link it later on, but awesome development to this watch and how it evolved. There's like five different generations and it's never been in the limelight. It's always been on the back foot. It's never had much popularity attached to it, which has made it quite the sleeper. And we're getting into it now just because it's so fun. It's always been a dynamic, fun piece. Um, yeah, it was a long video. It was like 18 minutes, I think. And I went into the full history of the development of how the Milgauss started with the 1016, what's what's 1019, and the 6543. I think that's the one. And and the 6541. Really cool. I mean, those early vintage Mil, Milgausses, Milgai, whatever you want to say. They were amazing pieces. Okay, Owl is still at work. Owl, it's been three and a half hours. This is terrible uh it's good that you're still here if you're listening in the background good evening from antarctica lordy if this is true and you're actually from antarctica huge props to you right now hold on a second it would technically be evening since we we're on the same longitude that's amazing if you're based in antarctica are you like a surveyor i've got a couple of friends who'd go out there actually on on big ships on the south of africa the southern end Thank you, Thomas, for the, for the chart. Also, Megan, for mentioning it. Yeah, the Milgauss video was fun. I, I love the design of these pieces. Carrying on through. Thomas, thank you for this. Love it. From Antarctica. Did I say it? Was that Atlanta? No, it's, it, is Antarctica. It, was, it wasn't Atlanta. It was Antarctica. To the next. This is from Thomason. I don't know if he's still with us. Thomason in the chat. Out of interest, what's the temperature in, in, Antarctica, in Antarctica right now? Please let us know. I would love... <laughs> I'd love to know it. Uh, so Thomason sent in a great selection. He, he actually featured his watch as the cover photo a couple of weeks back. And it was a Milgas. It was, in fact, a Milgas. Check how cool this piece is. Victorinox. These Swiss Army pieces are so cool. Also, the, the rubber strap, burgundy dial. This is going to happen. I mean, if you want a watch to represent Victorinox, this dial just does it. That's the way. Wouldn't it be cool if the watch also had like a can opener and one of, I mean, one of the lugs could easily be a can opener or a, or a bottle opener. And then you have a switchblade at the back there or something you could use to chop down a tree. That's what you would expect from a Victorinox watch, right? Thomas is still with us. Great. I've taken a good handful. I think I have about four or five pictures you sent in. Thanks. Uh, Ingle boy. Ingle B boy. <laughs> this time I ponied up. <laughs> it's a pleasure having you here, Ingle B boy. You always send such cool shots in as well. Yeah, I just I just thank you all so much for, for being here. I mean, for just hanging out, listening in. I don't know what we've discussed. We've gone into the intricacies of watch collecting as well as like chatting about sports watches, and it's a mess. Um, but but Engel B Boy, thank you again. That's that's so generous of you. You and so many others out there. 
you have donated to the channel definitely keeps me going um yeah for sure b dev the enox is a beast it looks great i love the fact that it is not in your face that logo is not pretentious it actually looks amazing i mean this is what we see on swiss army knives and it probably has the same quality i don't even know if it's automatic if it's a quartz watch or not this looks like a quartz judging by the way the hand is like perfectly aligned there mm. Nice piece. I think he sent in a few more. He has a silver dial as well. I mean, he loves these pieces, clearly. Look at how the bezel has been done. This reminds me of uh, Gerard Perigo and other models that have those flat brushed ends with the polish. Actually, the, the Octo Finissimo. How's that? This probably came before the Octo. And this one also has a full, we should call it a Gillesche dial. I like this. I really do like this. Also on a, a, green, a green rubber strap. Mm. Good to be of support. Yes, it's quartz. How did I guess that? That's fantastic. So clearly, clearly the, the alcohol does help the brain a little bit from time to time. Also, just appreciate that you got the time sync nicely, Thomason. I know it's difficult to do. It's a, it's a bit of a pain. Um, I always try to do it as well, putting the crown out or if you just caught it at the right time of day. It's just something you have to do. Like you throw everything aside and say, no, I've got to take a wrist shot at 10 past 10 or 10 to 2. Great. Uh, Sorry, they're missing you. So, so Mason says, Victorinox has loads of complications. Rumor has it even tells the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Victorinox, that was the watch I grew up with, you know, the watch, the knife I grew up with. Got so many um, freebies. My, my old man got lots of them for free, I think, through promotional work and stuff. Um, and I've stabbed my hands countless times with them too. It's, it's the greatest thing when you have, a, when you give a pocket knife to a youngster and say, have fun. The amount of stab marks you have from it. It's, it's a good story, right? You learn what not to do with a knife. Taking a hit from the whiskey again. Yeah, carrying on. Such a cool watch. I, I must say, I'm, I'm more of a fan of this red dial. That just speaks Victorinox to the core. So good. I need to have a look at this watch more. Oh, Victorinox Inox Red Quartz Inox Silver Special Version Automatic. Thomason, thank you. Swiss Quartz is also the jam. That's, it also says automatic <laughs> alcohol, alcohol does help the brain. Are you Irish? Patrick, no, I'm actually Scottish. I'm Scottish and English uh, and South African. So no, sorry. <laughs> uh, that's funny. That is really funny. Yeah, you got it. You got to make these remarks. I mean, it is the water of life. No, uh, keep, keep trying. Yeah, trying to keep. So yeah, automatic movements. Sorry that I missed that, everyone. We're going to move on. He did send in a few more. We've got a date just. Oh, look at this. All gold date just, I believe. No, it's just a gold dial. I don't know. There's a couple more shots. This was a similar uh, selection to what we shared last show, which was on a, a Rolex box. The, the alligator strap looked so good on the Milgauss. And this just, just hits it. You know, you've got the green Rolex element as well as the gold accents. Looks great. Hans, you're hitting the hay. Can't blame you. Half past one in this side of the world. Sleep tight. Go after yourself. I hope you're enjoying your time away from the show and from, from watches in general. This addiction always brings us back, though. Uh, photos are taken during a cloudy day. Yeah, that's the way to do it. It's actually the best time for lighting. I mean, here we go. Here's your example. When it comes to lighting, take it in a cloudy day. You won't regret it. And very good age on this dial, too. It's in excellent condition. You look at the loom plots. The tritium hasn't faded at all. There's no marks inside there. That The bezel's in good nick. Case is excellent. I like it. Really cool selection. Date justs. Date justs are definitely getting, definitely getting more love. And this is the Oyster Date, meaning that this is a manual wind. Oyster Date Precision Manual Wind Date Just. But it's not technically a date just because the just, it's... Rolex and their names. Strange. Love it. Thomason, thank you. So we've been running now for three and a half hours and we are coming close to the end. I think many of you are going to, are going to say, thankfully, we have all of about five, six more. And then we've got Russell's selection of pieces. that's going to cap off the sports watch category. Put that strap on a Grand Seiko white birch. Eric says, yeah, I mean, that's it. Go for the alligator strap. I'll, I'll mentioning alligator. This is the truest form of an alligator strap that you could ever get. Ray saying, can't believe you're still going. Me neither. I mean, again, I haven't been up uploading to the channel for two weeks. So I've, I've actually taken a good break from watches and been working behind the scenes. But, but no, this is, 
It's been good. I haven't thought about watches for the last like three, four days. So it means that I have the, the Vuma to come back and talk about watches in a bit more more detail. I like to give people value for their time, if possible. I don't know if it always works, but you know, four hours is a long time. And yeah, it's it's amazing that you can actually stick with me and <laughs> listen into whatever I say. It's a cool piece though, right? Papris, yeah. So Oyster Date being a manual wind, you can find these for steals, by the way, at the moment. Uh, would highly recommend you check them out. Not thought about watches, Russell, right? It's it's bizarre. It's It's very strange. Next to Tillman. I don't know if Tillman is with us, but he has, I mean, the one watch that we love sharing of his is the longer one. And to contrast that, he loves his German watches because he is German. To contrast with that, he picked up the Zinu 50 and he is in love with this piece. The Pearl Dial, I think it's I think it's DLC coated. We're chatting about Zin being for value for money and, and all those little elements. It's a great watch to look into. This one is one of the most peculiar watches they've ever done. But the U50 aesthetic rings true. I, I love that quirk factor of the square, square components, the, the square hands, the cricket bat hands, and this negative contrast. I've never actually asked uh, Tillman, if you could tell me, I don't know if you're with us, prop, it's like half past two in the morning where he is, if, if the hands or anything looms, I don't believe anything looms on the dial, since it's a pearl dial. Uh, but they've done some like with the same line, they did a scratched up dial model. I can't remember the name. Demetrius actually sent it in. We featured a while back, but it's cool. I mean, this this speaks so much, just the full DLC treatment. It just speaks to the 1980s in a way. And you feel the same way by the Lego style uh, components at the quarters, uh, the batons in general, the hands. It all follows through. The date is a nice implementation. And Zinn just knows how to do a good dial. They really do. U50 automatic, 500, 500 meters. I don't even think these have helium escape valves. They are that good. Uh, right, carrying on through. What kind of pasta and what kind of sauce, Paprice? Oh. You know, I am, I'm a ketogenic person, so I'm not the best to ask about carbohydrates. I love carbs. I, I don't know. Um, you see, again, because I'm not from Italy, I can't tell you all the pasta names off the top of my head. Taglatelli, I like. I like a lot. Sauces, I don't know. I don't know too much. Tomato, I'm always for tomato sauce, tomato, not tomato juice. You know, you mix the tomato in with the mince. You get that as as the sauce, chuck it on. Uh, here we go. We're going to go crazy with sauces. And this is going to be fun. Uh, I've enjoyed listening. Still here and I'm making summer pasta dinner. Radioactive cat. Oh, man. Good having you here. Really good. Ever see the U1 white dial? I think I have, Pepper. I think I have seen it. The U1 is is 40. It's a little bit bigger than this, right? The UX is well worth looking at too. That is a beast of a watch. Chrono Craze, I missed your comment uh, as, as I'm scrolling through here. Uh, had the fattest packed Victorinox knife with so many tools, but I think I only used the same two or three of them. Always, uh, still always was the cool multi-tool pocket wife. Growing, pocket wife. Pocket knife <laughs> growing up. Whoops. Uh, vodka sauce. Oh my goodness. What is going on? Macaroni. So radioactive saying... Medium shells, cherry tomatoes. Yeah, now we're talking. Now we're talking. Vodka sauce. Prego sauce is amazing. I will definitely say yes to that. Okay, carrying on. I love this Tillman. Amazing shot as always. We, I love your stuff. I love the fact that you like to you like to keep your watches in the German category as well as your Explorer and uh, the other bits and pieces that you have. And the 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 Nomos is also fantastic. Mm. But try to change the battery on the Euro. Oh, Urenson, good point. Of course, you have to send it in because it's all oil filled and stuff. Disaster. Okay, carrying on through. Tillman, thank you, sir. I dig this watch. I really do like it. It just speaks to the 1980s through and through, from color to overall aesthetic to Valera. Now, another Casio F91W. He has sold virtually his entire collection off with a hope to pick up a, a Explorer sometime soon. And he wore this watch to his interview. He got the job. And I mean, nothing nothing speaks understatedness like this does. Another funny thing that he pointed out in a separate email. Notice the water resistance rating. We scroll down. It matches, and this is Imperial Leather Soap. It matches the <laughs> it matches the Imperial Leather logo on there. I mean, like, talk about scrutiny. That's what we do here. This was obviously taken in the bathroom or in the kitchen. That's how we do it. The best lighting, I can attest to that. The best lighting is in the bathroom. Uh, 
that's what that's what he that's what she said vodka sauce is a creamy so oh god now we're talking about sauces i knew this was going to happen you got it you got to mix up spice up the conversation with sauces as you're going right more whiskey down the hatch we're almost done we're almost home oh no it's been three hours 35 gotta keep going valera love this i really hope that you are um still saving for that explorer or that I think was the first luxury watch that you were looking after or looking for. I hope you're still saving. Hope you're still keeping to that goal. Don't lose sight of it because there's a big, it's a big reward when you finally get there. Um, I can, I definitely feel that way. Best lighting in the house is the laundry room, oddly. Isn't it funny? It's so weird how that happens. I, I feel you though, Nefarian. It's the way to go. Garlic bread, pepper, these nuts. You can never, you can never say no. Newman's own. Is this Newman's own Casio? Are we still talking about sources in the chat? I do not know, but I'm going to carry on. <laughs> that Casio photo looks like it's from 40 years ago, right? I love it. I love the the guilt that they do here. I don't know if, if guilting is still what they do on a lot of these models, but it looks great. You got the classic business suit. I mean, this was the jam in, in back in the 80s, hey? This was how everything was rocked. The Casio was the business. Moving to Vince next. Valera, thank you for this. We're jumping. Newman's own source. Okay, we are we are going we are going through sources. And one of the last, we have two more Seikos and then we have Nautilus's for days. So this is the SPB 147. And I must say, this is one of the best I've done. I, in a way, kind of want to sell my SPB 143 to get one of these because, and he does mention in the email, it's such a great competitor when it comes, when, it, when it's compared next to the Black Bay. It has all the quirks. It has all the gilting that you would want, as well as a sunburst dial. And it's just exceptional. I mean, they have done so many good things with this piece. The case, that the fact that the material is dia shield coated, uh, the God's Tear watch. I mean, for sure, Thomas said it is. It is. And we're still chatting about, about sources. Uh, looks the biz. 73 math. Mm. So it has, it has everything that we've chatted about with the Black Bay 58 earlier. I'll actually pull one up again for us to look at gilt dial but it's a bit more exciting it has a bit more vibrance to it if i pull it up again a bit more light play and jps hey that's it russell the jps seiko john play special oh it's been it's been a good chat around all of these pieces for sure we're almost done <clears throat> we have a cartier and we have one more seiko vince i'm sorry that you're lost and that i can't spend more time on this i think everyone's losing the plot now at the three hour 40 mark but we're still going Oh, this was such a good story too. I think this had to do with ev with evacuating houses as well uh, from William. S SRPC 23K1. I need to pull up the story quick. Wow, Thomas. What have you done, Thomas? Hope everyone has had a great time at the London Watch Show. Of course, I, I think I mentioned it at the beginning. I don't know if any of one of you have hopped into the chat while the show has been going on, but I hope it's been fun. It looked like a good time. I got some feedback. Uh, here's to, here's something for the PRX fund. Yeah, it's, it seems like it needs to happen now, Thomas. Thank you. Uh, looking forward to seeing the new format. That's going to be good too. If anyone missed the beginning of the show, there is going to be a bit of a change to format of the show in the next couple of months. So hope that works out well. And here's to 50k subscribers. We can live in hope, Thomas. But thank you again, man. That's this is so ridiculously generous of you, man. Really, I don't know what to say. I'm going to send you an email after the show tomorrow, um, man. Come over here, kid. Learn something. You never know. You have to cook for 20 guys sometimes. <laughs> Is that a movie reference? I missed the beginning. 73 math. Uh, I'm not, I can't refer back to it. Um, basically, I'm going to be changing the format up a bit. There's going to be a face reveal as well as the presentations. Uh, it's going to be a bit more open-ended, a bit more of a, a discussion, me presenting to you as an audience instead of it just being another bloody lecture. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Uh, here's to reaching another four. Yeah, so right, Thomason, it's not good. It's really not good. Okay, shall I quickly read the story of this watch? I think I owe it to William before we get to the very end. We've got to get to Zach and his Cartier Santos, which is a dream of a watch too. Let me read this quickly if I can. Uh, of course, you guys send such like flattering emails. Love your content, production, delivery. Thank you for that, William. Um, I missed wrist shot week about keeper watches due to Hurricane Ida slamming into Louisiana. But since caught up, my Seiko is my keeper watch for sure. Here we are at the ocean of Pensacola, Florida, where I evacuated with my daughters during the hurricane. 
Uh, we've been on Wrist Shot Week before, and you shared the story about my buying this for my 50th birthday. Wow. I wanted an indestructible watch to keep up with my adventures in the tropical days and boozy nights of New Orleans, <laughs> along with the travels abroad. This watch has delivered. I rarely have it off my wrist, although I have a small collection that I really enjoy for dress and weekends. It doesn't feel too large, sits very comfortably due to the cushion case. So another one of these watches out there now that, that's experienced a similar thing, not from fires, but this one from a storm, evacuation, and it being an all-rounder, Seiko and Baltic. You've heard it here first, ladies and gents. Great story from William. Thank you for that, sir. <laughs> and catching in the chat again, uh, don't, start a, don't start a wildfire in your face reveal. I hope not, but I don't imagine. The tech just like catches fire. Um, had, had the same Seiko. I loved it. Ended up being one of the most accurate watches I've owned after I regulated it. Wow. Color combo around the brown dial is also very nice. Thank you for that, Chrono Crows. He sent in a few more shots. I only saved one. This was coming close to the end of the uh, the saving series. I'm an old-fashioned, and Mark and everyone are chatting. <laughs> and, and Megan, great to still have you here, Megan. I would imagine you're drifting off big time that side because you've been working and traveling all day. Uh, but Thomas, absolute legend. I'm going to be sending you an email. Send you a voice note or something, man. Just thank you for this. Um, Brighton show next year then. Ooh, I'm down. I'm very down. 73 math. I'm close enough to do that trip. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, and yet, and Thomason mentions a nice story. It's great hearing these little bits of background. I try my best to save the heavy hitting stories for, for collectability's sake. White V-neck t-shirt. Oh, Pepe. It's not a V-neck. It's not a V-neck. It's a, it's a round neck, but it is a, it is a white vest that I was wearing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Going to carry on. Lastly, Last but not least is Zach. Megan, this one's for you. Cartier, Santos, Gelby, Large. I think Marcello has this exact watch. And one of the most underrated pieces out there still. Uh, they're easy to pick up. Well worth your time and attention. The Santos is a gem of a watch. There's, I think I should be getting myself one of these. Because as far as design and history blends, this has it all. This has... All the style you would want. It's one of the first wristwatches, believe it or not. It's one of the first pilot watches. It's got Cartier's DNA all over it. It's one of the first Genta watches. You got these, this, the, the, you know, the screws and everything in the case. And it's timeless, absolutely timeless. Amazing. I mean, it's it's cool to see how it had a resurgence through the 70s and the 80s, and it's still popular. The way they have re reattacked the Santos now with the quick release bracelets and all of those too santos is a i mean the bracelet alone are it's so good it's just so good yeah this might be the next watch or one of the next watches on the list you know luxury watches for me has to take a back burner but yeah really really nice now we're talking cartier is a proper watch it is and i think a lot more people are getting into them now because they definitely deserve more love and i need to share more tanks and more centres and stuff we have in the past a beautiful just class. I think the dial is also spectacular. I also love how they play around with where the Cartier logo goes. Sometimes at the 7, at the 8, at the 10. You know, answer to watch trivia. Which watch has the most screws visible? Forbin, I think we're looking at it, huh? We can even include the, the crown as being a nut. <laughs> so we've got all the attachments on here. It's great. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I don't know. How, how many screws does this watch actually have? That's the question. Maybe maybe Zach can send me an email about the number. If you can count them all, including the spare links. Imagine. Just imagine. This is nuts. This is nuts. I love it, though. Okay, so we have reached near the end of the show. We are going to discuss some Nautiluses, funny enough, as we come to the end of the Sports Watch series. Our man Russell loves Nautiluses, and he tends to always be at the end of the show because... He just deserves a limelight at the end. He gets a section, uh, three hours forty-five. We're still going. We're gonna we're gonna come to a close soon. I hope. Dial is stunning. It is exceptional. Sorry that I'm missing you in the chats. Um, Cartier gets my respect for both jewelry and timepieces. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Cartier was never on my radar. Growing on me by the day. Looks like a man's watch. I think what what's actually made Cartier so timeless is the fact that it can be seen as the true unisex watch. In fact, that's what has defined it. Um, not just the timelessness of the, the Romans and how they've been done, but the fact that they have all the sizes, the fact that regardless of the size, even the large can be worn by ladies too. And every lady in the world knows what Cartier is. Like us and Rolex, we seem to just, it just rolls off our tongues. 
you introduce a Cartier watch to a lady and they will melt in your hands. You know, that's pretty special that a brand can have that kind of prestige and punch. So yeah, I think it's probably, if we had to sum it up, I think it's the ultimate unisex in all categories. The Santos, if we want to go down the tank route, if you want to go down the more like ellipse styled models, they have it. They have it for sure. Beautiful pieces. That steel has a tough look and the, the brushing. Yeah, I like it, Rick. I like it. <laughs> or the Nautili, or this, yeah. So we're gonna go right into, right into the Nautilus thing now. I like that. Okay, so let's enjoy it for a sec. If you want to see a handful of Nautiluses in one place, this is the time now. We have shared all sorts of Nautiluses in the past. Zach, thank you for this. The only Cartier at the at the end. We could say one of the best for last. This is. I need to have a look at the Santos. You're actually causing me to look at watches, and it's not a good thing to do. Um, I love the Cartier script on the 7. It's nice, right? 73 math. Yeah. The 7, they do it on the 10 sometimes too, which is nice. It's like it's their secret signature, like Breguet and many other brands. Right. So let's look at the Nautilus 40th first off. We chatted about restraint with Patek and their diamonds. I When I saw this watch first, I had no idea that these were actually diamonds inside the dial. But there we go. 40th anniversary, 1976 to 2016. Is it the 40th? I think it was. No, it was my math completely wrong. It sounds like the 40th. Definitely by the Santos de Ferion. Yeah, you're, you're definitely helping me there. <laughs> uh, never noticed the script. Yeah, Patrick, have a close look. All Cartiers have that, either at the 7 or the 8 or the 10. There's always a tiny little script there that's supposedly there to try and like defeat counterfeiting, even though the counterfeits also have it too. Great little secret signature. So this is the 40th, Russell. Thank you. Calibur, you've just joined us at the end where we're looking at... Superb, superb heavy hitters. So we've got the baguettes that are integrated into the dial. I think this is what a great use of restraint. But I think we shouldn't also miss. So this is also white gold, right? It's a white gold model. This was one of the first white golds too, which made it special. Maybe I'm completely off the mark. But then we should also not forget the OG, which I really like too. The 5711, just the standard with the gray dial. This is where it all began and where, I mean, the hype for these watches now, it's ridiculous. I mean, Russell loves, he, Russell has a great taste in pieces. We've shared his Lungas, as you least know, done. He loves as well, Lunga. And he seems to just be infatuated by the Nautilus. If you could, Russell, I know it's coming up to two o'clock in the morning. If you could share a couple of lines about what makes the Nautilus speak to you so much as a collector, I'd love to know. Because it's not every day that a collector goes out and deliberately chooses four, I think four different Nautiluses of, of different calibers in a collection. What is it about the watch? I'd love to know your take on it. Beautiful with the baguettes. Yeah, it looks great, right? does look great. Naughty Nautilus, yeah. So let's get close to it again. I don't want to get to the green yet. Uh, those baguettes have been done so expertly well. Really subtle. That's what makes this watch sing to me. And then if we go to, so we look at the OG. Should we have a look at the Perpetual next? Why not? Now, this thing is... Uh, the best Nautilus of all time, I think, <laughs> to this day, I think is still the best Nautilus of all time. It's plat. Is the so the forty the forty is platinum? Okay, is this one white gold? I'll never get it right. I never will. So this is the full perpetual, and it was on everyone's minds when they like way before they released this watch. It was when are they going to produce this watch as a perpetual? It's stunning. It's one of the most balanced Nautiluses you'll ever see. Has the full complication. You could wear this every day. Uh, to be honest, it's an easy choice. They wear so nicely on the wrist, and that's your jam. It's it's low cut, um, and the precious metal. I think the critique I've I've experienced the fifty seven eleven. The the critique I can I think most of us can probably agree if we've had them before is the steel wears so light. I can feel a bit chintzy. Where with a precious metal, mm, it's good. Can I start a petition to get Russell banned for having too many stunning watches? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I know. Yeah, Russell's a gent. Uh, I like I like the fact that he's he's isolated his collection down to a handful of pieces that he really loves. He only has about what between twelve and fifteen watches, I think, in his collection, all in all. And he, I think, same as a lot of us, he only wears the watches that he, uh, so he only keeps the watches that he wears. So looks like a robot. I mean, it's got a pretty expressive face. Yeah. So perpetual, you can you can let this thing run for years. I don't know when you next have to change, get the get the watch service to to change up the quarters. That's the way to tell. It's got the leap year indicator as a perpetual watch. 
So this being the reference, thanks, Russell, the 5740G is white gold. Ah, okay, got it. And with that comes the substance, which is excellent. And what is this now? This is another example of the platinum baguette dial. So the 40th anniversary, another great example. And then, of course, we're also going to have a look at an Odysseus in a moment. But to end off, we can look not at the OG, the uh, the green. You just picked this up recently. This is the weirdest of all the Nautiluses of all time, I think. I don't think it's ever going to change. This one's a head scratcher for a lot of us out there. I mean, the green dial has just driven the collector space nuts. Or should we say the flipper space nuts? The diamond bezel he really likes, and it's because it's casual. It's actually pretty casual as an arrangement. And this is in it in more direct lighting. The subtlety of diamonds with, with Patek as a brand. Isn't it crazy? Uh, of course, Nefarian would love, love it because he loves green. Yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. And remember, this is stainless steel. So it's a stainless steel watch with full baguette bezel. It's weird. I still find it head scratching. But I, I, I must commend the subtlety of how the, the, the sell, sell, sell. So you've actually, so I don't know if you've, you've heard the stories about this watch. Russell actually shared some Chrono 24 listings of this watch with me. 700,000 pounds. Someone's asking for it, I think. Let that sink in. 700,000 pounds. That's probably near to a million um, US dollars. Are people nuts? Yes. Scratch resistant bezel, right? You got a full. I mean, this is this is sapphire in the purest sense. I was actually going to mention that at one stage. I love it. You've got a proper sapphire protection around there. It's it's just stupidity. The prices that these watches are now selling for on the gray market. It's all just getting in on the hype. In fact, one of the first videos that I will be be doing, the whole face reveal thing, is about green dial watches, and where we might see it going. Uh, if it's still just a fad, if it's more versatile than blue all that stuff. So that'll happen in the next two weeks. But mm, I like it for its quirk factor. I like, I really like the fact that it's stainless steel and with diamonds in it. It's weird for that reason. But it's also that collectability aspect that makes it cool. It's the last of the 5711. Uh, it's definitely not the prettiest or could be uh, for some out there. The green, it's not like it's a flat olive. It's not bright green like you would see in the Hulk Submariners and those examples. Scratch resistant bezels, just beautiful. I love it. I love it. Though. That's so funny. Uh, and Megan mentioning about Cartier, XL Chrono, standard model. They are amazing. Um, Cartier really can't do wrong. And then what else do we have? Uh, there's another shot of the green. So we have the close. We have the, the more. This is under the AD light. You can see it in the real world. I think, I don't know if I still have the, the video that he sent across. I'll share that by the end. But then let's come back down to earth and have a look at the Odysseus one more time. Uh, he wore this to a longer event the other week, the Concourse to Elegance. I can never get that name right. But this is a really casual take on the Lunga. We don't, the funny thing is the Lungas now don't have removable spring bars. You can't actually get the straps off them. This is the first generation of the Odysseus. So it's pretty nice to see that bright orange accent with this piece. Uh, the dial is spectacular. I think this watch is growing on a lot more people. The Odysseus is a charmer. It's a, it's a weird one. Eric is leaving us. Oh, Eric, it's great having you. You've been with us the whole show. Legend. And we're coming close. We're not going to end that. It's not The show is not going to be a four hour. It'll be three hours 57, which is a bit more digestible. <laughs> Don't go walking the streets of London with a beautiful watch. Right, Russell? Yeah. I think Russell is pretty understated as a guy, so he should be okay. And then to the movement of this watch, you can't not look at Lunga. You can't, you want, what I'm saying? You can't look at Lunga and not look at the movement. Now, we looked at a Grand Seiko earlier, and it felt similar to this, the way the finishing is kind of German in the way that the case backs have been done on those models. But this is what you get the Lunga for, that official hand engraving that's specific to one maker. I really like that aspect. Odysseus is class. Tried it on in person. Truly amazing, Patrick. Yeah. I've I've actually I've been into a Lunga boutique and I didn't have one. Sadly, of course, there's lots of waiting lists. And this is what they've done, by the way. He's actually put tape on the underside, I think, to protect it. They have sealed up these holes on the new ones, can you believe? So you can't magic mouse. Come on. They've sealed up these holes so you can't take the spring bars out, which I find ridiculous. How can you, how can you do that? Not make the straps interchangeable. Mm. Anyway. So that's the show in a nutshell, ladies and gents. We have covered 
everything and more. And as Megan's saying, it's 3 a.m. that side. We are going to call it a show. I'm going to call it wraps here. What a good banter. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I think the variety was on point. The fact that we were chatting about sports watches and four times MSRP, Thomason says, discussing the, the olive. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It blows my freaking mind. But, you know, people go mad. People go mad in the collecting space. It's also a FOMO in a way, you know, feeling of missing out. They feel like they need to get on board the train, but it's it's difficult, especially when they are you know called collectible watches all of a sudden, and their value, quote unquote. Oh, the tape was on collection day. Oh, long since removed. Love it, love it. Thanks, Russell. Yeah, ladies, ladies and gents, uh, that's ridiculous. Loose tooth talking about the the yeah the removal strap. It's it is nuts. I can't believe it either. Um, Ladies and gents, thank you so much for being a part of the show, for sending in your watches, as always. 31 episodes, and it's still fun. It's still engaging. For all of you who have stuck around, there's still 100 of you watching, who have stuck around to watch and to listen in, um, humbling, to say the least. And I hope you have an exceptional break. In the Northern Hemisphere, it looks like we're getting a lot more good weather to enjoy around Europe and I think around the States too. So let's enjoy it as much as possible while we can. Winter is coming, and then we've got to get back on with all the layers and stuff. So GMT, it's 156. Yeah, so it's so a GMT plus one. The side, it's coming up to two. It's crazy. Uh, Russell, thank you for the super chat. So uh, we'll catch up. I know I haven't answered your messages. We'll catch up this time coming up this week. Um, enjoy your Sunday, wherever you are in the world. And I will see you in two weeks' time, around October. Maybe the last day of September, I think, falls on a Thursday. That's when the next upload will be. And it's going to be a bit of a different format. Just think of me sitting behind the scenes, practicing, having face on camera for the first time, doing presentations on some bizarre subjects, got some design idea videos that are going to be coming out too. Uh, wish me luck. <laughs> I, hope, I hope it's fun and engaging. And for once, you'll be able to see me talking to you as a presenter instead of just being lectured to. Like a nut job. <laughs> okay. Ladies and gents, thank you. Uh, Blue Shirt and the many more of you that I'm missing in the chat. Bonaventure and, and Zach Chronocraze, all of you here. Low Key Collector, Thomason, 73 Math. You guys who've sent in your watches, Thomas Burnett as always. Blue Shirt especially. Please take care. Look after yourself. I will catch up with you in the week as well. I promise to do that. Loose Tooth, super chat. Thank you. 73 Math for the PRX. God, that's going to be funny. I need to get it now. I think it has to happen. Next month, end of next month, I'll get the PRX to review. Megan, as always, you've been a part of the show late. Um, yeah, you guys are great. Sporting a monocle. <laughs> monocle. <laughs> As thank you. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you in the next one. And cheers for now.